of a... Cheech, you better be on fire or dead. And if so, how will you call it? Jimmy, I'm locked out of the club. What are you bothering me for? Call Fats and get the other key. I can't. He's locked inside. <sighs> what do you mean, you and Fats are both locked in? I was on the roof. There's a skylight. The rest is a blur. But it's not our club. What? Someone's here. I gotta go. Turned out to be the Spamonte family's club. Cheech didn't want to pay for the skylight he broke, so he just up and shot everybody. Around the neighborhood, they still call it the Jimmy's Trip to Aruba Massacre. I always called it the Fats is a big fucking crybaby bloodbath. God rest his soul. Now that I'm in witness protection, it's like a permanent vacation. At a two-star resort where everybody says sorry all the time. We've only had one vacation from this apologetic iceberg of a country. And was it worth it? Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Who wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Jimmy, get in here. <laughs> I got that dirty little bastard cornered. What is it, a mouse? Nah, it's one of Teresa's boyfriends trying to sneak out. <clears throat> no sleepovers, kid. That's it? You're letting him go? Take him out back and explain the rules to his face. Ah, cook, who gives a crap? I'm free. I've been in there since... Ah, my eyes! Ah! Look at him, McCool. He's depressed. Snap out of it! You got nothing to be depressed about, you useless sack of garbage! Pop, if you decide to slit your wrists, have some courtesy and do it in the bathtub. You need a gun, slugger. Take my cools. I'm not wiping your brains off mine. Nah, Jimmy will go out like a wise guy. Suck in an oxygen tank in prison. Sweet Mitsu's cowboy! Jimmy's under the moon and you're all making morbid jokes. Clearly, Canada's character-building midwinter gloom is affecting all of you. But I have a solution. Please say therapy. Please say therapy. A vacation! Oh, come on! <gasps> you hear that, Jimmy? We're going on vacation! Yeah, right. Knowing McCool, it'll be a day trip to Lake Who Gives a Shit. Fuck Canada! Where everyone needs to get the hell out once in a while! I'm taking this plane to Cuba! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Welcome to Cuban Airlines. I'm your pilot, Brad. That's just a little thing we do to lighten the mood around here. Enjoy the flight. McCool, you said vacation, not being babysat by a fed in a communist hellhole. But Cuba's perfect. There's literally no chance you'll be spotted by the mob. Then why are you coming with us? I need a vacation from all things Canuck, or I'm gonna lose my freaking mind! No, of course. I I just thought we could, you know, hang. The whole point of this was to stop me from hanging. Myself. Oh, no, no problem, Jimmy. I, I won't get in your hair. For the next week, old Street McCool's gonna be all about rest, rejuvenation, and relaxation. How can you relax in a country that treats people so bad? Every country has its share of human rights violations. Except Canada, of course. Yeah, no, you guys are awesome. I ain't seen a Cuban since that thing we did not do in Dallas. Excuse me, I gotta kill Kennedy. I mean, take a leak. I can't wait to take in the music, culture, and revolutionary atmosphere of Cuba. The people's paradise. Shut up, Trotsky. Kid, get the waitress to open the door. Bienvenido a Cuba, liberated from American business interests and mafia-controlled casinos since 1959. Commie sons of bitches. You know, I ran one of them casinos down here back in the day. I banged so many Cuban broads. They gave me a nickname, Don Juan de Gonorrhea. How old were you? 
I don't know, 20... No, 10. Look around, Jimmy. Cuba's a paradise. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough! You're not leaving my side for the next week! Ma, he's a nice Canadian boy. He's French-Canadian. He'll have your panties off faster than you can say... I think the word you're looking for is wow, huh? <laughs> Give me those back. I should mention, and I know this from experience, do not drink the tap water here lest you get a porcelain-shattering case of Batista's Revenge. Huh? Oh! <laughs> 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 Wanna go for a dip in a pool? Nah, too many German tourists. Whoa, it's the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> Jimmy, lighten up. Cuba ain't so bad. It ain't so good either. Hey, where's Gina? I'm supposed to watch her in case she drowns. Somebody. She's probably over at the kids' club. <laughs> ah, to be a child again. That no-good quack won't even look at Petey unless I buy a timeshare. Petey's gonna have to ride it out. Scorpion Azul. Scorpion Azul. Ma, I think he's trying to tell us something. Cuba is home to the legendary Blue Scorpion, reputed to cure everything from cancer to diarrhea. But, Petey, we can't go into a dangerous jungle just because you got fizzy gravy. Mom's right. I'll be at the pool. How does he do that? On second thought, we're going. Why should Petey suffer? This vacation sucks. So long as you don't. Gina, what are you doing in here? I thought you'd be out selling black market Bibles. You know, there's a swim up bar. You don't even gotta get up to go to the John. What's this? It's nothing. It's a porno machine, Jimmy. Don't you know anything? Give me that! Mind your business. <clears throat> Greetings, fellow Americans. I represent the five families of organized crime who do not exist. We've joined forces with the government to encourage patriotic sociopaths like you to eliminate the communist leader of Cuba. If successful, you'll be granted super-maid status and be untouchable by the mob. You'll also get a lifetime presidential pardon from the feds. Ain't that right, Jack? Act fast, and we'll throw in a free lobotomy for your yappy missus. How did you know about this? How did you not? It's been around since the 60s. So you are gonna kill Castro? Look who just clued in. Are these guys gonna f or what? So once we take out El Presidente, we can go back to New York. No way. I'm doing this alone. When you and Cheech get involved, things always go straight into the crapper. She's got a point, Jimmy. Sometimes you're a real screw-up. Oh. You can't do this alone. You'll wind up in Cuban jail with all the poets and playwrights. It'll be so boring! I'll cut the act, Pop. If we're gonna get our old life back by killing a guy, let's do it together like a family. Fine. But I'm not taking a backseat on my own caper, capiche? Okay. You were saying? One day, I'll be taller, but you'll always be a fat ass! Let's go! <laughs> what am I doing here? We're supposed to be on vacation, not out in the sticks hunting down an insect. Keep looking. Extremely rare blue scorpions can't be that hard to find. I see one! Where? On your arm! Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Are you kidding me? We had one, and you went and killed it! Oh. Petey, we're not camping here. Get out of the sleeping bag! All right, we only get one shot at this. How do you know he's in there? Because while you girls were packing your bikinis, I was planning this caper to the letter. Every day after brunch, he comes to that window to feed his pigeon, Lee Harvey Birdswalt. 
And when he does... I'm gonna turn his head into a mist. Jimmy, that's beautiful. I thought it up on the ride over. Wasn't sure if I'd use it. Well, I for one am glad you did. Give me that! Orphan Castro was my idea. I'm doing the honors. Why wait? I'll go in there right now and blow his head off. I'm the boss. I'll do it. But I am the boss's uncle. Shut up, you mooks. You want the whole country to know what we're doing? She's right. Keep it down. Hey, look, it's McCool. <sighs> Yo, McCool! Jeez, what are you doing? Hide the gun! See what I mean? Right into the crapper. Fancy seeing you three. Come to take in the sights, sounds, and smells of old Havana? Yeah, yeah, sights and smells. We're doing sounds tomorrow. Why are you walking around all alone? Oh, no. <gasps> Not now, Cheech. Why? I'm just saying he looks all lonely and pathetic, like a loser. I'm not lonely. Matter of fact, I'm going to visit my Cuban friend, Ronaldo Garcia. Well then, you better get going. Hey, I knew a Garcia once. He drove an ice cream truck. Here in Havana? No, no, in New York. Oh. You think they're related? Oh my god, Cheech! <laughs> get, give me that! I doubt it. Ronaldo is an orphan. Well, he's probably dying to see you then. Hang on, hang on. It wasn't Garcia. It was Gonzalez. For the love of food! <laughs> so, probably not related. Cool. Okay, well, off to the, um, orphanage. Cheerio! Damn it! Put this in your mouth. What? What did I do? Mm. Ooh. Oh, Esmeralda, your hands are so soft. Mm. He's tripping balls, Ma. When are you gonna give up? When he's dead? You wish? Keep looking. Come on, Petey. Let's go back to the resort. <laughs> Fine. Take your chances with Ma. Teresa, you can't leave me here. Why? Because you're scared I might actually have fun on this vacation? No. Because I'm lost. <laughs> Get out of here! That is not how my son is losing his virginity. <laughs> Our one chance, and you blew it! It's McCool's fault. The guy wouldn't shut up about his stupid friend. You did it to me again. Without you dopes, I'd be toasting Castro's headless cadaver with a Cuba Libre. You know that's just rum and coke. <sighs> Presidential palace, por favor. And that, mi amigos, is how the Cuba Libre differs from a mere rum and coke. Ah. That is cool. <laughs> I see what you're doing here. Y you do? Don't think I didn't notice. You drove around a little bit. I... uh... <laughs> it's okay, comrade. But you do that with the tourists, yes? Not with El Jefe. Okay? Okay. Hasta luego! That is one charming motherfucker. What a presence, this guy. I got goosebumps. No wonder he's so hard to kill. <gasps> ah, god damn it. It's like, I just wanted him to like me. I know, I couldn't make a move. You almost forget that man's a bloodthirsty dictator. You think he liked me? Punch it! It's the only road I recognized. Did you have to stop for a fare? Gina, this resort ain't cheap. Jimmy! McCool, you been drinking? Oh, yeah, me and Ronaldo Garcia, when we get together, <laughs> hi, Chihuahua! 
I miss horse. <laughs> I'm in here! Horse? No, it's El Jefe! I'm in the trunk! Oh, God, Jimmy, you didn't! Technically, it was Gina. And the rat comes out! From Heller's dinosaurs! What have you done? Okay, this is fixable. We'll drop him back at the palace and pay the cab! Congratulations, Jimmy. You've liberated Cuba and ruined my life. I trusted you. See, that was your first mistake. <gasps> we can still get through this. Let me do the talking. No, thanks a lot, guys. Come on. Move it. Keep it on. Come on. Get them. They took El Jefe. Just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Halt! You are trespassing on American soil. Do not move or we shoot. American soil? Yeah! <laughs> American soil. Oh, that's better. I cannot believe you assassinated a president to get away from Canada. I thought we were friends. What's friendship got to do with it? Apparently nothing. All right, let's get one thing straight. I'm not offering you weirdos asylum. Got it? But we killed Castro. We killed Castro too. Killed him good. Shut up. If I had a dime for every nut job who hopped that fence claiming to have killed Castro, I'd have a mountain of dimes, and I'd sit on that mountain and declare myself the king of dimes! That sounds amazing. My point is, we're handing you right back to the Cuban authorities. Excuse me, Colonel Korn. I think you'd better see this. Multiple sources confirm Castro has been kidnapped by a red-headed midget posing as a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Mr. President, it's confirmed. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Oh, I am so fucking fired. <gasps> what? I can swear. I'm a terrible mother. I couldn't find one stinking bug. It's an arachnid, and you're a great mother. A great mother wouldn't let this happen. But you can't watch your kids every move, right? Well, I should have thought before I drank from that. I just want to keep Teresa from making the same mistakes I did. Oh, we're on Teresa now? You don't got to worry about me, Ma. How did you find us? And what's he doing here? You won't believe this. Jean-Philippe here likes to catch these and stick them up his ass. Keeps down the hemorrhoids. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Ma, what the hell? Sorry. Those things creep the shit out of me. You got another one up there, JP? Oh, I'm cured! If you would have trusted me, we could have had fun instead of running around the jungle like Boob Raider. It's Tomb Raider. Shut up, Edie. Oh. Teresa, you're right. Uh, you didn't do anything with Jan Philip here, did you? Not at all. I'm not the one he likes. Anybody else feel a breeze? Holy crap, are you good? <laughs> ah, Jesus. <laughs> what? No goodbye? All this time, I've gone above and beyond to protect you, and now you lie to me and walk away like it was nothing? What, are we married? You lied to me, too. I did no such thing. Really? What about Ronaldo Garcia? You saw through that? <sighs> I made him up. 
I felt silly being out all alone while you three were having fun committing a murder. Don't take it so hard, McCool. Of all the cops I've ever known, you're my favorite. That's not saying much. Coming from me, that's saying a lot. Put it there, pal. Hey, where's Air Force One going? Well, Castro was found with third-degree burns by three Canadian tourists who revived him with the venom of a blue scorpion. Can you believe that sh**? This family is a freaking curse! So, no medals? No getting super made? No. Well, what about the free lobotomy? I'll give you a lobotomy. Come here! Yo, Colonel, seeing as we came pretty close to half an hour, Tommy Dante, you think we could get a chopper ride back to the resort? Get the hell off my base. <laughs> Gorgeous weather in Cuba, huh? Damn shame the American people can't go there. Maybe I ought to do something about that. Can you believe this? Ma and them flew home first class courtesy of El Presidente. And we're rowing a fucking truck! I stand by my choice to sell our passport to those Arabs in Gitmo. I don't even know why we bothered with a vacation. I'm just as depressed as I was before. But Jimmy, you lied to a policeman, stole a taxi cab, and almost whacked someone. What more could you want? You know, you're right. And I made 28 bucks driving that cab. Which you'll have to declare at customs. And you wonder why we didn't want to hang out with you. Keep rowing, Jimmy. Keep rowing. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, alias McDougal. Before I moved to the not-so-great white north, I was a capo in the mob. Crime's been in my family for generations. It all started with my grandpa's, Giuseppe. He was a shoemaker in the old country. Real handsome devil. Anyway, one day the village Don asked him to make a pair of shoes. The Don believed shoe size was a reflection of his manhood. His size for manhood. He could have drove a big car or bought a frickin' boat or something, but the guy wanted big shoes. What are you gonna do? Personally, I'd have blamed the whole thing on gravity, but gravity wasn't invented back then, so Giuseppe had to skip town. By the time he got to the next village, he was met by fear and respect. Dante Respect and Luciano Fear had a family that needed some muscle. Giuseppe just whacked at dawn, so he seemed like a good fit. <laughs> All those years dealing with feet made him kinda homicidal, so Grandpops moved up the ranks pretty fast. Then, one day, he came to America. You mean he got run out of Italy? Point is, even though I'm living like a schmuck in Regina, I like to think he's looking down on me and smiling. And wondering why the hell you threw his family business down the crapper. You know what? Just forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. All right, scumbag. You think you can come onto my turf and just take what you want? Do you even know who I am? You got three seconds to get the hell out of here! Now, is that nice? I give you a chance to walk away, and you just laugh in my face. Did you just eat a condom? All right, enough screwing around. Say hello to my enormous friend! Yeah, that's right. Go home to your mother, you overgrown rat. Ugh. To conclude my show and tell, if a man at the park asks you into the woods to find his lost dog, 
Remember, there is no dog. Good job, Mary. You go sit with Prudence the safety hippo. Gina, your turn. All right, let's get this over with. I want to talk about personal safety. There's a lot of creeps and weirdos out there. Not to mention stoolies, deadbeats, and guys who just don't listen. You gotta protect yourself. So, you're gonna need one of these. <gasps> She's got a gun! Relax, it ain't loaded. Now it's loaded. <laughs> All right, who took my facial stuff? No idea. Jesus Christ, you look like a 60-year-old avocado. Well, I took care of that raccoon. Set him running with his tail between his legs. At least I think it was his tail. If not, you should see the wang on that rodent. Breaking news. Celine Dion Elementary is under lockdown after reports of a gunman holding a class hostage. That's Gina's school. Oh, my God. We got to get down there right now. No can do. This stuff takes 20 minutes. Jimmy, we got to go. We got to... Where the hell's Jimmy? What are you waiting for? Let's roll! Good question, Billy. Personally, I like to go for the knees, but if you gotta take someone out, give him two in the chest and one in the head. After that, he ain't getting up no more. Okay, any other questions? <gasps> Besides, can I hold the gun? Aww. All right, we need firepower. Wanna take the Uzis? Nah, I don't wanna look like a show-off. I hate to say it, but shouldn't we just let the cops handle this? You worry too much. We know what we're doing. Shots fired! We need guns, damn it! I'm filling out the requisition as fast as I can! Get your ass in there! And take some grenades! I can't remember which classroom's Gina's. I only been here once for interviews. And I was pretty drunk. Who? <laughs> There they go, Saskatchewan's finest. Fear not, Cookie, I came as soon as I heard. No time for pleasantries, I'd better get inside. But may I say, it's a glorious morning today. Damn it, McCool, there's no time. No shit. get in there and save my daughter. For Canada, where we downplay our increasingly frequent gun violence. If there ain't any more questions, I guess I'm done. <laughs> Oh. Ah! Gina, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, crap. You're the guy with the gun. Whoa, you brought shotguns? And a troll. This ain't good. We better beat it. Hey, McCool. You here for safety week? It appears you own a number of illegal guns, Jimmy. I'm going to have to conduct a thorough search of the premises. Do you have any idea the paperwork this is going to generate? Do you? You're blowing this way out of pro 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 size. Pop, this fell again. I told you it's too heavy to use as a curtain rod. Daddy, you left this in the bathroom. I almost dried my hair with it. Really? Both of you? Exactly now? Jimmy, I can't keep this under my mattress no more. Keeps poking me in my sensitive areas. <laughs> Sweet Kiefer Sutherland, Jimmy. Why you gotta make such a big deal? It's just a few home security items. Just having that one within our borders violates the Geneva Convention. This is just like Chuck Heston warned us. One day the government's gonna show up and take all our guns. Next thing you know, we're in camps, getting brainwashed about evolution and global warming. I got a constitutionary right to bear arms. Yeah, you can't tell people what to do with their sleeves. Perhaps you possessed that right when you were American, but you're Canadian now. It's true, Pop. Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not protect gun ownership. Or as they say in Quebec, la Charte canadienne des droits et libertés ne protège pas la possession d'armes. I memorized it in both official languages. Now you're turning my own son against me. And you got him talking Spanish. Is this everything? You're not holding out on me, are you? Me? Hold out on a cop? Never! Then what's that slight bump on your waistband? I'm a little excited. Thanks for noticing. Lift your shirt, Jimmy. Is this how you get your kicks, McCool? You really ought to see a therapist. For Christ's sake, just hand it over! What? You too? McCool's right. Like it or not, we're Canadian. Don't you think it's time you assimilated? No! I've had this gun since I was ten. No one's taking Remington Steel! Hand it over, Jimmy. What if I don't? 
Then I shall be forced to arrest you. You'll be charged, tried, convicted, then remanded to jail. The days will be lonely and the nights long, until your cellmate, Rusty, sells you to the skinheads who run the yard. No amount of toilet-brewed prison wine will erase the memory of their oddly gentle love. You want this gun, McCool? You're gonna have to pry it from my cold, dead pants. Hands, Jimmy. I think you mean hands. Whatever, you're not getting it. I'm a responsible gun owner. Hey, where'd it go? I was just getting my rhythm. Oh, ho, ho, look who's back in town. Feeling strong today? Because I got something for you. Oh, crap. All right, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Put up your dukes, uh, claws, hoofs. What do you call them foot hands? All right, which one of you is first? Yes! Oh, ho, ho, ho! Well, kid, you really did it this time. They're gonna kick you out of school. Yes! Unless you take this medication. No! They're putting me on drugs? It's called a pacify. It reduces psychotic tendencies in children. Side effects may include dry mouth, disorientation, nausea, and increased thoughts of murder. Huh. Well, I'm sure they wouldn't prescribe it if it wasn't 100% safe. Tell that to Mr. Flip. His ma took thalidomide. Look how he turned out. Mr. Flip turned out just fine. It's not his fault he's a monster. I ain't taking him. I don't like this either. But if you don't, they'll take you away from us and send you to a special school where you gotta wear a helmet. You always told me drugs was bad. This is medicine. It comes from a nice man in a laboratory. Drugs come from on the street corner. You mean like the guys who used to work for Pop? Quit stalling, kid. Pill or helmet? Your call. There. Yeah. Happy? Your daughter's a freaking now. Yeah, congrats! You just won Mother of the Year! Oh, God, I hope this is the right thing to do. Ah! Ah! Don't touch me with that thing! Ah! I just got rolled by a fucking raccoon! Ever since I got up today, I've been feeling off balance. And I got a persistent itch in my trigger finger. Don't you see, Pop? When you gave McCool your gun, you gave up an essential part of your American identity. You're right! Now I gotta steal it back. That's gonna be hard to do with no gun. Or you could finally embrace life as a Canadian. How the hell do I do that? By embarking on a long voyage of introspection and self-discovery. Self-discovery? Like what you were doing when I walked in here? No, I'm talking about a spiritual makeover. Did someone say makeover? What? My fashion sense was tingling. Jeans, jean shirt, and a jean jacket. It's a Canadian tuxedo. <coughs> These jeans are too tight. <coughs> ah! What was that? My balls just went back in. <gasps> and they're out. I still don't get why I'm tied up. I'm gonna teach you the most important part of being Canadian. You need to suppress your innate American urge for self-preservation and apologize to me. For what? Ow, you mother! It's the Canadian way. I wrong you, you say sorry to me. Ow! Ow! You're grounded. What are you doing? I'm using aversion therapy to turn pop Canadian. That's for grounding me last week. That's for taking away my makeup. That's for not letting me date a black guy. It wasn't racial. He was 40 years old. Oh. <sighs> Thanks, Petey. I feel a lot better. Sorry. Sorry. Really f***ing sorry. I believe we've made a breakthrough. What's going on, Petey? What's the big surprise? I present to you... Canadian dad. I don't get it. He looks the same, except he's dressed as a village people. Go on, Pop. Say it. Sorry. No, the other thing. <sighs> Forget about it. Oh my god, he's a whole new man! This calls for a celebration. You're finally a real Canadian. I'm so proud of you. What the f? Hi, Mommy. Hi, D. 
Daddy, guess what? I did all my homework. You did your homework? Uh-huh. And then I cleaned my room, and then I cleaned Petey's room, and then Uncle Chichi and me had a tea party. Who wants Huggy Boos? Gina, you feeling okay? Petey made you Canadian too? Oh, no, Daddy. It's because of the magic happy pills Mommy gave me. These rainbows are made of smiles, wishes, and good dreams. <gasps> Speaking of good dreams, I'm going to skedaddle off to bed. Night-night. Wow. I guess that Apacify stuff really works. If you want me to babysit tonight, I'm going to need a bottle of whatever she's on. Jimmy, you didn't yell at the parking guy for scratching the car, you didn't send back that pink chicken, and you gave the squeegee kid a loony instead of running him over. Frankly, I'm blown away by the new you. Hey, we're standing in line here. Those were our tickets. Jimmy, do something. I got it. Sorry my wife yelled at you. Oh, hold this. Here's your purse back. Keep it. Looks better on you. Some night out. I really wanted to see that movie, but no, Captain Canada here had to drive those mooks to the hospital. You're the one who wanted me to be Canadian. The Jimmy I know would have taken apart those line jump and jag offs. Being Canadian doesn't mean you gotta let people walk all over you. I didn't let them walk all over me. I took the high road. Yeah, the high road to Wasburg. I wanted you to give up your gun, not your entire freaking manhood. What are you saying, I ain't a man no more? Because if you want a man, I'll show you a man. Come here, baby. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> oh, there's my big, strong man. There's those big, strong arms. And there's your big, strong... Your big, strong... Give me a sec. Where are you, big fella? Well, let me concentrate. Come on, come on. Come on, what's the matter with you? Up. Come on, Sozich. Sozich, not a meatball. Sozich, Sozich. <sighs> we could just cuddle. Tonight on TBS, Matthew McConaughey in Failure to Launch. Hey, Jimmy, who died? What? I'm fine. You can't fool me. I know something's wrong. Spit it out. Well, I got this friend, see? He's having a little problem. Stop right there. Who's this f***ing friend? I thought I was your friend. Shut up. The guy's in trouble. You don't want to help? Get out of here. Okay, relax. I'm listening. All right, look. Not to get too specific, but let's just say my friend, who is not me, is no longer able to achieve or maintain a viable erection. Quit beating around the bush. What's your friend's problem? His ring a ding ding's got no dung. Ooh, why you gotta be so graphic? Okay, I got this. Old Cheats knows a thing or two about a thing or two. You do? Oh, yeah. There's a simple solution. Really? Thank God. Tell your friend to blow his brains out. What? That's right. It's over. He ain't a man no more. Tell him to make a dignified exit. You'll be doing him a favor. Jesus, I was mad at the guy. Now I just pity the poor son of a bitch. <sighs> Hi, Daddy. Can I nudge in there and brush Mr. Chompers? Sure, kid. Whatever. Oh, who's a big glummy pants? Let's see a smile, Captain Frowns a lot. Mommy, Daddy's being a grumpy puss. What's going on in here? Daddy's sad, Mommy. Do you think we should give him some of my magic happy pills? Huh, Mom? No! Those are for you. And not for much longer. Run along now. I don't know about you, Jimmy, but that kid's starting to freak me out. Leave her alone. She's happy. What's wrong with you? A little girl ain't a little girl no more. Can't you see that? Hey, she's Canadian. What do you want? Now, excuse me. I got to go pay protection to some raccoons. <laughs> What's wrong, Ma? Did you see Petey's internet history? Worse. He turned your father into a Canadian, and now he's not himself. You probably don't want to hear this, but our walls are real thin, and I know you and Dad are having a <coughs> intimacy problem. Oh, God, the thought of mm, you listening? I know this is going to sound wrong, but... 
but I think I can help. Not <clears throat> another <clears throat> word. Teresa, this problem runs a lot deeper than what <clears throat> Oh, you're talking about? Ma, he's an Italian guy. It don't go any deeper than that. You need to make him jealous. When one of my boyfriends doesn't pay attention to me, I flirt with someone else. You should do that. Jesus, forgive me for talking to my daughter about this. Let me get this straight. All I need is some stud to slobber all over me. Jimmy gets jealous, turns into the gorilla that he is, and everything's back to normal? Exactly. And then we never speak of this again. Yes. <laughs> Please. But first... <laughs> we're going to confession. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't participate in such subterfuge, but seeing as it's for Jimmy, count me in. All right. When Jimmy walks in, we're going to be on the couch smooching and canoodling. I'll be rubbing your muscles. Don't worry. You don't mean nothing. <laughs> you might want to lose the shirt and oil yourself up a bit, big guy. <gasps> Cookie, get a hold of yourself. It's been a few days. My hormones are raging here. I'll behave. <gasps> Quick, get on the couch. Uh, uh... Oh, no! My husband has caught us in a compromising position. Surely now he will be so enraged he'll beat the crap out of my lusty paramour. What? No one said anything about- And sweep me off my feet, carry me upstairs, and make angry, righteous love to me. Cook, what are you doing? Or he could skip the beaten up part and go straight to the hot, crazy baboon loving. Look, it's real sweet of you to try and snap me out of this, but you don't gotta debase yourself with this greasy Latin hustler. Jimmy, it's me! Uh Silencio, muchacho! This is between me and my wife, who I can no longer pleasure. Snap out of it! All of this because you had to give up your stupid gun? The gun was the last thing I had from the old life. I used to be Jimmy Falcone, king of New York! Now I gotta accept that I'm Jimmy McDougal, king of the schnooks. Jimmy, you're a lot of things. A good breadwinner, a loyal husband, a totally half-assed father, but you'll never be a schnook. Cook, that's the sweetest thing you've ever said to me. And I wish it was true. Oh, for God's sake, he's killing me here. What do I gotta do to get through to this guy? Jimmy McDougal, former man. Gina, slow down. Jump into a lion cage? Put the kids in danger? What's that, Gina? You're in danger? Clear. What do I do, McCool? Tell me. I gotta get down to the school. <laughs> Where's he going? What the hell just happened? I don't know, but this spray tan is giving me a tremendous rash. Took you long enough to get down here, you moron. Oh, what's with you? Why are you being so mean? I thought you was on them good girl pills. I never took those stupid pills. I've been faking it the whole time. What? Why? To get Ma off my freaking back. I've been dumping the pills in the teacher's candy dish, and Prudence, the safety hippo, got into them and went nuts! Hang on a sec, I'm not following. What's a hippo got to do with safety? <laughs> that is one angry, angry hippo. Come on, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Whoa, I think you killed them. You think? Let's make sure. Come on, come on. One more. Okay, one for me. One for you. Oh, that felt good. All right, kid, I gotta go. You be good now. Good? I mean, you be you. Will do. You know, I kind of feel bad for the kid in that suit. Suit? Jimmy, what happened? I deserved that, Jimmy. Oh my god, you're you again! Did you get a gun or something? Oh, I got one, baby. And it's made of wood! Saskatchewan, la 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 la
You know my story by now. Most of it's even true. Thing about wise guys is we hardly ever told the truth. By hardly ever, I mean mostly never. We lied to everyone. Cops, judges, our wives, and mostly each other. We lied so much, we didn't even know we were doing it. Yo, Jimmy, these biscotti got almonds in them? Nah, don't worry about it. You need a doctor? No, I'm good. Lying came so easy that the truth was frowned on. Like the time Johnny Forthright came to town. Hey, Jimmy, with that gut, you're begging for a heart attack. Now, there's a reason wise guys never tell the truth. Because who wants to hear that crap? Then Johnny comes along with his mouth, and suddenly I'm so worried about my weight, I had what my doctor called a mild cardiac incident. <laughs> Once I got out of the hospital, I reminded Johnny that the truth hurts. Then I... Did not wipe the sidewalk with his face. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I'm still living a lie. Except this one's legit. And you've never looked slimmer. What? Good fellas ain't the only ones who can lie their freaking asses off. Ho! Oh, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Blue Tiger, you clear? Clear. Take the shot! Take the shot! Who is it? Huh, pizza? Oh, if someone ordered pizza this late, it's Sarah! They didn't order pizza. Repeat, did not order pizza. Pull back, send in the robot! <laughs> It's Halloween already? What the f are you supposed to be, kid? Ooh. He didn't take delivery! Go, 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 go! Jimmy McDougal, you've been duly served! Fifteen guys in a freaking toaster to serve a summons? Can't take any chances, sir. Not since last year's potty mouth incident. You Canucks are pussies. Gah! Harsh language alert! Fall back! <laughs> ah! I don't remember getting these tickets. Public urination, drunken disorderly, Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, that's a receipt. Six grand in parking fines? Ooh. Not so fast, Cheech. Did you get these tickets and use my name? Yeah, but don't worry. I burned them all. Remember? The whole garage went up. That was you? Technically, it was the oily rags that I tossed the burning tickets onto. Do you gotta wreck everything you touch? Yeah, like the skylight he tried to put in the bathroom? The fresh air helps me go. Or the ceiling fan he installed last year. So I goofed up. It happens. It happens every day with you, you bum! bum. <gasps> Who are you calling a bum? I'm calling you a bum, Cheech. You ruined my old life, and you're mooshing a new one. And you know why? Because you're a screw-up, and you're a bum. And that's the truth to you. Cheech, you okay? Huh. I'm fine. It'll take more than that to bring old Cheech to... How could they say them things about me? I'm not some kind of moron. I know. I'll pay the tickets. Jimmy will lend me the money. All right, he thinks I'm a bum. <gasps> Maybe they're right. What good am I to anyone? Help! My husband's trapped in that fire! Shut up! I'm trying to take you here. Ma, you gotta sign this so I can get vaccinated at school. You can't let him pump Gina full of autism juice? Uh, the link between vaccines and autism has been roundly rejected by the medical community. Ooh, the medical community. 
What about the community of celebrities who know how to raise perfect kids? Yeah, Petey. If they didn't know what they were talking about, they wouldn't be published in the pages of Celebrity Minutia magazine. But they won't let me go to school if I don't get them shots. Then I'll learn you at home. I'm not taking chances with your health. But you'll risk her catching rubella or whooping cough? Oh, don't make up diseases, Petey. Cool! I got you out of school. You're welcome. What you don't get, Brainiac, is when I miss school, I lose business. And when I lose business, I get dark impulses. So you're gonna take care of my business. What's in it for me? I won't break your nose. Throw in my arm, and you got a deal. Wakey, wakey! Canada has plenty of freshly painted substandard housing for people like you. Move along, my downtrodden friend. Just soak me in gas and light a match, Mukul. Mordecai Richler's legacy, Cheech. This isn't about Jimmy's parking tickets, is it? Sure is. Could you pull a little magic act and make them vanish for me? One can't simply vanish parking tickets. One pays them. And if one is so inclined, one pays them in advance. This one guy sounds like a jagoff. Could a jagoff do this? Who? Oh. Now do that 6,000 more times. It's a bus token, Cheech. You could always go to City Hall and fight those tickets. It's your right as an honest citizen. Well, citizen. I'll do it. I represented myself in court for littering once. Talked them down to a six-year stretch. Then I'll leave it in your marginally capable hands. For Canada, where we still believe in magic! <laughs> Looks like someone misses Cheech. Me? Miss that bum? Not a chance. Why, did he call? Not that I care. I I if he called, I tell him to go back to bum town or wherever he's been for the last couple of days. Did he call? No. I'm going to bed. You stay here, pretending you don't regret the awful things you said to him. Pop, this is weird. It ruins it if you talk! Hey, is your boss around, sweetheart? I gotta talk to him about some tickets. Whoa, well, Lady Mayor. How about we ram a few motions through your council chamber? I was thinking, Your Honor, since I did you a favor, three by my count, maybe you could do one for... <gasps> Maron! Oh, sweet lady, she died doing what she loved, screwing the people. I'm worried. I said some completely accurate things to Cheech that he totally took the right way, and I ain't seen him since. Last I saw, he was filled with vim and vigor, ready to fight those tickets in court. So don't worry, Jimmy. Jimmy! Cheech! Great news! You paid the tickets! No! I'm running for mayor! Rob Ford's big red face! I did not see that coming. And you're sure the mayor was alive during your... octogenarian boot-knocking? I may be a lot of things, but I ain't no necropelagic. All right, then. It was natural causes. More or less natural. But you running for her job is out of the question. Especially over pocket tickets. It's more than that. I gotta do something with my life before it's too late. So I'm running, McCool. Running like a cokehead's nose. Get ready to catch a serious dose of election fever because the mayor is dead. Oh, that's good copy, Carl. Oh, the candidates throwing their hat into the ring include Premier Mickey O'Shea, who's running on a why-the-hell-not platform, former strip joint manager Pierre Le Chua who's French, <laughs> as if, and area man Cheech McDougal, who promised pizza Fridays every day of the week. What do you think of me now? You were drunk and you didn't finish high school. I think you got a shot. Are you insane? Witness protection rules strictly forbid running for office. So kick me out. When I'm mayor, I'll have a whole police force to protect me. And get me lunch. 
I get you're excited, but there's no way in hell you can run for mayor. All right, then. Strange. Neither of us tried to stop him. I had no confidence in that fan. What's your excuse? Wow, you just say Gina's name and they shower you with money. <gasps> Here, I'll take care of that. I'm the substitution teacher. And I'm a nurse. I bet none of you want to get a big old dangerous needle, do ya? Uh -uh. No. I think I found my calling. Saving the children. Please don't touch me. Why are you here? I skipped work. Me and McCool would take a cheech out to cheer him up. What are you doing? Ma's homeschooling me because I ain't vaccinated. After this, I gotta unload the dishwasher for home mech. Is Cheech ready to go see some strippers? Oh, hello, Gina. Cheech said he was going to the election rally. I guess he meant direction. Election rally? Jimmy, let's go! Gina! Time for gym class! We're playing Hang the Laundry! Aye. Schwa schwa economic growth, schwa schwa anglophone pigs. What do you think Cheech is up to? God willing, a public withdrawal. Sounds dirty. I'm not one for long speeches, so thank you and goodbye. Whoa, wait, I forgot the thing. Hang on, watch this. Not tonight, honey. I have a, oh, I just don't love you anymore. That's marriage for you. But don't worry, pal. I got you covered. Hi, I'm Cheech McDougal. I've been all over this great city. Well, maybe not great. Face it, it's a shithole. Anyway, I've been talking to folks all over vagina. And while I can't remember any of them conversations, I know what people want. And that's... Uh, sex. If you're poor or ugly, which is most of you, sex is hard to come by. But not anymore. Today, I give you the Affordable Orgasm Act. Hey! Don't worry. Under my universal prostitution plan, the government pays for it. In that case, can I have one too? You bet your ass you can. And on election day, bet your ass on me. I'm Cheech McDougal, and I approve these wars. I know what you're gonna say, but I was on my way to quit when the mailman showed up. Male person, we're in Canada. Nah, I'm pretty sure Gloria's a man. Anyway, he had this bag full of donations for my campaign. The people have spoken, and they want me. You sure you heard him right? For the first time in my life, I'm not screwing up. I'm getting it right. And I owe it all to you. What? You gave me the kick in the pills I needed. You're not just my nephew, Jimbo. You're my best friend. Hey, one more thing, Paisan. Cheech, oh, cheech, can cheech, you tell cheech, this is a hairpiece? Cheech, cheech, cheech. And that is why eating mashed up insects is good for the environment and your complexion. Someone's gonna have a healthy glow tomorrow. <coughs> oh no, you're all getting sick. Thanks a lot, GMOs! Okay, everyone eat these donkey placentas. They ward off sickness and dark forest fairies. Waldo, make sure to chew. <laughs> oh! My superiors are threatening to have a beaver chew me a new one. It's a little consolation that I get to choose the beaver. No one back home is gonna mistake that Elvis-looking Huggy Bear for Cheech Falcone. Besides, there's no way he's gonna win. Yeah, what's the harm in letting him lose? It'll be good for his self-esteem. But the opposing candidates will make mincemeat out of him. Come on, Canuck politicians don't take the gloves off like they do down south, do they? You tell me. This footage provided by the O'Shea for Mayor Committee 
was filmed at a Cheech McDougal campaign stop. Of course I'm a feminist. My dinner ain't gonna cook itself. What the hell's an LGBTQ? Some kind of fucking sandwich? But if I slip one past the goalie, then I'm pro-choice. Hey, are you filming this? Yeah, now the kids can see me do this in one snort. See, McCool? He don't need to quit. His big mouth's gonna mess this up. Public reaction to the Cheech McDougal footage has been swift. I like Cheech. You really know what you're getting with him. Yeah, he speaks his mind. Like, it's confusing, but like, he speaks it. <laughs> it's high time we got our own sandwich. McDougal's numbers have soared, giving him... What is wrong with these people? This video is just the beginning. They're going to dig into Cheech's past, and do you know what they'll find? A lot of dead bodies? A man who, up until a few months ago, did not even exist! Yeah. I have been digging into Cheech McDougal's past. Whoa! I got no idea who you are, but McCool was just talking about you! You come alone. My wife usually helps me, but that's not what you meant. I cannot schwa reveal my schwa schwa identity, schwa. Come on out, schwa schwa. How did you schwa schwa it was me, Monsieur Jimmy? Call it a hunch. I did some digging on Monsieur Cheech. What I found was most schwa schwa. <laughs> Cheech forgot to sign his nomination papers. Even if he wins, he cannot be mayor, Schwa. His campaign is as illegitimate as my Schwa Schwa children. <laughs> Can you imagine? He had it in his grasp, and he schwa it up. <laughs> so you're blackmailing us? Eh, mais no, no, I like you guys. I give Monsieur Cheech the Schwa to save himself from the suicide-inducing embarrassment of this blunder. Nice of you, thanks. If it were me, I would light myself on fire and schwa in front of a train. <laughs> yeah, I get it. He's a dope. Then no one would have to schwa upon my corpse and say, Here lies the stupidest schwa on earth. Okay, enough. Uh, so, uh, can I schwa on your vote next Tuesday? Now that Cheech is ineligible to run, we're in the clear, Jimmy. Why the frown? Because I still got to break the news to the guy. So what? It's his own fault. Exactly. I called him a bum and a screw-up, and it almost destroyed him. If I tell him he screwed this up, I don't know what he'll do. Hopefully kill himself. In the old life, you were never supposed to truth someone. What if I truth all you guys? What if I told Petey sometimes I want to punch him in the face for being such a goofy little know-it-all? Or if I let McCool know I think his horse has more personality than he does? Suppose I told Gina here that Therese is actually my favorite. Or if I told Cookie... Watch it! <laughs> I gotta let Cheech down easy. Make him think quitting is his idea. This is gonna be harder than sitting through a Canadian movie. At least at the end I'll know what happened. But depressing, confusing cinema no one cares for is our national heritage. <laughs> Watch out for Big Palmer. They want us to waste money on medicine and cheese when we should really be using it to make sure blockbuster movies have solid opening weekends. <gasps> Run, Big Palmer! I didn't teach you, kids. You taught me. Oh. <laughs> Can we stop by the office? I want to get a reference. Hey, Jimmy, you want a lucky rabbit's foot for election day? Nah, I'm good. So, you gonna pack your bags? What for? Come next week, we're all moving to the mayor's mansion. Hey, bring a chainsaw. That place needs more skylights. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Actually, pal, we are moving. Now that you're gonna be mayor, McCool's relocating us. Uh, I don't think they'll let me be mayor from some other town. No, you're staying here. And I can't even tell you where we're going because you're not in witness protection no more. Anyhow, I came to say goodbye. You're gonna make the best mayor this town has ever seen. And from what I hear, the youngest. You're leaving? I'll never see you, Cookie, Teresa, Gina, or what's-his-face again? Yeah. Sorry. 
But I got everyone rabbit's foot. <laughs> I can't do this. Being mayor means I lose my family, so I'm out. Ah, he's a family man. Besides, all I'm gonna do is fleece the city dry, then burn the joint down for the insurance. But they'll still be free prostitutes, right? Yeah, for me. Don't you get it? Just cause you like me is no reason to vote for me. I got no idea what I'm doing. Outside of robbing you assholes blind. <gasps> Finally, an honest politician. Chance, chance, chance! It's like chance, talking to chance, a wall. Chance, all right, chance, that's it. Chance, chance, I gotta break all of your stuff. Come here, you! Chance, <laughs> chance, oh, you want one? All right, stop smiling. Yeah. Hey, buddy, get out of the way. I'm trying to hit your wife. <laughs> they just kept cheering for me, even when I had a handicapped kid in a headlock. No offense, but voters are stupid. Hey, the election results are in. Pierre Le Chua Chua narrowly edged out Mickey O'Shea to become the next mayor of Regina. That crazy Puerto Rican wants to keep universal prostitution alive. I gotta get a taste. I wrote that legislation. I'm sorry I truthed you, Cheech. It's okay. Just do me a favor and we're even. Help me pry this rug off. I stuck it on with hot glue. <gasps> Yo, Airhead, you got my money? No, but I have blisters on my tongue and I think I pooped a kidney. That's it. I don't care what Hollywood says. We're getting our shots. Kids, roll up your sleeves. McCool, drop your pants. But I have all my shots. I said drop them. La 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 Saskatchewan, la 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 all right, Gloria's collecting protection money, Mia's intimidating a witness, and Frenchie's cutting heroin with Parmesan cheese. Best smack in the city. So, what do we do? Chick flicks? This ain't girls' night out, ya lazy bum. Then Gloria hauls in Stinky LaRue, a notorious rat Jimmy wanted gone. But there was a problem. Ah, uh, I can't do it. I can't get blood all over this pantsuit. Don't look at me. I just had these nails done. I ain't washing no skull fragments out of my new roots. I was almost gonna let that scumbag go, but I had an idea. All right, f nuts. Before we do this, you're gonna sit here with us and watch a movie. Ooh, the vanilla lace tea cozy. 90 minutes of awkward English people stammering about their feelings. Who wants popcorn? I don't know, Cook. Even for the mob, death by chick flick is a little cruel and unusual. But no one in the family ever read it again. Yeah, right. And we're in Regina on freaking holidays. If you think Canada's gonna make me any less cruel and unusual, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. About this one. I already got to tell your brother to tuck in his shirt. I ain't telling you to tuck in your privates. My clothes express my individuality. Stop trying to census me. How about this? It says material girl with a hint of like a virgin. What the hell are you talking about? You know, Madonna. Lady Gaga's grandma? 
If we weren't in public, I'd smack you right in your stupid mouth. Teen troubles, Cookie? Oh, hey, Annabelle. You know how it is with teenagers. Can't live with them, can't drown them in the river. Well, we can't all be super parents. How do they fit, darling? Like I'm wearing miracles, Mother! What's with Billy Elliot over there? That's my son, Donnie. He's testing a pair of dance pants for this year's Regina's Got Talent competition. Regina's Got Talent? It's a performing arts contest. No, I'm asking. Regina's Got Talent? Yes. And my Donnie's won three years in a row. Right, Superstar? Ain't you two a pair? More like a team. It's amazing what happens when you don't threaten your children with abuse. Hey, me and Teresa are a team, too. <laughs> well, Twinkie, your teammate just abandoned you. Teresa, get back here right now, or so help me, I'll hug you so hard. Why do you want me to sign up for a talent show, Ma? I thought about what you said in the store. You were right about expressing your individuality, and this is a great way to do it. So it's a wet t-shirt contest? You got a beautiful singing voice, Teresa, and I want you to share it with the world. <sighs> My nose is crying. I'm not used to you saying nice things about me. Well, get used to it, teammate, because you deserve it. Take it easy, Ma. Who knows what's in that blood? Jimmy, what are you doing here? Regina Tourism sponsors this event, so I gotta sit here and sign up all the wannabes and losers. Well, Teresa's signing up. Did I say losers? I meant shining stars of tomorrow. Donna! You guys are the best! You're talented too, Gina, but this contest ain't for you. Pop, I got no intention of entering Regina's Got Assholes. Well, that's good, because you can't. What do you mean, can't? Age limit's 10 and over. You're too young, so you can't. 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 Let it can't. go, Gina. Can't. There's some things can't. you can't do. Can't. Can't. But this ain't one of them. Can't. 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 Shut up! Now, McCool, just because my daughter's in this, I don't want you showing any favoritism. Unless you're open to that. In which case, I can make it worth your while. Do you know why I've been asked to judge this contest three years in a row, Jimmy? Because no one else will do it? And my integrity. I am unbribable. I'm always the bribe's maid, never the bribe. <laughs> Toby for Jimmy. Toby for Jimmy. Hey, Toby, what's up? Toby for Jimmy. Come in, Jimmy. <sighs> Go for Jimmy. Oh, there you are. Aren't these headsets amazing? Anyway, I have terrible news! Turns out Dick Clark is dead. We need a new MC! Did someone say MC? Have you ever MC'd before, Uncle Cheech? I certainly have, young lady. If any of you's got any allergies, whip out your EpiPens, cause here comes Peanut Butter Cookie! Sorry I'm late. I had to finish the word parts for my first number. Number? It's like the one I sang at Uncle Luigi's thing, remember? He's shaking his ass just sharp as a knife. It's non-stop booty, just don't tell his wife. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it at Club Afterlife. Yeah. Yeah! Wait till they hear my new song, Labia of Love. Teresa, honey. The judges want to hear classics. Then I'll sing one of my classy ballads, like Angel with the Fake Tits. You cried when I sang it at Christina's communion. We all did, honey. But if you want to make it past the first round, you gotta keep things wholesome. Okay, I'll try. But let's not go overboard. Of course not! Now tape down your boobs and put on this nun's outfit. Now to help us forget the human pretzel practically licking his own balls, Here's our next act, g Doll and Enviro Pete. Now remember, I'm not your sister, I'm a doll. You sure are. Thanks for encouraging me to do this. My unique brand of edutainment is just what the people need. Shut the f up, we're on. Hey, g Doll, do you know why the ecosystem is in so much trouble? Because the owners of big factories are a bunch of dummies. Just like me. <sighs> Talk about an ego system. 
<laughs> Remember, everyone, think globally, act jokily. The ventriloquism's quite impressive, but the material's atrocious. Bring back the ball liquor! <laughs> It's only 60 pounds. Cause you'll have a great old time at the good old ball game. Stay neutral, old chap. Stay neutral. Looks like Teresa might make it through to the next round. And it looks like you might be crapping your pants. Well, get ready to eat it. Next up, we got a three-time winner, a one-man dance armada. And a true patriot. Let's give a warm vagina welcome to Nani Westminster! Freaking amazing! Makes that nun's routine look like a bowl of piss. That nun was Teresa. Oh, sorry. This kid makes Teresa look like a bowl of piss. You want us to fix the talent contest? Not the whole contest, just that freaking Donnie. He's unbeatable. Then I guess we'll have to beat some beatable into him. Anyone asks, I've been here all day. You have been here all day. Exactly. Cook, I'm not hurting a kid over a contest. Unless there's a cash prize. How much are we talking? It's a trophy and bragging rights. What am I, an amateur? And trust me, no one in that show's gonna do any bragging. Especially that boring nun. She's next on my list, Cook. That's Teresa! You wanna end this contest or not? Okay, forget it. I guess I'll just have to be a better mother and put way more pressure on Teresa. Everywhere that matters. To go. Stay on the high note. The high note. I don't believe the lamb's following, Mary. Convince me. Visualize your goals. Reactualify your happitude. You're just making those words up. Don't talk back to your life coach, Muffin Top. This is unexcuse my language. Frickin' acceptable, mother. Why didn't you hire me a life coach? Uh, I never. Never wanted me to win? Obviously. Ugh. I'm getting flushed. Fan. Donnie, you have nothing to worry about. Too dry. Spritz. Oh, are you trying to drown me? Donnie, calm down. Teresa's good, but you're better. I guess I'm gonna have to handle this because you're more useless than a donated appendix. Oh, Donnie. Fly like a dove. It's a lady of love. Hey, we agreed. No original songs. But I'm almost done writing it. I just need something that rhymes with reach around. Do you want to win this thing or not? Original songs, eh? <gasps> that gives me an idea. Go get the car, Annabelle. In <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. God help you if I get to 10. We barely squeaked into this round, Gina, so we really have to nail it. Don't forget. Be the message. Sure thing, Petey. Folks, if you need to use the crapper, now's a good time. Cause it'll smell better than this next act. I hate this guy. Oh. By the way, I changed our name. Oh, it's nice you're getting involved. Please welcome Little G. That's fun. And Dick Fart. Gina. Uh, ahem, <clears throat> okay. Hey, Little G. Tell us what you know about fracking. That's when you dig a hole in the backyard and fart in it. <laughs> then this cracking loser shoves his head in and sniffs. <laughs> right to the kisser. Ha, 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 jokes aside, um, do you know the size of your carbon footprint, little G? Two inches, just like your dick. <laughs> Gina, cut it out. Yes, um... Carbon emissions should be on everyone's minds. Along with the polar ice caps. Yes, thank you. Do you know why the ice caps are melting? Because you jerk off in the shower? <laughs> Dick Fart's getting served! So, why did you ask me out?
out, Donnie. I like you, Teresa. You're a good kid, and I want to give you some advice about the biz nasty. I got it directly from Al Pacino, his acting coach's website. Wow, you are connected. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've slept my way around the entertainment block, sweetheart. Had my fair share of mouthies, VTs. VTs? Oh, vagina touches. <laughs> so naive. Donnie, have you ever actually been with a girl? Are you kidding? <laughs> Any more tangy poon for me and my G-spot's just gonna fall right off. What part of this is the advice? This part. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you need to do something original. You mean like an original song? Yes! Oh! But who has those, right? I, I do. I write my own songs. You do? And you're not singing them? Um, are you trying to lose? But I promised Ma I'd wait until I won. Waiting's for tables, baby. Speaking of which, who do I got a blow jam to get another shake around here? We always laugh at you, but who knew you had real comedy chops? When that creepy troll doll accused you of clear-cutting the cheese... Oh, my ribs, Petey! My ribs! Gina, you should have seen this kid. He's a natural. Yeah, but his material's a little highbrow for Gina here. Now, let's not forget about the environmental message. I'm an edutainer, first and foremost. The reviewer says you've redefined the part of self-deprecating humor with refreshing brilliance. Um, I heard the dummy's pretty hilarious, too. Yeah, but without Petey, there's no act. It's just a hideous little puppet. Ooh, creepiest thing I ever seen. What's the G stand for, anyway? Grotesque? I thought it was just, God help me. No, it stands for, guys, look what just fell out of my ass. <laughs> 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 Now that we eliminated all the riffraff, it's time to hit the snooze button for the opposite of entertainment, Teresa McDougall. It's super drama, Fraggle Rock spaghetti is delicious. Ah, forget that crap. Regina, make some noise. <gasps> Use your hands, come on. Ah, oh. oh, yeah. This is a Teresa McDougall original Christmas jam. Sadder, how hard you tried or how badly she's failing. So get your butts to the bonfire. This is a race. He's gonna bust some Christmas cheer all over your face. Snip my foreskin and color me Jewish because Christmas is dead to me. Relax, Ma. I made it through to the next round, didn't I? Only by the skinny of teeth, thanks to that humpy dog act getting disqualified. <laughs> Toby, for security! Toby, for security! Where are you, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell told you to do your own song? Donnie, he told me to be original. Teresa Falcone, you got played! My song got played, and once I find a rhyme for Reach Around, I'ma be dropping another sound bomb, yo! Now the only way we'll beat Annabelle is if Donnie gets kneecapped. So that's why you made me enter this, to beat Donnie's mom? Who's playing who, Ma? I wasn't playing you. I was encouraging you. By making me dress like a nun and sing about baseball? You were a nun trying to keep orphans off drugs by getting them into sports. It's called a backstory, Teresa. You know what? You're in this for you, not for me. Teresa, wait! Ah, balls. You're welcome, Mother. Once again, I solved the problem. Now, can you handle getting me a smoothie, or is that too much for you, you dried up old cow? Oh, and I'm gonna need a new phone, because this one's broken! I freaking hate other people's kids. Kickball change and a funky hips. Eye on the prize, eye on the prize. No, 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 no. Who's a bad boy? That's me. Who's a bad boy? That's me. How do girls pee? Who knows? Do the running man. Go, Donnie. Go, Donnie. It's about time. You best have my smoothie. Hey, who, who are you? No. No! 
Are you ready, little G? What do I know? I'm just a dummy. Dick Fox! Say, little G, I bet you have something funny to say about me and the terrible effects of nanopollution. Little G? <laughs> do you have a frog in your throat? <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, frogs in mountainous areas are most affected by climate change. Uh, what do you think about that, little G? Make the troll talk! Come on, say something! Yeah, make the gargoyle emasculate you! <laughs> I'm a gargoyle? This from a guy with a baboon's ass for a face! <laughs> Does old McDonald know you left the farm, you f***ing donkey? <laughs> hey, McCool, a shot says pardon me? Uh, pardon me? <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you did. Hey, everyone, the gremlin called me a shot. <laughs> Stop the show! Look who I found out by the dumpster. Uh, Tony, I've been knee-banged. Calm down, everyone. I'm a police officer. I'll get to the bottom of this. Donnie, tell us who banged you. I was out back, waiting forever for my mother to bring me my smoothie when someone ran up and hit me right in my knee. My dancing knee. Did you recognize the assailant? He was wearing a mask. You mean she was wearing a mask? How could you, Ma? Yeah, how could you? I had dibs. Me? I had nothing to do with this admittedly fortunate turn of events. Oh, right. So when you said the only way I'd win is if Donnie got kneecapped, you were being psychic. Oh, my God, Ma, are you psychic? She's a witch! Is someone going to call an ambulance? Cookie, I'm afraid I'm going to have to inquire as to your wear a... <laughs> Shard. So good. <clears throat> anyway, where were you when this happened? I was nowhere near Donnie. I was backstage working on Teresa's song. I even found the rhyme you were looking for. Just reach around and make a happy sound. Huh? Why did you finish my song for me? Donnie may have been playing you, but he was right. You gotta be yourself. Stop upstaging me! It's my time to shine! Mine! None of this would have happened were it not for the incompetent shrew who birthed me. Donnie, don't. Shut your kale hole. If you'd have been there on time with my smoothie, you could have taken the hit for me. But you didn't. Why? Because you're a selfish, greedy, evil... <laughs> Fine! It was me! And I would have got away with it if I didn't just hit him again in front of everyone. Damn it! <coughs> Kneecapping your own kid? That shit is cold. I'll tell you what's cold. Diva Donnie making me walk beside the car on the way home from his singing lessons in the dead of winter because I was taking up too much oxygen. Oh, I could go on! He's a monster! Mother, how could you? Oh, shut up, you fucking drama queen. You know, we may not have the best relationship, but at least we're not these clowns. I love you. I love you too, Bob. Ah, now you got my nose crying. Not so fast, madam. A real crime has been committed. I have no choice but to arrest... Oh, the results are in. This year's winner of Regina's Got Talent is... Dick Fart and Little G! What? Who's Little Dick and G Fart? <laughs> you said I was too young to enter, but I did, and I won! Take that, you mother... Porky's revenge! It's alive! Run! Run for your lives! But Canada, we're even the most heroic, must sometimes flee in terror! Oh, so everyone gets a shot but Cheech? It's my oh. turn, kid. <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the New York crime family. Now I'm in witness protection in Canada. 
but I'll never forget that day. I was forced to leave the only home I've ever known. Cookie, kids, get your butts in gear. Let's get this vacation started. Canada awaits. Daddy, just because we're going overseas doesn't make this a vacation. I ain't denying it. I was in denial. I couldn't face the fact that I was leaving everyone I ever loved and taking my wife and kids with me. Isn't this fun? A family road trip. Who's up for another round of window uppy downy? Up, down, up, down. Whoa. Up, up, he down. always knows what it's gonna do. All right, you'll be under RCMP protection from here on. Off you go. It's cool. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Bienvenue. Come along, I have blankets and whiskey for all of you. This will warm your cockles. If it's gonna warm my cockles, I'll need a bigger blanket. I'm Special Agent Straight McCool. My mission is to help you assimilate, keep a low profile, and ensure you don't violate our nation's laws. I'm sorry. Violate what? <laughs> what a spirited group. I loved this assignment the minute I was given it. Let the protection begin. Hop in. You gotta be shitting me. And then they took us to this crazy place called Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you are thinking about a vacation up here, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. City, home of the Jews, the body of mobster Paul Vincenzo was pulled from the Hudson River. Foul play is suspected. Hey, look! Pauly the target got whacked. I can't believe it. He was always so careful. I wonder who did it. I'm guessing Vinny April did it. The Hudson's always been his go-to. Nah, look at the bruises on his face. Must have been Benny the Bruiser. My money's on Timmy, sissy bum. That guy'll f you up. Two ones! Holy craps! Snake Eyes! It was my cousin Sammy! That's the worst nickname ever! No, it's my cousin, comma, Sammy. Comma, Sammy? That's even worse. Your nephew, Nimrod! Snake Eyes Sammy! The guy's in trouble! If we can figure out he did it, so can Paulie's crew! Which means he's about to get whacked! I gotta save him! Ah, he's always about to get whacked. He's a good boy. You know, I still can't believe you stole Cookie from him. Whoa! I didn't steal no one. He was sent to Juvie, and Cookie needed his shoulder to cry on. All I did was show up with a hanky and a salami. You were so sweet, you big lug. You repoed my heart. And you stole mine. And then I stole you that necklace. So I hereby announce my candidacy for student council president. What's your platform? My platform? Thanks for asking, concerned student. If you elect me, I will ban all corporate sponsorship from school ground. Let's send the message that young minds are not for sale. Who's with me? That was painful to watch. What I have to say is important. I, I just can't get anyone to listen. Oh, little brother, you're so lame. The key to drawing a crowd isn't what you say, it's what you show. Thanks for coming to my brother's president thingy. We love you! And I have loved a ton of you. So I want you all to vote for my brother on the day you're supposed to vote, whenever that is. The issues. Tell them the issues. First off, more corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it's no more corporate sponsorship. Oh, it's just one word. It doesn't matter. More bullying. <laughs> It's no more bullying. You have to add the word no. Okay. No more funding for music and the arts. I got your message, Jimmy. How can I be of assistance? I got a problem. My cousin Snake Eye Sammy whacked Pauly the target. That's a serious accusation. I meant it as a compliment. But trust me, it was Sammy. 
He left his dice that always come up ones. All us wise guys have calling cards. My dad left an Italian sausage, Cheech left a cocktail onion. My calling card was a calling card. I figured I'd give the grieving family some minutes. I get that. Horse also likes to leave a calling card. Hey, same as Johnny Brand Flakes. You gotta get Sammy out of there. When police guys track him down, they'll torture him to rat me out. How could Sammy know where you are? I texted him. Mom, you have to talk Teresa out of running. She's just gonna embarrass herself. Petey, I think it's great that your sisters finally realize there's more to life than binging, purging, and shopping. Are you sure you're not a little threatened by your chances? Are you kidding? I'm totally threatened by your chances. That's why you gotta get her out of this. Petey, I'm not going to choose one of my children over the other. I love you all equally. You'll just have to make the best of it. Don't say I never do you any favors. I never say you don't do me any favors. Your whole job is doing me favors. I know, I just wanted a good entrance line. Hey, cuz, guess who? Sammy! Jimmy. <laughs> hey, everyone, Sammy's here. I'll leave you two to your embrace. But remember, Jimmy, you vouched for him, so you're responsible for him. Hey, how you hey, doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. How's it going? How is the trip, cuz? A breeze. Canadian cops are so freaking friendly. Which reminds me, I got presents for all of yous. Cheech, you son of a gun. Petey, you're getting so big. Teresa, holy moly, you must be the little squirt. And Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in a squad car, but may I say, you look like a million. You're so full of it. Keep it coming. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that pasta for Joel that I'm smelling? Your favorite. Welcome to Regina. Stun gun? Just what I always wanted. I'm a huge fan of your work, Cousin Snake Eyes. I can't wait to learn from the master. Ah! I'm all yours, kiddo, as soon as I'm done catching up with the real master. I am humbled to be in your presence. Really? I thought the folks back home would be mad about how I ratted everybody out. Ah, forget the ratting. Concentrate on the killing. You whacked Don Gambini, for Christ's sakes. You're a legend. A legend? Really? You kidding me? Your nickname back home is the guy who whacked Don Gambini. Now that's a nickname. So much better than that Cousin Karma guy. The guy who whacked Don Gambini. It's got a nice ring to it. Wait, you saying I can go back home and they won't whack me? Oh, they'll still whack you, but with respect. Oh, that's so nice of them. But Sammy, I ain't like I used to be. I keep a low profile, stay out of trouble, and now you got it too. Sit down. Let me explain how life here works. <laughs> Gina, if you're gonna have a stun gun, you gotta use it responsible. Give me that thing. First off, you gotta... Jesus! What's wrong with this? They used to have a safe... Take it! Just take it! Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in the squad car. I feel terrible. But you look great. I had to give you something. So, here. Oh, that's beautiful! Wait a minute. Isn't this the same necklace you gave Teresa? No. Mom, I can't find my new necklace. Maybe. <laughs> Sammy, you haven't changed one bit. Neither have you, Cookie. You haven't aged a day since high school. Yeah, those were good times. Remember the time we made out in the confession booth and confessed in real time? How could I forget? It was like, oh, God, Hail Mary. Oh, God, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> And remember that time at junior prom when we kissed on the dance floor and the principal separated us, so you gave him a wedgie? It was my very first kiss. And my very first wedgie. Mm. 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 Sammy, get out here! What are you drinking? So, that just happened. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Will you quit talking about my womb? Jesus Christ, you talk! It's not that big a deal. You got a light? I... I can't believe it. Yeah, I know it's bad for me. I'm trying to cut down. I tried the patch. That works for s***. All right, let's get down to business. Your ex kissed you, and now you're feeling ashamed and conflicted. You know exactly what's going on in my heart. You're truly miraculous. You do know I'm a figment of your imagination, right? You're too modest. Whatever. These feelings you have are completely normal. 
You fell for Jimmy because he was a bad boy, but he ain't no more. Enter Sammy. And these feelings won't go away unless you do something about them. You think I should tell Jimmy? Hell no! Do you know how Joseph was when I had someone else's kid? Moping and whining all the time? He wouldn't let it go. Always asking, who was bigger, Mary? Who was bigger? Who needs that, Zorus? So what are you telling me? Get it out of your system. Have some fun with a guy. <gasps> you mean commit adultery? I could never do that. Technically, you already have. No, I haven't. When Jimmy gives it to you, you think about Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Carrot Top. I don't know what that's about. The point is, it's a slippery slope. No, there's a big difference between thinking about someone and doing him. I cannot believe the Virgin Mary is telling me to have sex with another man. You're gonna burn in hell anyway, so what are you waiting for? These commandments aren't gonna break themselves. I figured I'd give you a tour. Get you used to your new home. Oh, after that meal, a walk's just what I need. Ain't nothing like that woman's cooking, huh? She's a real keeper. Yeah, cookie's the best. So, you guys happy? Yeah, sure. For real happy? Or I'm just saying that because I'm a married guy and I'm dead inside happy? Closer to the first one. On a scale of one to ten. Sammy, what are you getting at? Whoa, this is the little Italy in this town. Ain't it great? Sometimes we just come here and hang out for hours. How's the food? You kidding me? The place is run by a Chinaman. It won't happen overnight, but you'll adjust. See? Look at them. That used to be us. You're misremembering. We used to sneak up behind wimps like that and take their money. Then we'd force them to tell us where they lived and hold up their parents. Sammy, cut it out. Listen, going straight ain't bad. Especially in a city where there's, like, zero crime. Exactly. It's a freaking gold mine. We're gonna clean up here. No. Look, I pulled a lot of strings to get you into witness protection. Well... One. I only got one string, but I pulled it. So we can't live the old life. Now come on. Let's go to Little Italy and get an egg roll. This is where I work. It's a good job. A great job. I love this job. Proud of this job. You believe me? Jimmy, this is my bad. I was probably unclear when I explained it. Our policy is that staples must be lined up vertically, not horizontally. That's it. Do you have any idea who this man is? So, anyway, Toby, I was wondering if you could give my cousin a job. You'll just wind up making a fool of yourself. It's not like this is something you even care about. You're the one who'll make a fool of herself. You don't even have a platform. Hello? No, a platform is issues. A president should know this. You don't have any issues. Well, actually, you have lots of issues, but nothing to run on. Politics is a bitch. Bitch. Issues I'm, like, running on. If you elect me your school president, you will get to look at me all the time. And girls, if you don't vote for me, I will so screw you over. Thank you for seeing me, Jimmy. I didn't know I had a choice. Well, you didn't. I was being polite. Although I guess it was rude of me to say that, and for that, I'm sorry. Uh, me too? What's up? The crime rate, Jimmy. And I have no doubt that it's mostly due to your cousin Sammy. You can't prove nothing. Not yet, but it's just a matter of time. If Sammy goes to jail and talks, we'll have to move you to Quebec, and you have enough trouble with English. Do you really want to live somewhere where they speak French? I'm torn. I love their fries, toast, and kissing, but berets make my face look fat. I'm not kidding around, Jimmy. Get him in line, or else. For Canada, with a per capita murder rate only slightly worse than Denmark. I just spoke to McCool. You gotta help me with Sammy. What's wrong? The guy's rubbing anything he could get his hands on, and he's gonna ruin everything for us. You're being too hard on him, Jimmy. <laughs> Let me see that. It's so much fun, Ma. Best toy I ever got. So this is what a stun gun looks like. Oh, my stun gun! My stun gun! 
So where was I? Oh, yeah, Sammy. You're being too hard on him. He's a bad boy, like you used to be. I think you're jealous. Why would I be jealous? Did I say you're jealous? I meant Sammy naked. I mean, how can I help? I can't watch him all the time. So when I'm at work and the kids are at school, you gotta keep an eye on his every move. You gotta be on him like white on rice. If he tries to get you off, you dig in and hold on tight. Where he goes, you go. When he comes... Stop it! What? I don't know. Look, Jimmy, as long as we're on the subject of Sammy, there's something I should maybe tell you. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I wish I could have some kind of sign telling me what to do. Guess who just robbed that bank? You idiot! <laughs> now that's what I call a sign. Do you know how much trouble you could get us into? Jimmy, let him go. Let's at least hear his side of the story. Fine. Thank you, Cookie. Okay, I staked out the bank, I hit the bank, I made off with the loot. Bye to me! Let me at him! Jimmy, stop! He's a reasonable man. Just talk to him. It took us a while to adjust to the rules when we got here. He's your cousin for crying out loud. Blood. Hey, everyone. I'd like you to meet my new doll. Kill him. And in second place with 12 votes, Jason Hitler. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. Don't worry, mind Jason. There are better ways to seize power. And your new president with 33 votes, Peter McDougal. What? How could I not have won? Teresa, you never registered yourself as a candidate. But Petey said he'd do that for me. You didn't do that for me? Politics is a bitch, bitch. Whoa! What was that for? Jimmy saves your life, you do nothing but ignore everything he tells you, then you make a pass at his wife, and then you show up with some bimbo! In my defense, I made a pass at his wife and was turned down. That's why I got a bimbo. And what the hell did you kiss me for anyway? It really bothered me. Honestly, Cookie, I've been a wreck about it too. I got caught up in the moment. It was nostalgia. Old times. You look good. And you smelled nice. Knock it off! We may have to move because of what you've done. And as crappy as this town is, this is Canada. Things can always get worse. What are you thinking? I don't know, Cookie. I'm not thinking anything. I don't plan things. They just happen. I'm not smart like you and Jimmy and Cheech. Run a cheese. Who? Where did all that come from? Sammy robbed the first vagina credit union. He's always been a good boy. No, it's terrible. McCool's already on to him. Sammy's gonna get arrested and we'll all have to move to Quebec City, France. I never liked that, Sammy. We gotta get them their money back, but without anyone knowing it was us who returned it. We gotta somehow break into the bank and make them take it back. The old reverse heist. Nobody freeze! Put your hands down and get up off the floor! Don't do what I say or you'll all get hurt! Exactly. Instead of outlaws, we'll be in-laws. Hey, Jimmy, I've been thinking. I'm real sorry about all the trouble I caused. I'll do anything to make it right. You just name it. You're going to help Cheech and I return the money. Did I hear you right? You're going to take perfectly good stolen money and return it to a bank? Those crooks! i never been so ashamed of this family. Gina. You broke my heart, father. It's go time, boys. Put on your masks. Too bad the mask store was out of friends masks. I had my heart set on being Rachel. Rock and roll. Everyone freeze! This ain't a robbery! Underground, you mugs. Now! Nobody be a hero! Now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna open a safe, and you're gonna put this money inside it. Have you filled out a deposit slip? It ain't a deposit! Well, if you'd like to make an investment, you'll have to speak with Mr. Fielding. But he's on vacation till Thursday. I just want to give you this money! I can't process anything without an account number. Maybe this'll change your mind. <coughs> well? I can't process anything without an account number. This must be why the reverse heist never caught on. Just take it, will ya? We got made, dirty screws! What are you doing? 
I don't know. But we gave the money back! Die on me, Sammy. Not now. Not here. Not like this. Looks like the bastards got me. Those bastards! It was just a matter of time. I lived a reckless life. I took too many chances. Plenty of unprotected sex. Shh. Don't talk. And Jimmy, I gotta get this off my chest. When we was eight years old, I swept 20 bucks from my dad and blamed it on you. I know. It's okay. And when we was 14, and you got caught with all that weed, I was the one who hid it in your locker. Shh, 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 shh. save your strength. And when we was 16, and your sister got knocked up, that was me. You really gotta stop now. All this was a long time ago. And yesterday, I made a pass at your wife. Earlier today, too. You should probably die now. Okay. Saskatchewan, la 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 Welcome! Bienvenue! My name is RCMP Special Agent Straight McCool. I was just your ordinary run-of-the-mill Mountie until that day I first heard the name Jimmy Falcone. I'd like to request a transfer, sir. Again? You'd be my best agent, but you've got ants in your pants! I put you on vice, narcotics, homicide! You've cleaned up the entire west side of this country! What's even left for you? Witness protection. What? Forget it. Not a chance. Reforming the most hardened American criminals and turning them into respected members of society. What a challenge. What an honor. Can't do it, McCool. You're too valuable to me on the streets. I want the Falcone case, Chief. Nay, I demand it. Don't you nay me, mister. You're too high up for a job like that. I'm not gonna demote my best officer just because he wants to join the babysitter's club. I had to take action. Perhaps there was something I could learn from Jimmy Falcone. You are so demoted. And that, kind viewers, is how I received this assignment. And I won't rest until this ragtag American household becomes the epitome of fine Canadian citizenship. And if you think I'm ever going to give up on this family... Vagina! You can forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. item on the agenda. As you know, the annual Regina Winter Carnival is here, and one of us will be spending the week manning the tourism booth. Hold up. Did you just say one of us gets a week off to go to a carnival? Well, not so much a week off a as week a... week off? Man, I, I would kill for that. Hell, I used to whack guys for a lot less. I once whacked a guy just for a Klondike bar. I should write the company and tell them that. They're always looking for positive testimonials. And since I've done it for the past five years, I've decided I should be the one to go. Hooray! Wait. No. 
Actually, I think it's great that you're going to go to this carnival instead of me. It'll give me a chance to try out some new ideas around here. N new ideas? I was just thinking I'd reorganize the files, clean out the Rolodex, move all the bats and bites on the computer. You won't even recognize the place when I'm done. I have an idea. You go to the carnival. Oh, all right, fine. But you owe me. Cookie, you ever see that Tom Cruise, Dustin Hoffa movie, It's Raining Men? For argument's sake, I'll say yes. So, this guy has an artistic brother. He's terrible with the socialism, but he's like some kind of superhero. He can count cards. It's hardly a superpower. So, I've been thinking, Petey stinks with people. You ever think maybe he's one of them artistics? Watch how you talk about my son. Ah, he doesn't know what I'm saying. What you making there, sport? It's a high-energy particle accelerator in a bottle. It's like a ship in a bottle, but mine's a miniature high-energy particle accelerator, and it's fully functional. Ain't that something? But you can't go to the store by yourself. Of course I can. Wait, you think I'm autistic? I'm not autistic, and I take offense to your autism stereotypes. Autistic individuals are people like you and I, and have a lot to offer their communities. Petey, where'd you go? Retard land. So, as I was saying, how many toothpicks? Three. Look at this guy. A freaking genius. Hey, hey, hey! Who wants to go to a winter carnival? Oh, a family outing. I've been going stir crazy here all week. It's always mommy this, mommy that. Can I have this? Can I have that? He took my this, she took my that. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Ugh. It's not about you, kids. A carnival? No one but rubes and easy marks go to carnivals. <gasps> okay, I'm in. I am so going to win Carnival Queen. Do I have time to throw up, or should I purge on the way? You ain't going nowhere, kid. We gotta practice. How many cards am I holding up? One. There'll be no stopping them. Okay, later. See ya. Oh, Jimmy, a sleigh ride! Let's go. Just you and me, keeping each other warm, making people uncomfortable, watching us doing it in public. <laughs> oh, it'll be just like old times. Maybe later, honey. I gotta go work the tourism booth. What, you're gonna leave me here all alone? Some husband you are. I know that was sarcastic, but thank you! Say aww. Ah. Mommy will be back soon. Have fun! Wow! Mamma mia, that's an icy meatball! Did you make this? You like? i done a lot of ice pick work in my day, but never with actual ice. Would you like to give it a try? Thanks, but I got my own. Oliver. And now for everyone's favorite event, where the ladies really get to strut their stuff, it's Parka Time! This is ridiculous. How is anyone gonna know how hot I am? <gasps> All right, who wants to see a wet t-shirt contest? No! Hey, that's my talent. Why can't we go to the carnival? Just count the cards and we'll do whatever you want. Come on. One, two, three, after three, next after three, next after that. Come on. Tell me when we get to blackjack. That's not how card counting works, Uncle Cheech. The idea is to know when there's a concentration of high cards in the deck which favors the player. You assign positive, negative, or zero values to each card and keep a running count. And I'm not autistic! 
I wonder what goes on in that tormented brain of yours. He's magnificent. I've never seen anything like I've it. I've been to New York. It looks just like that. Who is he? Yes, who is he? Sweet Lady Gaga, is that who I think it is? And he's brilliant. The gentle touch, the keen eye. How could this be? He'll be famous. He'll be revered. And revealed. Oh, this is terrible. His enemies will find him and kill him. This is the best ice sculpting I've seen since Ice Pick McGee. Cover of Life magazine. Let's see what's under that scarf. Oh, no. I must create a diversion. Face off! Every time. Jimmy, a word. Sup? You magnificent bastard. You're truly gifted and must never do this again. Oh, come on. I'm really good. Good at this, and I never been good at angstering. Look what I made, it's a work of, what's that word, rhymes with fart. I'm sorry, Jimmy, it's too high profile. It'll make you famous. <whistles> Two minutes, roughing. Your enemies will find you and kill you, but it pains me to hide your talents from the world, but I don't want to see you dead, but to not let you share your gift would violate the laws of truth and beauty itself. You done arguing with yourself yet? Yes, no, maybe. No, yes. Come on, McCool, I'll wear my disguise. I won't tell anyone, not even Cookie. No one will know. I'd like to believe you, Jimmy, but I've met you. I swear on the lives of my children. All right, but you'll need a fake name. We'll call you... Jinxie. What, asshole was already taken? We'll come back tomorrow. It's 3 a.m. Where the hell you been? Cook, you have no idea how much work it is. All those tourists needing directions, pamphlets, ideas of things to do. They just take and take. I got nothing left to give. The carnival closes at 10. Where the hell you going each night? Jimmy, tell me the truth. Are you going back to crime? No, I promise. That means you're cheating on me, you piece of shit. Get the hell out. This ain't your bed no more. Cookie, I ain't. I promise. Come on. I'm too tired to argue. I'll sleep on the couch. Oh, Virgin Mary, I need you. I don't know what to do. My husband, I... I think my husband is cheating on me. All right, girlfriend, spill. Tell Mama everything. Don't leave out one juicy detail. I don't know. He, he comes home late every night, exhausted, but with a big smile on his face. He won't tell me why. Does he still want to pork you? I don't know. I try, but he, he just rolls over and falls asleep. Oh, yeah. He's cheating. Uh -huh. What, you want me to lie to you? He's a guy. If he ain't getting it from you, he's getting it from someone. Okay, okay, quit your blubbering. Look, Joseph wasn't giving me the time of day either. Then I hop into bed with God, suddenly he's all over me. Throwing a party in a manger, showering me with gold and frankincense and myrrh. Like I need any more f***ing myrrh. So get out there and make him jealous, girlfriend. Sleep around and win your man back. I could never do that. I took a vow. I... I love my husband. <laughs> Fat freak. <laughs> All right, but don't expect someone to magically appear in the middle of the night and do ya, because that's only happened once. Thinks he can leave me home every night. Well, I don't have to stay home. I can have fun without him. So this is that jinxie everyone is talking about. Wow, it really is beautiful. Dogs playing hold up. Skater getting whacked in the kneecaps at the Olympics. Swan and... Mistress. <laughs> oh. Cookie. Why are you crying, uh, miss? <laughs> it's, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> and so sad. Sad? 
Why sad? Because he's cheating on his wife. <laughs> like my husband is cheating on me. On you? No way. I... He'd have to be a total moron to cheat on a classy broad like you. You're just saying that. No, I ain't. I'm sure every day he thinks about how special you are and how lucky he is. And if he ain't, then he don't deserve you. How you doing? I'm Jinxie. You're Jinxie? Oh, I love your work. It's inspired. You touch me deep in my soul in a way I never felt before. I was just about to say the same thing to you. Now you're making me blush. Jinxie! I didn't tell you to stop. <laughs> Will you excuse me a minute? What? Can't a guy flirt with his own wife anymore? Remember your promise, Jimmy. She doesn't even know it's me. I could have some fun with this. Sounds kind of twisted. I know. How often does a guy get a chance to seduce his wife a second time? Well, just be careful. Hey, like I'm gonna catch anything from my own wife. I'll wear a rubber. I don't feel right about this, Uncle Cheech. Gambling is wrong. No, it ain't. How do you think I won my third wife? Here, have a drink. Is this alcohol? But I'm a minor. Relax. I put it in your sippy cup. Don't worry, he's got a fake ID. And keep them coming. 21. Player wins. <laughs> Stand, split, double down, stand. <laughs> Another round for all my friends. And a little extra something for you, Pets. Oh, I created a monster. It's beautiful. A pale imitation of the real thing. Oh, Jinxie, I've had such a wonderful time tonight. I don't want it to end. Maybe it don't have to. But, Jinxie, I'm a married woman. You deserve better. You deserve the best. I shouldn't. Yeah, you should. I shouldn't. Yeah, you should. Mm. 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 Oh, it's on. That was amazing. You were amazing. Am I ever gonna see you again? Tomorrow too soon. I got a big show, and it would mean a lot to me to have you there in my corner. I wouldn't miss it. Good night. Good night. Oh yeah, I still got it. Jimmy Falcone still got it. Wait a minute. She didn't know I was me. She thought I was him. Holy crap, my wife just cheated on me. All right, Jimmy, calm down. Go to your happy place. Cookie is your wife. By definition, that means no cheating has taken place. But she didn't know it was me. She thought she was boffing Jinxie. And you are Jinxie. Ergo, she was boffing you. Yeah, with her body. I'm talking about her mind. What does she see in this guy? I repeat, this guy is you. Well, what do I got that I don't got? Jimmy, I'm afraid I can't help you on this one. So I bid you adieu. For Canada! where we keep adultery in the family. Okay, it's time to put on the charms and win back my wife from that son of a bitch, me. So listen, about last night. What? What about last night? I'm sorry I've been working so hard. I know I ain't been a Model T husband lately, but it's a new day and I'm here to make things right. Now, I don't want to come off mushy or anything, but you want to get nailed? Tell you what, you go upstairs and get started, then finish without me! Jinxie! Hit me! Kid, you got 20, you gotta stand! You shut your face, old man. Nobody tells me what to do. I said, give me the ace. Holy crap, it's an ace! Woohoo! I knew it! I counted them! <laughs> you see that? I counted them! I'm a card counting mother f I'm autistic, bitches! You and me, kid. We're going all the way. I knew it from the day you was born. There was something special about you. Sir, would you come with me, please? I never seen this kid before in my life. Good 
evening, everyone. I'm Brad Wickers, along with Sal Foster, and what a treat we have in store for you tonight. It's Jinxie versus Block of Ice. Sal? As you can see, Block of Ice dominates in height and weight, but Jinxie enjoys speed and a definite reach advantage, so anything can happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for. The Fighting Iceman, the chip of the old block, the pick of Regina, Jinxie! Must break you. Cookie. Cookie! I love you! I love you too, Jinxie! Jinxie? Jinxie! You bring shame and dishonor to our proud establishment. You can't prove nothing. I'm a card counting mother f That could be anyone. You have disrespected our house and our house rules. In return, we shall confiscate your winnings. Over my dead body. Such arrangements are possible. Wait, Uncle Cheech, he's right. This is no place for a 15-year-old. It's not even legal for me to be here. Let's go. I should turn myself over to the gambling authority. Whoa, 15, you say? Uh, let us not be hasty. No need to get the authorities involved. You may keep your winnings. Go in peace, head shaped like egg. <gasps> You done good, kid. Real good. Thanks, Uncle Cheech. You know, I'm still not really sure why I said and did all those things I normally would never do. Yep, booze has a way of doing that to you. But be careful. You'll go to bed with some very beautiful women. Yay! And wake up with some very ugly ones. Oh. But they're still women, right? Not if it's tequila. Stop picking your nose and start picking the ice, you bum! I'm so confused. The more I'm Jinxie, the more Jimmy loses Cookie. But if I'm Jimmy, then I can't be Jinxie. Do I do my art and lose my wife? Or do I do my wife and lose my art? Or do I do a doobie and put on some Pink Floyd? Have you ever seen anything like it, Sal? No. And I once saw a donkey show in Tijuana. Jinxie is Jinxie! Thanks! Go back to making ace cubes, ya yeah, bum. Your work is derivative. What a debacle. And there you have it, arena ice sculpting. Wow, what were we thinking? All right, well, that's it from the Friendly Giant Arena in fugly downtown Regina. Stay tuned for Degrassi, the midlife crisis years. This seat taken? That depends. You looking to sit down next to a bum? You stop right there, mister. I don't care what anyone else thinks. You're not a bum. You're Jimmy Falcone. You know? What, you think I've never seen you in a nylon stocking before? And they're my nylons. Plus, you used your normal voice, you big dope. I knew from the beginning. I never could put anything past you, Cook. I'm sorry I neglected you and made you think I was cheating on you and lied to you and seduced you and banged you on a block of ice. I'll never do most of it again. You kidding me? That was the best sex I ever had. It was like you were my husband, but you weren't my husband. Like... Forbidden fruit. And kind of kinky. Hell yeah. I'm just glad it's all out in the open, because I couldn't take another guy getting with you, even if the other guy was me. It's all you, baby. It's all you. Uh, you mind putting the mask back on? Now that, people, is art. <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? Jimmy here. You know my story by now. Most of it's even true. 
thing about wise guys is we hardly ever told the truth. By hardly ever, I mean mostly never. We lied to everyone. Cops, judges, our wives, and mostly each other. We lied so much, we didn't even know we were doing it. Yo, Jimmy, these biscotti got almonds in them? Nah, don't worry about it. You need a doctor? No, I'm good. Lying came so easy that the truth was frowned on. Like the time Johnny Forthright came to town. Hey, Jimmy, with that gut, you're begging for a heart attack. Now there's a reason wise guys never tell the truth. Cause who wants to hear that crap? Then Johnny comes along with his mouth, and suddenly I'm so worried about my weight, I had what my doctor called a mild cardiac incident. <laughs> Once I got out of the hospital, I reminded Johnny that the truth hurts. Then I... Did not wipe the sidewalk with his face. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I'm still living a lie. Except this one's legit. And you've never looked slimmer. What? Good fellas ain't the only ones who can lie their freaking asses off. Ho! Oh, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Blue Tiger, you clear? Clear. Take the shot! Take the shot! Who is it? P pizza? Oh, if someone ordered pizza this late, it's their ass! They didn't order pizza. Repeat, did not order pizza. Pull back, send in the robot! <laughs> It's Halloween already? What the f are you supposed to be, kid? Ooh. He didn't take delivery! Go, 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 go! Jimmy McDougal, you've been duly served! Fifteen guys in a freaking toaster to serve a summons? Can't take any chances, sir. Not since last year's potty mouth incident. You Canucks are pussies. Gah! Harsh language alert! Fall back! <laughs> ah! I don't remember getting these tickets. Public urination, drunken disorderly, Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, that's a receipt. Six grand in parking fines? Ooh. Not so fast, Cheech. Did you get these tickets and use my name? Yeah, but don't worry. I burned them all. Remember? The whole garage went up. That was you? Technically, it was the oily rags I tossed the burning tickets onto. Do you gotta wreck everything you touch? Yeah, like the skylight he tried to put in the bathroom? The fresh air helps me go. Or the ceiling fan he installed last night. <laughs> so I goofed up. It happens. It happens every day with you, you bum bum. <gasps> Who are you calling a bum? I'm calling you a bum, Cheech. You ruined my old life and you're mooshing a new one. And you know why? Because you're a screw up and you're a bum. And that's the truth to you. Cheech, you okay? Huh. I'm fine. It'll take more than that to bring old Cheech down. How could they say them things about me? I'm not some kind of moron. I know. I'll pay the tickets. Jimmy will lend me the money. All right, he thinks I'm a bum. <gasps> Maybe they're right. What good am I to anyone? Shut up, I'm trying to take you here. Ma, you gotta sign this so I can get vaccinated at school. You can't let him pump Gina full of autism juice. Uh, the link between vaccines and autism has been roundly rejected by the medical community. Ooh, the medical community. 
What about the community of celebrities who know how to raise perfect kids? Yeah, Petey. If they didn't know what they were talking about, they wouldn't be published in the pages of Celebrity Minutia magazine. But they won't let me go to school if I don't get them shots. Then I'll learn you at home. I'm not taking chances with your health. But you'll risk her catching rubella or whooping cough? Oh, don't make up diseases, Petey. Cool! I got you out of school. You're welcome. What you don't get, Brainiac, is when I miss school, I lose business. And when I lose business, I get dark impulses. So you're gonna take care of my business. What's in it for me? I won't break your nose. Throw in my arm, and you got a deal. Wakey, wakey! Canada has plenty of freshly painted substandard housing for people like you. Move along, my downtrodden friend. Just soak me in gas and light a match, Mukul. Mordecai Richler's legacy, Cheech. This isn't about Jimmy's parking tickets, is it? Sure is. Could you pull a little magic act and make them vanish for me? One can't simply vanish parking tickets. One pays them. And if one is so inclined, one pays them in advance. This one guy sounds like a jagoff. Could a jagoff do this? Who? Oh. Now do that 6,000 more times. It's a bus token, Cheech. You could always go to City Hall and fight those tickets. It's your right as an honest citizen. Well, citizen. I'll do it. I represented myself in court for littering once. Talked them down to a six-year stretch. Then I'll leave it in your marginally capable hands. For Canada, where we still believe in magic! <laughs> Looks like someone misses Cheech. Me? Miss that bum? Not a chance. Why, did he call? Not that I care. I I if he called, I tell him to go back to bum town, uh, wherever he's been for the last couple of days. Did he call? No. I'm going to bed. You stay here, pretending you don't regret the awful things you said to him. Pop, this is weird. It ruins it if you talk! Hey, is your boss around, sweetheart? I gotta talk to him about some tickets. Whoa, well, Lady Mayor. How about we ram a few motions through your council chamber? I was thinking, Your Honoree, since I did you a favor, three by my count, maybe you could do one for... <gasps> Maron! Oh, sweet lady, she died doing what she loved. Screwing the people. I'm worried. I said some completely accurate things to Cheech that he totally took the right way, and I ain't seen him since. Last I saw, he was filled with vim and vigor, ready to fight those tickets in court. So don't worry, Jimmy. Jimmy! Cheech! Great news! You paid the tickets! No! I'm running for mayor! Rob Ford's big red face! I did not see that coming. And you're sure the mayor was alive during your... octogenarian boot-knocking? I may be a lot of things, but I ain't no necropelagic. All right, then. It was natural causes. More or less natural. But you running for her job is out of the question. Especially over pocket tickets. It's more than that. I gotta do something with my life before it's too late. So I'm running, McCool. Running like a cokehead's nose. Get ready to catch a serious dose of election fever because the mayor is dead. Oh, that's good copy, Carl. Oh, the candidates throwing their hat into the ring include Premier Mickey O'Shea, who's running on a why the hell not platform, former strip joint manager Pierre Le Chouachoua, who's French, <laughs> as if, and area man Cheech McDougal, who promised pizza Fridays every day of the week. What do you think of me now? You were drunk and you didn't finish high school. I think you got a shot. Are you insane? Witness protection rules strictly forbid running for office. So kick me out. When I'm mayor, I'll have a whole police force to protect me. And get me lunch. 
I get you're excited, but there's no way in hell you can run for mayor. All right, then. Strange. Neither of us tried to stop him. I had no confidence in that fan. What's your excuse? Wow, you just say Gina's name and they shower you with money. <gasps> Here, I'll take care of that. I'm the substitution teacher. And I'm a nurse. I bet none of you want to get a big old dangerous needle, do ya? No, uh -uh. no. I think I found my calling. Saving the children. Please don't touch me. Why are you here? I skipped work. Me and McCool would take a cheech out to cheer him up. What are you doing? Ma's homeschooling me because I ain't vaccinated. After this, I gotta unload the dishwasher for home mech. Is Cheech ready to go see some strippers? Oh, hello, Gina. Cheech said he was going to the election rally. I guess he meant erection. Election rally? Jimmy, let's go! Gina! Time for gym class! We're playing hang the laundry! Aye. Schwa schwa economic growth, schwa schwa anglophone pigs. What do you think Cheech is up to? God willing, a public withdrawal. Sounds dirty. I'm not one for long speeches, so thank you and goodbye. Oh, wait. I forgot the thing. Hang on, watch this. Not tonight, honey. I have a... Oh, I just don't love you anymore. That's marriage for you. But don't worry, pal. I got you covered. Hi, I'm Cheech McDougal. I've been all over this great city. Well, maybe not great. Face it, it's a shithole. Anyway, I've been talking to folks all over Vagina. And while I can't remember any of them conversations, I know what people want. And that's... Uh, sex. If you're poor or ugly, which is most of you, sex is hard to come by. But not anymore. Today, I give you the Affordable Orgasm Act. Hey! Don't worry. Under my universal prostitution plan, the government pays for it. In that case, can I have one too? You bet your ass you can. And on election day, bet your ass on me. I'm Cheech McDougal, and I approve these wars. I know what you're gonna say, but I was on my way to quit when the mailman showed up. Mail person, we're in Canada. Nah, I'm pretty sure Gloria's a man. Anyway, he had this bag full of donations for my campaign. The people have spoken, and they want me. You sure you heard him right? For the first time in my life, I'm not screwing up. I'm getting it right. And I owe it all to you. What? You gave me the kick in the pills I needed. You're not just my nephew, Jimbo. You're my best f***ing friend. Hey, one more thing, Paisan. Can you tell this is a hairpiece? Cheech, cheech, cheech. And that is why eating mashed up insects is good for the environment and your complexion. Someone's gonna have a healthy glow tomorrow. <coughs> oh no, you're all getting sick. Thanks a lot, GMOs! Okay, everyone eat these donkey placentas. They ward off sickness and dark forest fairies. Waldo, make sure to chew. <laughs> oh! My superiors are threatening to have a beaver chew me a new one. It's a little consolation that I get to choose the beaver. No one back home is gonna mistake that Elvis-looking Huggy Bear for Cheech Falcone. Besides, there's no way he's gonna win. Yeah, what's the harm in letting him lose? It'll be good for his self-esteem. But the opposing candidates will make mincemeat out of him. Come on, Canuck politicians don't take the gloves off like they do down south, do they? You tell me. This footage provided by the O'Shea for Mayor Committee 
was filmed at a Cheech McDougal campaign stop. Of course I'm a feminist. My dinner ain't gonna cook itself. What the hell's an LGBTQ? Some kind of fucking sandwich? But if I slip one past the goalie, then I'm pro-choice. Hey, are you filming this? Yeah, now the kids can see me do this in one snort. See, McCool? He don't need to quit. His big mouth's gonna mess this up. Public reaction to the Cheech McDougal footage has been swift. I like Cheech. You really know what you're getting with him. Yeah, he speaks his mind. Like, it's confusing, but like, he speaks it. <laughs> it's high time we got our own sandwich. McDougal's numbers have soared, giving him... What is wrong with these people? This video is just the beginning. They're going to dig into Cheech's past, and do you know what they'll find? A lot of dead bodies? A man who, up until a few months ago, did not even exist! Yeah. I have been digging into Cheech McDougal's past. Whoa! I got no idea who you are, but McCool was just talking about you! You come alone. My wife usually helps me, but that's not what you meant. I cannot schwa reveal my schwa schwa identity, schwa. Come on out, schwa schwa. How did you schwa schwa it was me, Monsieur Jimmy? Call it a hunch. I did some digging on Monsieur Cheech. What I found was most schwa schwa. <laughs> Cheech forgot to sign his nomination papers. Even if he wins, he cannot be mayor, Schwa. His campaign is as illegitimate as my Schwa Schwa children. <laughs> Can you imagine? He had it in his grasp, and he schwa it up. <laughs> so you're blackmailing us? Eh, mais no, no, I like you guys. I give Monsieur Cheech the Schwa to save himself from the suicide-inducing embarrassment of this blunder. Nice of you, thanks. If it were me, I would light myself on fire and schwa in front of a train. <laughs> yeah, I get it. He's a dope. Then no one would have to schwa upon my corpse and say, Here lies the stupidest schwa on earth. Okay, enough. Uh, so, uh, can I schwa on your vote next Tuesday? Now that Cheech is ineligible to run, we're in the clear, Jimmy. Why the frown? Because I still got to break the news to the guy. So what? It's his own fault. Exactly. I called him a bum and a screw-up, and it almost destroyed him. If I tell him he screwed this up, I don't know what he'll do. Hopefully kill himself. In the old life, you were never supposed to truth someone. What if I truthed all you guys? What if I told Petey sometimes I want to punch him in the face for being such a goofy little know-it-all? Or if I let McCool know I think his horse has more personality than he does? Suppose I told Gina here that Therese is actually my favorite. Or if I told Cookie... Watch it! <laughs> I gotta let Cheech down easy. Make him think quitting is his idea. This is gonna be harder than sitting through a Canadian movie. At least at the end I'll know what happened. But depressing, confusing cinema no one cares for is our national heritage. <laughs> So watch out for Big Palmer. They want us to waste money on medicine and cheese when we should really be using it to make sure blockbuster movies have solid opening weekends. <gasps> Run, Big Palmer! I didn't teach you, kids. You taught me. Oh. <laughs> Can we stop by the office? I want to get a reference. Hey, Jimmy, you want a lucky rabbit's foot for election day? Nah, I'm good. So, you gonna pack your bags? What for? Come next week, we're all moving to the mayor's mansion. Hey, bring a chainsaw. That place needs more skylights. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. bags. Actually, pal, we are moving. Now that you're gonna be mayor, McCool's relocating us. Uh, I don't think they'll let me be mayor from some other town. No, you're staying here. And I can't even tell you where we're going because you're not in witness protection no more. Anyhow, I came to say goodbye. You're gonna make the best mayor this town has ever seen. And from what I hear, the youngest. You're leaving? I'll never see you, Cookie, Teresa, Gina, or what's-his-face again? Yeah. Sorry.
But I got everyone rabbit sports. <laughs> Okay, shut up. Seriously, shut the f up. I can't do this. Being mayor means I lose my family, so I'm out. Ah, he's a family man. Besides, all I'm gonna do is fleece the city dry, then burn the joint down for the insurance. But they'll still be free prostitutes, right? Yeah, for me. Don't you get it? Just cause you like me is no reason to vote for me. I got no idea what I'm doing. Outside of robbing you assholes blind. <gasps> Finally an honest politician. Chance, chance, chance! It's like chance, talking to chance, a wall. Chance. All right, chance, that's it. Chance, chance. I gotta break all of your stuff. Come here, you. <laughs> no, you want one? All right, stop smiling. Ooh. Hey, buddy, get out of the way. I'm trying to hit your wife. <laughs> They just kept cheering for me, even when I had a handicapped kid in a headlock. No offense, but voters are stupid. Hey, the election results are in. Pierre Le Chua Chua narrowly edged out Mickey O'Shea to become the next mayor of Regina. That crazy Puerto Rican wants to keep universal prostitution alive. I gotta get a taste. I wrote that legislation. I'm sorry I truthed you, Cheech. It's okay. Just do me a favor and we're even. Help me pry this rug off. I stuck it on with hot glue. <gasps> Yo, Airhead, you got my money? No, but I have blisters on my tongue and I think I pooped a kidney. That's it. I don't care what Hollywood says. We're getting our shots. Kids, roll up your sleeves. McCool, drop your pants. But I have all my shots. I said drop them. La 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 Saskatchewan, la 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 in the old life, it was never easy for me to take a vacation. Booking on points is so freaking complicated. Plus, I had to leave Cheech in charge. <sighs> Son of a... Cheech, you better be on fire or dead. And if so, how are you calling? Jimmy, I'm locked out of the club. What are you bothering me for? Call Fats and get the other key. I can't. He's locked inside. <sighs> Oh, huh? What do you mean, you and Fats are both locked in? I was on the roof, there's a skylight, the rest is a blur. But uh, it's not our club. What? Someone's here, I gotta go. Turned out to be the Spamonte family's club. Cheech didn't want to pay for the skylight he broke, so he just up and shot everybody. Around the neighborhood, they still call it the Jimmy's Trip to Aruba Massacre. I always called it the Fats is a big fucking crybaby bloodbath. God rest his soul. Now that I'm in witness protection, it's like a permanent vacation. At a two-star resort where everybody says sorry all the time. We've only had one vacation from this apologetic iceberg of a country. And was it worth it? Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. What is it, a mouse? Nah, it's one of Teresa's boyfriends trying to sneak out. <clears throat> no sleepovers, kid. That's it? You letting him go? Take him out back and explain the rules to his face. Ah, cook, who gives a crap? I'm free. I've been in there since... Ah, my eyes! Ah! 
Look at him, McCool. He's depressed. Snap out of it! You got nothing to be depressed about, you useless sack of garbage! Pop, if you decide to slit your wrists, have some courtesy and do it in the bathtub. You need a gun, slugger. Take my calls. I'm not wiping your brains off mine. Nah, Jimmy will go out like a wise guy. Suck in an oxygen tank in prison. Sweet Mitsu's cowboy! Jimmy's under the moon and you're all making morbid jokes. Clearly, Canada's character-building midwinter gloom is affecting all of you. But I have a solution. Please say therapy. Please say therapy. A vacation! Aw, oh, come on! <gasps> you hear that, Jimmy? We're going on vacation! Yeah, right. Knowing McCool, it'll be a day trip to Lake Who Gives a Shit. For Canada, where everyone needs to get the hell out once in a while. <laughs> Don't move, you capitalist pigs! I'm taking this plane to Cuba! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Welcome to Cuban Airlines. I'm your pilot, Brad. That's just a little thing we do to lighten the mood around here. Enjoy the flight. McCool, you said vacation, not being babysat by a Fed in a communist hellhole. But Cuba's perfect. There's literally no chance you'll be spotted by the mob. Then why are you coming with us? I need a vacation from all things Canuck, or I'm gonna lose my freaking mind! No, oh, of course. I, I just thought we could, you know... Hang. The whole point of this was to stop me from hanging. Myself. Oh, no, no problem, Jimmy. I, I won't get in your hair. For the next week, old Street McCool's gonna be all about rest, rejuvenation, and relaxation. How can you relax in a country that treats people so bad? Every country has its share of human rights violations. Except Canada, of course. Yeah, no, you guys are awesome. I ain't seen a Cuban since that thing we did not do in Dallas. Excuse me, I gotta kill Kennedy. I mean, take a leak. I can't wait to take in the music, culture, and revolutionary atmosphere of Cuba. The people's paradise. Shut up, Trotsky. Kid, get the waitress to open the door. Bienvenido a Cuba. Liberated from American business interests and mafia-controlled casinos since 1959. Tommy sons of bitches. You know, I ran one of them casinos down here back in the day. I banged so many Cuban broads. They gave me a nickname, Don Juan de Gonorrhea. How old were you? I don't know, 20... no, 10. Look around, Jimmy. Cuba's a paradise. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough! You're not leaving my side for the next week! He's a nice Canadian boy. He's French Canadian. You'll have your panties off faster than you can say. I think the word you're looking for is wow. Huh? <laughs> Give me those back. I should mention, and I know this from experience, do not drink the tap water here lest you get a porcelain shattering case of Batista's revenge. Huh? Wanna go for a dip in a pool? Nah, too many German tourists. Hoo-hoo, -ho, it's the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> <sighs> Jimmy, lighten up. Cuba ain't so bad. It ain't so good either. Hey, where's Gina? I'm supposed to watch her in case she drowns. Somebody. She's probably over at the kids' club. <laughs> ah, to be a child again. Petey unless I buy a timeshare. Petey's gonna have to ride it out. Escorpion Azul. Escorpion Azul. Ma, I think he's trying to tell us something. Cuba is home to the legendary blue scorpion, reputed to cure everything from cancer to diarrhea. But Petey, we can't go into a dangerous jungle just because you got fizzy gravy. Mom's right. I'll be at the pool. How does he do that? On second thought, we're going. Why should Petey suffer? This vacation sucks. So long as you don't. Gina, what are you doing in here? I thought you'd be out selling black market Bibles. 
You know, there's a swim up bar. You don't even gotta get up to go to the John. What's this? It's nothing. It's a porno machine, Jimmy. Don't you know anything? Give me that! Mind your business. <laughs> Greetings, fellow Americans. I represent the five families of organized crime who do not exist. We've joined forces with the government to encourage patriotic sociopaths like you to eliminate the communist leader of Cuba. If successful, you'll be granted super maid status and be untouchable by the mob. You'll also get a lifetime presidential pardon from the feds. Ain't that right, Jack? Act fast, and we'll throw in a free lobotomy for your yappy missus. How did you know about this? How did you not? It's been around since the 60s. So you are gonna kill Castro? Look who just clued in. Are these guys gonna f or what? So once we take out El Presidente, we can go back to New York. No way. I'm doing this alone. When you and Cheech get involved, things always go straight into the crapper. She's got a point, Jimmy. Sometimes you're a real screw-up. Oh. You can't do this alone. You'll wind up in Cuban jail with all the poets and playwrights. It'll be so boring! I'll cut the act, Pop. If we're gonna get our whole life back by killing a guy, let's do it together like a family. Fine. But I'm not taking a backseat on my own caper, capiche? <laughs> You were saying? One day I'll be taller, but you'll always be a fat ass! Let's go! What am I doing here? We're supposed to be on vacation, not out in the sticks hunting down an insect. Keep looking. Extremely rare blue scorpions can't be that hard to find. I see one! Where? On your arm! Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Are you kidding me? We had one, and you went and killed it! Oh. Petey, we're not camping here. Get out of the sleeping bag! All right, we only get one shot at this. How do you know he's in there? Cause while you girls were packing your bikinis, I was planning this caper to the letter. Every day after brunch, he comes to that window to feed his pigeon, Lee Harvey Birdswalt. And when he does... I'm gonna turn his head into a mist. Jimmy, that's beautiful. I thought it up on the ride over. Wasn't sure if I'd use it. Well, I for one am glad you did. Give me that! Orphan Castro was my idea. I'm doing the honors. Why wait? I'll go in there right now and blow his head off. I'm the boss. I'll do it. But I am the boss's uncle. Shut up, you mooks. You want the whole country to know what we're doing? She's right. Keep it down. Hey, look, it's McCool. <sighs> Yo, McCool. Jeez, what are you doing? Hide the gun. See what I mean? Right into the crapper. Fancy seeing you three. Come to take in the sights, sounds, and smells of old Havana. Yeah, yeah, sights and smells. We're doing sounds tomorrow. Why are you walking around all alone? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Not now, Cheech. Why? I'm just saying he looks all lonely and pathetic, like a loser. I'm not lonely. Matter of fact, I'm going to visit my Cuban friend, Ronaldo Garcia. Well, then, you better get going. Hey, I knew a Garcia once. He drove an ice cream truck. Here in Havana? No, no, in New York. You think they're related? Oh, my God, Cheech! Give me that! I doubt it. Ronaldo is an orphan. Well, he's probably dying to see you then. Hang on, hang on. It wasn't Garcia. It was Gonzalez. For the love of food! So, probably not related. Cool. Okay, well, off to the, um, orphanage. Cheerio! Damn it! Put this in your mouth. What? What did I do? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Esmeralda, your hands are so soft. Mm. Good. 
tripping balls, Ma. When are you gonna give up when he's dead? You wish. Keep looking. Come on, Petey. Let's go back to the resort. <laughs> Fine. Take your chances with Ma. Teresa, you can't leave me here. Why? Because you're scared I might actually have fun on this vacation? No. Because I'm lost. <laughs> Get out of here! That is not how my son is losing his virginity! <laughs> Our one chance, and you blew it! It's McCool's fault. The guy wouldn't shut up about his stupid friend. You did it to me again. Without you dopes, I'd be toasting Castro's headless cadaver with a Cuba Libre. You know that's just rum and coke. <sighs> Presidential Palace, por favor. And that, mi amigos, is how the Cuba Libre differs from a mere rum and coke. Ah. That is cool. <laughs> I see what you're doing here. Y you do? Don't think I didn't notice. You drove around a little bit. I, uh... <laughs> it's okay, comrade. But you do that with the tourists, yes? Not with El Jefe. Okay? Okay. Hasta luego! That is one charming motherfucker. What a presence, this guy. I got goosebumps. No wonder he's so hard to kill. <gasps> ah, God damn it! It's like, I just... Wanted him to like me. I know. I couldn't make a move. You almost forget that man's a bloodthirsty dictator. You think he liked me? Punch it! It's the only road I recognized. But you have to stop for a fare. Gina, this resort ain't cheap. Jimmy! McCool, you been drinking? Oh, yeah, me and Ronaldo Garcia, when we get together, I <laughs> chihuahua! I miss horse. <laughs> I'm in here! Horse? No, we fell happy! I'm in the crowd! Oh, God, Jimmy, you didn't! Technically, it was Gina. And the rat comes out. From Heller's dinosaurs, what have you done? Okay, this is fixable. We'll drop in back at the palace and pay the cab. Congratulations, Jimmy. You've liberated Cuba and ruined my life. I trusted you. See, that was your first mistake. <gasps> we can still get through this. Let me do the talking. No, thanks a lot, guys. Come on. Move it. Keep no, going. Keep going. Get them. They took El Jefe. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I'm... Halt! You are trespassing on American soil. Do not move or we shoot. American soil? Yeah! <laughs> American soil. Oh, that's better. I cannot believe you assassinated a president to get away from Canada. I thought we were friends. What's friendship got to do with it? Apparently nothing. All right, let's get one thing straight. I'm not offering you weirdos asylum, got it? But we killed Castro. We killed Castro too. Killed him good. Shut up. If I had a dime for every nut job who hopped that fence claiming to have killed Castro, I'd have a mountain of dimes and I'd sit on that mountain and declare myself the king of dimes. 
That sounds amazing. My point is, we're handing you right back to the Cuban authorities. Excuse me, Colonel Korn. I think you'd better see this. Multiple sources confirm Castro has been kidnapped by a red-headed midget posing as a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mr. President, it's confirmed. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Oh, I am so fucking fired. <gasps> what? I can swear. Mother, I couldn't find one stinking bug. It's an arachnid, and you're a great mother. A great mother wouldn't let this happen. But you can't watch your kids every move, right? Well, I should have thought before I drank from that. I just want to keep Teresa from making the same mistakes I did. Oh, we're on Teresa now? You don't got to worry about me, Ma. How did you find us? And what's he doing here? You won't believe this. Jean-Philippe here likes to catch these and stick them up his ass. Keeps down the hemorrhoids. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Ma, what the hell? Sorry. Those things creep the shit out of me. You got another one up there, JP? If you would have trusted me, we could have had fun instead of running around the jungle like Boob Raider. It's Tomb Raider. Shut up, Edie. Oh. Teresa, you're right. Uh, you didn't do anything with Jan Philip here, did you? Not at all. I'm not the one he likes. Anybody else feel a bridge? Holy crap, are you good? <laughs> Ah, Jesus. <laughs> what? No goodbye? All this time, I've gone above and beyond to protect you, and now you lie to me and walk away like it was nothing? What, are we married? You lied to me, too. I did no such thing. Really? What about Ronaldo Garcia? You saw through that? <sighs> I made him up. I felt silly being out all alone while you three were having fun committing a murder. Don't take it so hard, McCool. Of all the cops I've ever known, you're my favorite. That's not saying much. Coming for me, that's saying a lot. Put it there, pal. Hey, where's Air Force One going? Well, Castro was found with third degree burns by three Canadian tourists who revived him with the venom of a blue scorpion. Can you believe that sh This family is a freaking curse. So, no medals? No getting super made? No. Well, what about the free lobotomy? I'll give you a lobotomy. Come here! Yo, Colonel, seeing as we came pretty close to half an hour, Tommy Dante, you think we could get a chopper ride back to the resort? Get the hell off my base. <laughs> Gorgeous weather in Cuba, huh? Damn shame the American people can't go there. Maybe I ought to do something about that. Can you believe this? Ma and them flew home first class courtesy of El Presidente. And we're rowing a fucking truck. I stand by my choice to sell our passport to those Arabs in Gitmo. I don't even know why we bothered with a vacation. I'm just as depressed as I was before. But Jimmy, you lied to a policeman, stole a taxi cab, and almost whacked someone. What more could you want? You know, you're right. And I made 28 bucks driving that cab. Which you'll have to declare at customs. And you wonder why we didn't want to hang out with you. Keep rowing, Jimmy. Keep rowing. La 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 la
la la la la la la la Saskatchewan la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. I used to be part of a crime family in New York, and like any father, I wanted to see if my son was cut out for the family business. But you can't just jump into extortion, racketeering, and murder. You gotta take baby steps. See that guy delivering papers on your block, your turf? Don't you want a piece of that action? Go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> He's supposed to beat the kid up and take his money. What's he doing? He's working, Jimmy. Makes me sick. Okay, so we find someone weaker. Build the kid's confidence. See that old deadbeat? He's behind on his payments. Take care of him. My first assault was an old guy, too. Look at him. This is humiliating. Ow! What the hell? What's this about you grooming Petey to take over the family business? What? No! I can't believe you picked him over me! It's not like that! Fine! One day, I'm gonna start my own crew, and I will bury you, fat man! Anyhow, I realized Petey wasn't cut out for gangster. No sh**, Sherlock. But hey, now that I live in Regina and work in an office, maybe my son will finally follow in my footsteps. Actually, Pop, I'm gonna be a physicist. Yeah, right. Like you could ever be a gym teacher. <laughs> Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Drive to me, drive. What you look like I'm doing? Giving birth? Oh, I can't see. Ow. Ow. Okay, there's definitely a wall on your right side. Screw it. We'll go on foot. <laughs> go on without me, Jimmy. <laughs> Leave me to die. Oh, come on! You can't... I just need a case of beer! I can't believe you left me back there to die. We didn't make it. It's closed. Kill me now, Jimmy, please. Hey, McCool. When I agreed to move to Canada, nobody told me the government controls the liquor. They also control gambling, medical marijuana, and heroin injection sites. No matter what your vice, Canada's got you covered. Why can't I get a freaking bottle of booze after 9 p.m.? Jimmy, the days of drive through liquor at alcoholic enabling prices are behind you. Mother Canada is here to save you from yourself. Oh, Canada, where no one has fun after 9 p.m. <laughs> Except in Quebec. Yeah. Oh, cheer up. One night without a few drinks ain't gonna kill ya. That ain't the point. Nobody tells me when I can and can't enjoy a drink. Well, looks like Mother Canada just did, ya big baby. Screw this, I got an idea. Back in Prohibition days, how did people get booze? Mama used to blow sailors for a bottle of gin. Which way to the docks? Uh, for the last time, I didn't take your cheap gold-plated earrings that are only worth six bucks at the pawn shop. It's not that. It's my report card. I'm acing all my classes, straight Ds, except I got this one F. You're failing P.E.? <laughs> Who the hell fails Jim? Jim? I thought P.E. was a bathroom break. Anyway, if I fail, I fail the 11th grade. Coach says the only way I can pass is to sign up for an intramural sport. If you ask me, the only sport we're signing up for is hockey. It's got speed, blades, and fighting. I don't know. You're right. Look at the bright side. After you fail, you and Petey can be in the same grade. Yeah, you can be lab partners. Sharing a locker, eating lunch at the nerd table. Stop it, stop it, I'll play hockey. Ah, but it's gonna suck to have three periods. <laughs> You boys do realize the liquor store's open again. We don't need them no more. Mother Canada can blow me. 
Well, don't come crying to me if drinking that crap makes you go blind. Jimmy, if we do go blind, can I get a monkey? Hey, this beer ain't half bad. Half bad? It's whole good. What a relief. Now we don't gotta throw all this out. Oh, for crying out loud, I am getting sick of you two sitting around drinking beer all day. You wanna be bums? Go do it in the garage. We can't, cause the garage is full of beer. Oh! Oh! oh. Well, could you at least quit using our living room as your own personal clubhouse? Why are you getting on our case, Cook? We ain't hurting no one. Oh, no? What about the example you're setting for the kids? Nah, they know better than to sit around drinking like degenerates. What are you looking at, old man? You want to fight? I'll fucking fight ya! <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of this place sooner. It's right next door and no one's lived here for months. It's gonna be perfect. Our own personal clubhouse. I always wanted to have a man cave. It wasn't, you know, an actual cave. Okay, let's work on the fundamentals. You mean skating and teamwork? Nah, forget all that. First off, both ends of your stick come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's easy to make that one look accidental if you're keeping up appearances. Now, later, when you're not, this is called shirting. You do this on the street, you get five months. In here, you get five minutes. God, I love this game. Once we get power, we should put in a big screen TV and a jukebox. And a bubble machine, Jimmy. Nothing says man cave like a bubble machine. I thought this place was empty. It's supposed to be. Come on. Hey, maybe it's one of them polter ghosts. You mean Geist? What the hell's a Geist a ghost? <laughs> ah, there's nothing here. <laughs> How's it going, eh? Who the hell are you? And what are you doing in our clubhouse? I'm Mike, that's Ricky, and this here's Kenny. Thanks for giving me one of my beers. It's ghost beer now, Jimmy. Let it go. Something tells me you're not the new owners. Well, no. We smelled fresh brew, door was open, The Matt said welcome. Would have been kind of rude not to come in, you know? Well, you guys are still trespassing. <sighs> come on, fellas. Let's go find a snowbank where we can drink in peace until the cops come. <laughs> Don't worry, Kenny. We'll find a warm place to drink this amazing beer. <laughs> really? You guys like it? Like it? It's the best. It's even better than what you get at the beer store. And I bet around here, we wouldn't have to worry about being cut off because we're all intoxicated. Or because they're closed. I know what that's like. You know what? Make yourself at home, boys. Cheers, fellas. Welcome to our club, where men are free to do whatever they want to do. What the hell are you doing, Cheech? I'm taking a dump on the floor. Yeah. Freedom! <laughs> okay, we'll keep the party going till you guys get back, okay? <laughs> nice bunch of guys. Hey, McCool, what are you doing here? I felt bad about denying you and Cheetah's alcoholic tendencies the other night, so I'm here to show you that we Canadians still know how to have a good time. But not a long time. I have to work tomorrow. Sorry, McCool, we're drunk out. We've been partying with our neighbors all night. Great giddy Lee! <laughs> Those are hosers. What the hell's a hoser? Allow me to enlighten you with this National Film Board of Canada educational film. The great Canadian hoser evolved under the harshest of winter conditions, but Homo hoserectus has proven himself a survivor. This meek creature got his name from having to flood or hose the ice after losing each hockey game. The hoser's inability to attract breeding partners has resulted in a steep decline in its population. Their struggle for survival is compounded by encroaching subcultures of emos, metrosexuals, and white people who like hip-hop. Today, sightings of this plaid-shirted nincompoop of the North are increasingly rare. For more information on the hoser, contact the Heritage Protection Council of Canada or visit your local beer store. 
Gentlemen, we are in the presence of a wonder of nature. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was excellent. It's too cold. My ankles hurt. I can't do hockey. Yes, you can. Just pretend the other team's a bunch of crazy broads at a shoe sale. Now get in there and take what's yours. How'd I do? Not bad. Next time, don't hold back. Okay, this game is called Brewski Roulette. One of these beers is loaded. So you randomly pick one and open it near your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you big hose, you hoser. <laughs> now. Oh! No, no, no. This next game is choice. Okay. So, like, you take a nickel, eh? You put her between your cheeks. Okay, and you get a clench on, right? And you just, like, you know, give her. Oh! <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you play bum darts. We have much to learn from your people. I think it went up. Oh. That's cheating! Ow! Two minutes for spearing. That's it! You're a growing girl! We'll be next door, eh? Again? That's the third night this week. I know, eh? But for the first time since we moved here, I met some fellas I can really relate to. Look at yourself. You can't walk two steps without breaking into a sweat. You smell like the floor of a saloon. And if you say A one more time without meaning the first letter of the alphabet, I'll twist your nuts off. I can still go, right? <laughs> Come on, Cookie. I'm just going over there for a quick round of bum darts. Jesus! It's worse than I thought! No, it's not what you think. It's just a fun little game. Jimmy, think back to the old life. When you were hanging around the club with your friends, did you guys ever play games that involved your butts? <sighs> now you put it like that, it sounds all kinds of wrong. Warm up the TV. I'm staying in. But first, I gotta throw out all our nickels. <laughs> Oh, hello. You must be one of Teresa's many, many boyfriends. Petey, it's me. Have we met before? I can't quite place you. Well, better get back to the books. Nice meeting you. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> hey, Jimmy! Jimmy! Just ignore them and they'll go away. Oh. What's the opposite of ignore? Because that's what I'm about to do. What are you idiots doing? I'm trying to watch TV with my wife and you're breaking my windows. We just want you to come over, Jimmy. Kenny got fireworks. We're gonna set them off in the house. Normally, I'd bust your head open, but you get a pass because you're mentally challenged. Ooh, take off your dress, lady, and come party with some real men, eh? All right, I'm warning you now, and you only get one. <laughs> That's it! Yeah! Oh, Jimmy, I can't allow you to assault these gentlemen. What the hell are you doing? I reported the hoser sighting to the Heritage Protection Council of Canada, and they have proclaimed this land to be a national preserve, a protected domain for the endangered hoser peoples. Are you freaking serious? I'm as serious as an Adam Agoyan film. Oh, I think he just called Jimmy a gonad. They're here to stay, Jimmy, and you, I'm afraid, are trespassing. What? Jimmy, check out these birthday candles from Rome that Kenny gave me. And it ain't even my birthday. Ow! Ooh, that's smart. Ow! Uh, Jesus, another one. Oh! I think that's the last one. 
Spot on! Those robots know how to party. Uh-uh-uh! <sighs> Look at these freeloaders living off the government like a bunch of war widows. Those stinking widows get all the breaks. <laughs> Hi, Pop. Petey, what are you doing up there? I'm observing the neighbors for an anthropology paper. Hosers in the mist. I've collected fascinating data on their nesting patterns. I'm hoping to analyze a sample of their droppings. Some of them droppings are mine. How long you been up there? This is day six. You're hiding up a tree, spying on three men. Is that something I need to know about you, kid? No, but could you empty my pee jug? Whoa! Cool. Tell these morons to turn their music down. I wish I could, Jimmy, but Canadian classic rock from the 80s is their cultural birthright. Would you tell an Indian not to bang a drum? A Quebecer not to eat poutine? An Albertan not to marry his cousin? Oh, my parents were cousins. No, oh, wait. Siblings. Hey, Jimmy! I got someone who wants to say hi! <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Looking good, Mike. All right, if we can't touch these guys, we're just gonna have to drive them out. You want me to get the car? No, I want you to turn on the hose. Let the ice-related injuries begin. <gasps> Ow! Uh, Cheech, give me a hand here. Yeah, sure, Jimmy, I'll do- Whoa! Ah! Whoa! Ow! Hey! Wow! Oh. Woo! Ah. <laughs> oh, wow, Jimmy. How the hell are you staying on your feet? The old beer cap on the boot. What a noble people. They use every part of the beer. All right, we're going to cut their power, because if I got to listen to Raise a Little Hell by Trooper one more time, I'm going on a shooting spree. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Wily bastards. Time to play hardball. Nothing drives people out like good old toxic waste. That's probably what drove my third wife away. Yeah, Cheech, toxic waste. In your Brooklyn apartment. Beauty, eh? It's like the Northern Lights landed. You get the beer, I'll get the Kim Mitchell. That's it! One of us has got to go. So here's the deal. One game of Brewski Roulette. Mano Ahozo. If I win, you guys move away and never come back. Oh, you're on, eh? But if we win, we get your house. My house? All right, fine. Either way, I get you mooks out of my life. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, and don't get cold feet. Oh, we won't. I can't even feel my feet. What are you doing? You should be suiting up for the big game. I'm not playing. I'm out. I already got my PE credit. Are you kidding? You got a beautiful thing in your grasp, and I ain't letting you throw away my big chance. Your chance? How is this about you? Shut up and put on your skates, Frankenstein. If you like hockey so much, why don't you play? Because they won't let me. I don't want to give you the gory details, because there's a lot of them. But I got banned from hockey forever. Apparently, the only blades you can use are the ones in your skates. Aw, oh, Gina, I had no idea. Why would you? You're as dumb as a post. But you sure do shine on that ice. What a waste. Maybe I got one more game in me. You do? For you, I do. It's just the Moose Jaw Milkmaids, bunch of farmer's daughters, all creaming for you. You're the best, sis. All right, cut it out. Your beard's scratching me. <laughs> According to the official rules of Brewski Roulette, scratched in the bar at Jerry's Tavern in Thunder Bay, three beers in the case are loaded. First one to spray two beers in his face loses, eh? Sounds legit. Jimmy, no! Have you lost your freaking mind? You're betting our house on a stupid drinking game? I won't let you do it. Ooh, shh! Shut up, you drunken mooch. Cookies are right. They're baiting you, Jimmy. You can't win. Hosers always think three beers ahead. I gotta do this. I can't live this way no more. Also, I'm kind of thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Jimmy. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> no, just a uh, false alarm. It's down to four beers. Two beers, Jimmy. Two. Shut up, McCools. <laughs> Pack her up, eh? You've been hosed. Not so fast. I wanted to study the effects of imported beer on hoser physiology. Everyone knows a genuine hoser's body will reject any beer that isn't brewed in Canada. You've been drinking American beer. You hosers are posers. So what? Uh, bet's a bet, eh? And we won. That may be the case, but you will no longer enjoy the protective embrace of the Heritage Protection Council of Canada. Hosers are endangered, but goofball louts like you are a dime a dozen. You boys are on your own. Good day, eh? Well, Jimmy, looks like you better start packing. That was pathetic. I can't believe you lost! Who knew the Moose Jaw milkmaids would be so freaking tough? Oh, look at that hot chick, eh? I'd sure like to slip a puck past her goalie. What did you say? Ah, oh, finally disposed of that toxic waste, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, toxic waste. <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falco, alias McDougal. Before I moved to the not so great white north, I was a capo in the mob. Crime's been in my family for generations. It all started with my grandpa's, Giuseppe. He was a shoemaker in the old country. Real handsome devil. Anyway, one day, the village Don asked him to make a pair of shoes. The Don believed shoe size was a reflection of his manhood. His size for manhood. He could have drove a big car or bought a freaking boat or something, but the guy wanted big shoes. What are you gonna do? Personally, I'd have blamed the whole thing on gravity, but gravity wasn't invented back then, so Giuseppe had to skip town. By the time he got to the next village, he was met by fear and respect. Dante Respect and Luciano Fear had a family that needed some muscle. Giuseppe just whacked at dawn, so he seemed like a good fit. <laughs> All those years dealing with feet made him kinda homicidal, so Grandpops moved up the ranks pretty fast. Then, one day, he came to America. You mean he got run out of Italy? Point is, even though I'm living like a schmuck in Regina, I like to think he's looking down on me and smiling. And wondering why the hell you threw his family business down the crapper. You know what? Just forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. All right, scumbag. You think you can come onto my turf and just take what you want? Do you even know who I am? You got three seconds to get the hell out of here! 
Now, is that nice? I give you a chance to walk away, and you just laugh in my face. Did you just eat a condom? All right, enough screwing around. Say hello to my enormous friend. Yeah, that's right. Go home to your mother, you overgrown rat. Ugh. To conclude my show and tell, if a man at the park asks you into the woods to find his lost dog, remember, there is no dog. Good job, Mary. You go sit with Prudence the Safety Hippo. Gina, your turn. All right, let's get this over with. I want to talk about personal safety. There's a lot of creeps and weirdos out there. Not to mention stoolies, deadbeats, and guys who just don't listen. You gotta protect yourself. So, you're gonna need one of these. <gasps> She's got a gun! Relax, it ain't loaded. Now it's loaded. All right, who took my facial stuff? No idea. Jesus Christ, you look like a 60-year-old avocado. Well, I took care of that raccoon. Sent him running with his tail between his legs. At least I think it was his tail. If not, you should see the wang on that rodent. Breaking news. Celine Dion Elementary is under lockdown after reports of a gunman holding a class hostage. That's Gina's school. Oh, my God. We gotta get down there right now. No can do. This stuff takes 20 minutes. Jimmy, we gotta go. We gotta... Where the hell's Jimmy? What are you waiting for? Let's roll! Good question, Billy. Personally, I like to go for the knees, but if you gotta take someone out, give them two in the chest and one in the head. After that, he ain't getting up no more. Okay, any other questions? <gasps> Besides, can I hold the gun? Aww. All right, we need firepower. Wanna take the Uzis? Nah, I don't wanna look like a show-off. I hate to say it, but shouldn't we just let the cops handle this? You worry too much. We know what we're doing. Shots fired! We need guns, damn it! I'm filling out the requisition as fast as I can! Get your ass in there! And take some grenades! I can't remember which classroom's Gina's. I only been here once for interviews. And I was pretty drunk. Who? <laughs> There they go, Saskatchewan's finest. Fear not, Cookie, I came as soon as I heard. No time for pleasantries, I'd better get inside. But may I say, it's a glorious morning today. Damn it, McCool, there's no time. No shit. get in there and save my daughter. For Canada, where we downplay our increasingly frequent gun violence. If there ain't any more questions, I guess I'm done. <laughs> Oh. <gasps> Gina, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, crap. You're the guy with the gun. Whoa, you brought shotguns? And a troll. This ain't good. We better beat it. Hey, McCool. You here for safety week? It appears you own a number of illegal guns, Jimmy. I'm going to have to conduct a thorough search of the premises. Do you have any idea the paperwork this is going to generate? Do you? You're blowing this way out of purport, purport, size. Pop, this fell again. I told you it's too heavy to use as a curtain rod. Daddy, you left this in the bathroom. I almost dried my hair with it. Really? Both of you? Exactly now? Jimmy, I can't keep this under my mattress no more. Keeps poking me in my sensitive areas. <laughs> Sweet Kiefer Sutherland, Jimmy. Why you gotta make such a big deal? It's just a few home security items. Just having that one within our borders violates the Geneva Convention. This is just like Chuck Heston warned us. One day the government's gonna show up and take all our guns. Next thing you know, we're in camps, getting brainwashed about evolution and global warming. I got a constitutionary right to bear arms. Yeah, you can't tell people what to do with their sleeves. Perhaps you possessed that right when you were American, but you're Canadian now. It's true, Pop. Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not protect gun ownership. Or as they say in Quebec, la Charte canadienne des droits et libertés ne protège pas la possession d'armes. I memorized it in both official languages. Now you're turning my own son against me. And you got him talking Spanish. Is this everything? You're not holding out on me, are you? 
Me? Hold out on a cop? Never! Then what's that slight bump on your waistband? I'm a little excited. Thanks for noticing. Lift your shirt, Jimmy. Is this how you get your kicks, McCool? You really ought to see a therapist. For Christ's sake, just hand it over! What?! You too? McCool's right. Like it or not, we're Canadian. Don't you think it's time you assimilated? No! I've had this gun since I was ten. No one's taken Remington Steel! Hand it over, Jimmy. What if I don't? Then I shall be forced to arrest you. You'll be charged, tried, convicted, then remanded to jail. The days will be lonely and the nights long, until your cellmate, Rusty, sells you to the skinheads who run the yard. No amount of toilet-brewed prison wine will erase the memory of their oddly gentle love. You want this gun, McCool? You're gonna have to pry it from my cold, dead pants. Hands, Jimmy. I think you mean hands. Whatever, you're not getting it. I'm a responsible gun owner. Hey, where'd it go? I was just getting my rhythm. Ho oh, ho! Look who's back in town. Feeling strong today? Cause I got something for you. Oh crap! All right, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Put up your dukes, uh, claws, hoofs. What do you call them foot hands? All right, which one is first? Yes! Oh, ho, ho, ho! Well, kid, you really did it this time. They're gonna kick you out of school. Yes! Unless you take this medication. No! They're putting me on drugs? It's called a pacify. It reduces psychotic tendencies in children. Side effects may include dry mouth, disorientation, nausea, and increased thoughts of murder. Huh. Well, I'm sure they wouldn't prescribe it if it wasn't 100% safe. Tell that to Mr. Flip. His ma took thalidomide. Look how he turned out. Mr. Flip turned out just fine. It's not his fault he's a monster. I ain't taking him. I don't like this either. But if you don't, they'll take you away from us and send you to a special school where you gotta wear a helmet. You always told me drugs was bad. This is medicine. It comes from a nice man in a laboratory. Drugs come from a bad man on the street corner. You mean like the guys who used to work for Pop? Quit stalling, kid. Pill or helmet? Your call. There. You happy? Your daughter's a freaking druggie now. Yeah, congrats! You just won Mother of the Year. Oh, God, I hope this is the right thing to do. Ah! Ah! Don't touch me with that thing! Ah! <gasps> I just got rolled by a fucking raccoon. Ever since I got up today, I've been feeling off balance. And I got a persistent itch in my trigger finger. Don't you see, Pop? When you gave McCool your gun, you gave up an essential part of your American identity. You're right! Now I gotta steal it back. That's gonna be hard to do with no gun. Or you could finally embrace life as a Canadian. How the hell do I do that? By embarking on a long voyage of introspection and self-discovery. Self-discovery? Like what you were doing when I walked in here? No, I'm talking about a spiritual makeover. Did someone say makeover? What? My fashion sense was tingling. Jeans, jean shirt, and a jean jacket. It's a Canadian tuxedo. <coughs> These jeans are too tight. <sighs> ah! What was that? My balls just went back in. <gasps> and they're out. I still don't get why I'm tied up. I'm gonna teach you the most important part of being Canadian. You need to suppress your innate American urge for self-preservation and apologize to me. For what? Ow, you mother- It's the Canadian way. I wrong you, you say sorry to me. Ow! Ow! You're grounded. What are you doing? I'm using aversion therapy to turn pop Canadian. Me last week. That's for taking away my makeup. That's for not letting me date a black guy. It wasn't racial. He was 40 years old. Oh. <sighs> Thanks, Petey. I feel a lot better. Sorry. Sorry. Really fing sorry. I believe we've made a breakthrough. What's 
going on, Petey? What's the big surprise? I present to you... Canadian Dad. I don't get it. He looks the same, except he's dressed as a village people. Go on, Pop. Say it. Sorry. No, the other thing. <sighs> Forget about it. Oh my god, he's a whole new man! This calls for a celebration. You're finally a real Canadian. I'm so proud of you. What the f***? Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Guess what? I did all my homework. You did your homework? Uh-huh. And then I cleaned my room, and then I cleaned Petey's room, and then Uncle Chichi and me had a tea party. Who wants Huggy Boos? Gina, you feeling okay? Petey made you Canadian too? Oh, no, Daddy. It's because of the magic happy pills Mommy gave me. These rainbows are made of smiles, wishes, and good dreams. <gasps> Speaking of good dreams, I'm gonna skedaddle off to bed. Night night. Wow, I guess that Apacify stuff really works. If you want me to babysit tonight, I'm gonna need a bottle of whatever she's on. Jimmy, you didn't yell at the parking guy for scratching the car, you didn't send back that pink chicken, and you gave the squeegee kid a loony instead of running him over. Frankly, I'm blown away by the new you. Hey, we're standing in line here. Those were our tickets. Jimmy, do something. I got it. Sorry my wife yelled at you. Oh, hold this. Here's your purse back. Keep it. Looks better on you. Some night out. I really wanted to see that movie, but no, Captain Canada here had to drive those mooks to the hospital. You're the one who wanted me to be Canadian. The Jimmy I know would have taken apart those line jumping jagoffs. Being Canadian doesn't mean you gotta let people walk all over you. I didn't let them walk all over me. I took the high road. Yeah, the high road to Warsburg. I wanted you to give up your gun, not your entire freaking manhood. What are you saying, I ain't a man no more? Because if you want a man, I'll show you a man. Come here, baby. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> oh, there's my big, strong man. There's those big, strong arms. And there's your big, strong... Your big, strong... Give me a sec. Where are you, big fella? Well, let me concentrate. Come on, come on. Come on, what's the matter with you? Up. Come on, so's each. So's each, not a meatball. So's each, so's each. <sighs> we could just cuddle. Tonight on TBS, Matthew McConaughey in Failure to Launch. <sighs> hey, Jimmy, who died? What? I'm fine. You can't fool me. I know something's wrong. Spit it out. Well, I got this friend, see? He's having a little problem. Stop right there. Who's this f***ing friend? I thought I was your friend. Shut up. The guy's in trouble. You don't want to help? Get out of here. Okay, relax. I'm listening. All right, look. Not to get too specific, but let's just say my friend, who is not me, is no longer able to achieve or maintain a viable erection. Quit beating around the bush. What's your friend's problem? His ring-a-ding-ding's got no dong. Ooh, why you gotta be so graphic? Okay, I got this. Old Cheats knows a thing or two about a thing or two. You do? Oh, yeah. There's a simple solution. Really? Thank God. Tell your friend. To blow his brains out. What? That's right. It's over. He ain't a man no more. Tell him to make a dignified exit. You'll be doing him a favor. Jesus, I was mad at the guy. Now I just pity the poor son of a bitch. <sighs> Hi, Daddy. Can I nudge in there and brush Mr. Chompers? Sure, kid. Whatever. Oh, who's a big glummy pants? Let's see a smile, Captain Frowns a lot. Mommy, Daddy's being a grumpy puss. What's going on in here? Daddy's sad, Mommy. Do you think we should give him some of my magic happy pills? Huh, Mom? No! Those are for you. And not for much longer. Run along now. I don't know about you, Jimmy, but that kid's starting to freak me out. Leave her alone. She's happy. What's wrong with you? A little girl ain't a little girl no more. Can't you see that? Hey, she's Canadian. What do you want? 
Now, excuse me, I gotta go pay protection to some raccoons. <laughs> What's wrong, Ma? Did you see Petey's internet history? Worse. He turned your father into a Canadian, and now he's not himself. You probably don't want to hear this, but our walls are real thin, and I know you and Dad are having a <coughs> intimacy problem. Oh, God, the thought of... <coughs> you listening? I know this is going to sound wrong, but... <coughs> But I think I can help. Not another <coughs> word. Teresa, this problem runs a lot deeper than what Oh, you're talking about? Ma, he's an Italian guy. It don't go any deeper than that. You need to make him jealous. When one of my boyfriends doesn't pay attention to me, I flirt with someone else. You should do that. Jesus, forgive me for talking to my daughter about this. Let me get this straight. All I need is some stud to slobber all over me. Jimmy gets jealous, turns into the gorilla that he is, and everything's back to normal? Exactly. And then we never speak of this again. Yes. <laughs> Please. But first... <laughs> we're going to confession. Normally I wouldn't participate in such subterfuge, but seeing as it's for Jimmy, count me in. All right, when Jimmy walks in, we're gonna be on the couch smooching and canoodling. I'll be rubbing your muscles. Don't worry, it don't mean nothing. <laughs> you might want to lose the shirt and oil yourself up a bit, big guy. <gasps> Cookie, get a hold of yourself. It's been a few days. My hormones are raging here. I'll behave. <gasps> Quick, get on the couch. Oh no, my husband has caught us in a compromising position. Surely now he will be so enraged he'll beat the crap out of my lusty paramour. What? No one said anything about- And sweep me off my feet, carry me upstairs and make angry, righteous love to me. Cook, what are you doing? Or he could skip the beaten up part and go straight to the hot crazy baboon loving. Look, it's real sweet of you to try and snap me out of this, but you don't gotta debase yourself with this greasy Latin hustler. Jimmy, it's me! Uh Silencio, muchacho! This is between me and my wife, who I can no longer pleasure. Snap out of it! All of this because you had to give up your stupid gun? The gun was the last thing I had from the old life. I used to be Jimmy Falcone, king of New York! Now I gotta accept that I'm Jimmy McDougal, king of the schnooks. Jimmy, you're a lot of things. A good breadwinner, a loyal husband, a totally half-assed father, but you'll never be a schnook. Cook, that's the sweetest thing you've ever said to me. And I wish it was true. Oh, for God's sake, he's killing me here. What do I gotta do to get through to this guy? Jimmy McDougal, former man. man. Gina, slow down. Jump into a lion cage, put the kids in danger? What's that, Gina? You're in danger? Me. What do I do, McCool? Tell me. I gotta get down to the school. <laughs> Where's he going? What the hell just happened? I don't know, but this spray tan is giving me a tremendous rash. Took you long enough to get down here, you moron. Oh, what's with you? Why are you being so mean? I thought you was on them good girl pills. I never took those stupid pills. I've been faking it the whole time. What? Why? To get Ma off my freaking back. I've been dumping the pills in the teacher's candy dish, and Prudence, the safety hippo, got into them and went nuts! Hang on a sec, I'm not following. What's a hippo got to do with safety? <laughs> that is one angry, angry hippo. Come on, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Whoa, I think you killed them. You think? Let's make sure. Come on, one more. Okay, one for me, one for you. Oh, that felt good. All right, kid, I gotta go. You be good now. Good? I mean, you be you. Will do. You know, I kind of feel bad for the kid in that suit. Suit? Jimmy, what happened? I deserve that, Jimmy. Oh my god, you're you again! Did you get a gun or something? Oh, I got one, baby. And it's made of wood! La 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 la
la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la you doing? Good? Yeah, well, if I asked you that question in the old life, I wouldn't know if you was actually telling the truth. Because back then, you couldn't trust nobody. For he's a jolly good fellow, we can't afford happy birthday. For he's a jolly good fellow. Blow out your candles, Jimmy. <gasps> <laughs> Most guys learn not to trust people by getting screwed over, but it was birthday cake that taught me. You know what? You blow them out. This guy, so suspicious. No one's gonna pull that trick again. Hmm. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> There's an expression. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I will rip your fucking ears off. Really? Do I look stupid to you guys? A fucking cake. It's okay. He missed my dick. Anyway, now that I live among the goody good people of Regina, I still don't trust nobody. Yeah, yeah, thanks to you, I don't got a spleen. Now, say the thing so we can go inside. Nah, you say it. Why should I say it? You say it. Oh, for Christ's sake, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. For Canada, where Canadians are from. That's awful. Where's the poetry, the insight? This is uninspired and lazy. Oh. For Canada, good start. Go Blue Jays? Oh, come on. I let you order Chinese, and this is the best you can come up with? <laughs> Hi, low, low. Blast! Even my phone greetings are terrible. We'll do those next. It's Teresa. I've been in a teensy little fender banger. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> For Canada, where maple syrup lacrosse double-double? Oh, now you're just mocking me. <laughs> What's a six-letter word for hurry? No serious damage. Horse, get this out of the ditch, will you? Please don't tell my folks about this. Smooth Canadian club. Have you been drinking? I had one beer. I, I swear, I'm not... Blow. Hmm. You're not inebriated, but there's a hint of alcohol in your blood. Provincial law requires me to confiscate your license. I'm not drunk. I don't understand. No? Fortunately, I just completed an RCMP workshop on talking to teens. Ahem. <clears throat> Word on the herd is short ones can't slop a jar of ski and skate the jam wagon, so mind your turnips, you silly frail. Teenagers don't talk like that. Hmm. The workshop did seem a tad outdated, especially the part about how bathtub gin leads to syphilis. Whatever, just please don't tell my parents about this. I won't, Teresa, but you will. <sighs> There you go, clumsy. Let's drive you home. <laughs> no, we can't stop for drive through. <laughs> Guess what? I won first place at the high school science fair. Sponsored by Wheat Corp, a subsidiary of Wheat Thin Enterprises. We have to say that last part or their lawyers come after us. Congratulations, Petey. What'd you do? You're stupid, because Cheech will buy it twice. I totally would. I designed a weight loss app that counts calories in food. I call it the Calogrammeter. 4,000 calories, jeez, Pop. 
How many calories was that, you food-shaming little jerk? 125? I hate to tell you, but somebody already thought of that. Adolf Einstein. How was this possible? A product of Wheat Corp? Richard Wheaton stole my idea! Uh-oh! Don't want to be late for school! 42 calories? I wouldn't talk, kid. I've seen you come out of the shower. At least mine has a mustache. I really don't want to tell my parents. Can we just forget it? I can't stop thinking about last night. The drinking, the blowing. <gasps> I, I didn't blow that bad. I'm sorry to tell you, but you didn't blow very well either. Oh, yeah? I don't think your equipment was working very well. My equipment may be a bit old, but I assure you it works just fine. Or at least it did before you got your teeth marks all over it. How could there be teeth marks? That thing was so hard. <gasps> In any case, if you don't tell your parents about your alcohol-fueled accident, I will. Now, if you'll excuse me. For Canada, where curling is looked upon favorably. All oh, these are atrocious. Thanks to Cheech needing a bath toy, my Virgin Mary statue ain't a virgin no more. You better step up, uh, Saint Polycarp of Smyrna. Tell me your troubles, my child. McCool's been fooling around with my teenage daughter. What do I do? Oh, uh, I, I can't help you. I'm, I'm the patron saint of earaches and dysentery. Dysent? You mean diarrhea? And earaches. I'm very good with those. If you eat bad Indian food or get some of it in your ear canal, I'm your man. Hold you screw to become a saint. Look, you're done with Polycarp here. I got a case of the squirts that's draining the life out of me. Squat before me, my son. Hey! I just spoke to Wheat Corp. Turns out any idea entered in the science fair automatically becomes their property. I like that business model. You want it, you take it. Screw everyone. I strenuously voiced my objection, and they promised to send an acknowledgement of my contribution. Whatever it is, I get 10% or I break your foot. I'm Pat on the back, and I'm here to give you, Petey McDougal, a pat on the back, courtesy of Wheat Corp. Is it a check or a direct deposit? Who needs money? Not me, Jack. Who needs money? Take it all back. Money won't save you from a heart attack or get your mother off of the crack. Money is evil, that's a fact, but nothing says thank you like a pat on the back. Have a great day. Let me guess. You got a white hot ball of rage right between your eyes. You, you want to put two slugs in Wheat Thin's face so they can't even have an open casket. Uh, not exactly, but I am quite miffed. Easy there, psycho. You want revenge? No, I want justice. Godfather. Shit. Do you ever know what buttons to push? Uh, can I grab a ride home off of one of you? McCool and Teresa? That's not so. What would she even see in that guy? Oh, I don't know. Maybe his big shoulders, strong arms, those tree trunk legs. Ah, not to mention his dreamy eyes, square jaw, and the fact that he probably gives horse penis envy. Yeah, okay, but apart from that, he's got nothing! Teresa, get your ass in here! All right, kid. What's up with you and McCool? Oh, my God, he told you? No, he didn't, but ha! I knew it. Hey, that's entrapment. Right, Daddy? Sure is, buttercup. Shame on you, cook. If he didn't say nothing, I'm not saying nothing neither. Oh, is that so? Then you're grounded. Don't she have a right to counsel? No, and no phone call neither. Give me a phone. Fine, take it. And let us never speak of this incident that never occurred again. Jimmy, why don't you believe me? Cause we're talking about McCool. The guy's an overgrown boy scout. Sure, he's a ladies man, but he'd never mess with my daughter. Oh yeah? How do you like your Boy Scout now? Get my guns. All of them. Ooh, I can't wait! No more shooting bums down at the train yard! What? I mean, we're back, baby! 
How's everyone doing? Johnny, how's the golf game? Has your handicap improved, or are you still a golf apologic? <laughs> Tough room. Is it something I said? What's, uh, what's going on? I'll see if I ever buy you guys Chinese food again. Cookie, what the hell is this? A scumbag like McCool ain't worth doing time over, so I figured we should get him where it really hurts. I was gonna do that. I was gonna shoot him right in the nuts. Jimmy, why kill someone when you can ruin their life? Death is but a single moment. Misery is forever. You, you, you're good. Where'd you come up with that line? It's a Snake Hammer song. Oh, look. Roman Pervlansky decided to swing by. Jimmy, there's a perfectly innocent explanation for that picture. The one of you grabbing my daughter's keister? This I gotta hear. Teresa was drinking and driving and crashed the SUV in a ditch. You're a real piece of work, you know that? Trying to blame the victim. I'm the victim here. I've been suspended. They took everything. My badge, horse, my catchphrases. You got off easy, scumbag. But not for long. Mark my words. I am going to destroy you for what you did. <sighs> for Canada! Oh, come on, Daryl! Okay, now what? We give him a wedgie? No, wait, let's pants him. Shut up and let me do this. All right, wise guy. I'm gonna need you to put the old John Hancock on there. I'm afraid I can't do that. Gino, what are you doing? It's nay on the Ames nay, Okfei. You got a choice. Either your signature or your brains are gonna be on that contract. I always wanted to say that. I am so sorry about this. Shut up! Sign over the rights to the app or get skull humped by a nine, bitch. This is not what I signed up for. This is exactly what you signed up for. Don't go limp on me now. Give me that, Gina. Hey, look out, you dumb motherfucker! Ah, <gasps> oh, thanks a lot. I didn't even get to save it a moment. Welcome in the Queen's Beaver. Hmm. Check out! Herbert! One of McCool stuffing his face with my lasagna. Send it in and say he's one of those guys who pukes after he eats. McCool's Bolivian? Are you out of your minds? McCool didn't grope me. He helped me after I drove the car into a ditch. What? Look, I drank a little that night, which is why I called McCool. Oh, crap. You drove our car into a ditch? You're grounded, young lady. I'm already grounded. Well, I'm temporarily ungrounding you so I can reground you. Yay! Wait, what? Teresa, we gotta talk about the real problem here. You drove drunk, crashed your car, and then called a freaking cop? You just pry the plates off, torch the car, and run. I can't believe you thought McCool would do something like this. You're grounded. You're all grounded. We're crucifying a guy for no reason. I gotta go make this right. Hang on, hang on. You mean this colossal screw up here has nothing to do with me? I don't know if I'm happy or lost. I'm too young to go to jail. Am I gonna die in there? Will people wanna fight me? Fight ya? No. Fight over ya? Yeah. Come on, let's chop him off, put him in quick lime, and get the hell out of here. We've snuffed out a life! We have to turn ourselves in. He's smoking. Yes, he was a handsome man, but that has nothing to do with... No, you dope! He's smoking! He's a freaking robot! Of course! Wheat Corp is at the forefront of autobotics research! Whew, at least we're only guilty of robicide, not murder. Congratulations. 
You just suck the last bit of fun out of this caper. Uh, Jesus, look at him. I know. Lucky bastard. Daytime TV, junk food, and a sweet tracksuit. It's all my dreams come true. It's pretty much your life already. Is that so? Do you see me in a tracksuit, Jimmy? Do you? Hey, straight. Jimmy, good to see you. Is that Cheech? You old bag of screws. How are you? Can I have some chips? Ha! Good old Cheech. Always with the chips. McCool, what are you doing eating all that crap? I'm eating my feelings, Jimmy. And they're delicious. <laughs> Listen, about all that stuff in the papers, I had it all sorted out. They're printing retractions as we speak. Really? Yeah. I talked to your boss and explained the mix-up. You'll be reinstated by the end of the week. That's wonderful news, Jimmy. Just wonderful. So, if there's anything else I can do, name it. I mean it. Anything. Um, let me think if there's anything, uh... Oh, yes. Maybe you could get the hell out of my house and my life forever, you son of a bitch! Uh... On second thought, I like not being the fuck up every week. You ruined my life, Jimmy. But then I fixed it, so we're good. That's not the point. After all we've been through, couldn't you at least give me the benefit of the doubt? I never understood how doubt is a benefit. McCool, you know how I am. I shoot first, aim later. Well, thanks to you, I'll be forever known as the Groping Mountie. Well, you shouldn't have gone behind my back about Teresa's accident. If I ratted to you, she would never have trusted me again. Well, now I don't trust you. After the jolly rogering you gave me in the press, I don't trust you either. Yeah, well, screw you, McCool. Screw you, Jimmy. All right, cut it out, you idiots. I can't stand listening to you hurting each other like this. You've been friends for a long time now. Arguing ain't gonna settle nothing. You two need to fight. Mm. Okay, can we get out of here? You still gotta get what's yours, Petey. Let's rob the joint. Where are these clowns going? I wonder if Wheat Thin ever makes those robots have sex with each other. Now I know why you take the clothes off your action figures. Now get your head in the game! Maybe I can program one of them to sign back the rights to my Calligramma later. The name still needs work. Way to think big, dumbass. How come to sign over the whole empire? That's not possible. You may know more about criminal enterprises, but when it comes to technology, I am the master. More like master beta to robot porn. I made one little joke. I read your blog, Android Lover 98. <laughs> Oh, dear God. This is so creepy. Turn them off. Give me a second. That should do it. If we die, Petey, I just want you to know I never liked you. Fight! 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 You sure you won't be breaking some RCMP rule? Uh, yes. Uh, now that you mention it, we have to call this off. My hands are tied, Jimmy. You don't get reinstated until next week. Now go ahead, dance, boys. Damn. If we are going to do this, we will abide by Queensbury rules. Nuh-uh. Brooklyn rules are nothing. What are Brooklyn rules? There are no rules. But that's a rule. What? Don't you see? No rules is a rule in and of itself. I never thought of it that way. It's the exception paradox. It's quite fascinating, really, because... Would you two just fight already? Fight! 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 All right, let's do this. Here we go. This is it. I can't believe it's come to this. Me neither. You really hurt me, Jimmy. And you hurt me. Will somebody please hurt someone? It ain't nice finding out your own daughter calls someone else when she's in trouble. She's supposed to call family. I thought, in a way, I was family. But I'm her father! I may not be the best father, but if my kids are in trouble, I want to be the one to save the day. Hello? Dad, help! Gina and I are cornered by a legion of bloodthirsty robots! It's for you. Step away from those children, you robotic abominations! 
Prepare to have that finger snapped off and inserted into whichever orifice serves as your rectum. Nice one. Thank you. Michael Bay movie. Which one? The terrible one. He ain't never made a terrible one, you dick. Jimmy, I'll distract the robots. You take Gina and Petey to safety. Uh, you take the kids, McCool. They stand a better chance with you. Petey, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Hey, Robo Jerks! You. What are you, nuts? Trust me, Jimmy. In case you didn't notice, I kind of got trust issues. I know, but you can trust me, Jimmy. Now jump! <laughs> That's for thinking I would ever grope your daughter. Ugh. That was a fucking waste of time. Weakton still owns Petey's app. There goes my 80%. Hey, we never agreed to keep talking. It'll be 90. That app's dead anyway. Now there's one that lies about how many calories you're eating. What are calories, anyway? Is that some kind of food? Well, Jimmy, I assume after I beat off all those robots, there's no hard feelings. No, sir. And to show you we're square, I want you to be the first to sign my cast. It would be an honor. What about you, McCool? Any hard feelings? Be honest. Hard feelings? No, none at all. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he write something cute? La 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 What the hell's that? I hit something? Jimmy, what are you doing back here? Impersonating a spare tire. What's it look like? I want to learn the family business from Pop. You're too young for this kid. Go hit your ride home. At his age? Are you nuts? That ain't safe. Here, take this with you. I wanted Pop to let me stay. But he was being such a prick. I mean, it's not like I was some kind of moron or anything. Oh my god, I'm so sorry! Don't worry about it. We're out here to whack Polly anyway. You made your bones, kid. You murdered a man and bonded with your father over it? Technically, it was manslaughter. And I'm just saying, it was a nice moment. Not for Polly, it wasn't. Gut shots take forever to kill you. Bastard lingered for days. Don't listen to him, Pop. I think bonding over some Jagoff with more holes in him than Swiss cheese would be great. Let's start with Cheech. <laughs> this kid, <laughs> what a card. <laughs> but if you think people up here in Mother Canada don't got any daddy issues, forget about it. 
Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. I hope taking me to the antique fair wasn't too traumatic for you fellas. At first I wanted to blow my brains out, but then I got numb from boredom. Now that I've been antiquing, it's okay for me to admit that I like show tunes, right? Because I love show tunes. Look at that animal running right beside us, running really, really fast. What show is that from? It ain't. Look. Oh, I got 400 horsepowers here, and she's keeping up with me. Yeah, but the horses in the engine are teeny tiny. For Christ's sake, slow down, Jimmy. What for? Oh, that. This wouldn't have happened if Cheech bungeed it to the roof like I said. If I knew what bungee meant, I'd have done it. But I don't, so I didn't. We're gonna get rich racing this horse we bought. I'm gonna name it in honor of Cookie. Really? Yep, I'm calling this filly Cookie's fucking wardrobe. Cause that's all we heard about on the ride home. That's sweet, Jimmy. But are you sure it's a filly? I checked, right up to my elbow. Sorry I missed antiquing in Moose Jaw Cookie. Uh, sweet Canadian pickers. What a lovely wardrobe. And who's this? <laughs> this is Cookie's fucking wardrobe. Yes, I realize it's Cookie's, Jimmy, but what of this horse? It's Cookie's fucking wardrobe. We've established who owns the wardrobe. No need for... Oh, I see. Her name is Cookie's Fluffra Wardrobe. That's terrible. Beats calling a horse. Is that so? I'll have you know that I and horse both happen to think that horse is a perfectly utilitarian moniker. You can't name something what it is. That's stupid. What am I going to do? Go inside and say hello to my two girls, daughter and antichrist? Hey, look, it's my son. Massive disappointment. Hey, it looks as good as new, which means you screwed up. It's supposed to look old, like an antique. Hey, nice cupboard, Ma. It's not a cupboard, ignoramus. It's an armoire. Don't talk to my daughter that way. Oh, my God, do you realize what you just did? I gave him a dirty look. That was no mere dirty look. You have the Malocchio. But I don't want to be a real boy. It's the Sicilian evil eye. The power to curse anyone who crosses you with medium to serious misfortune. Does this mean I have to do stuff? I, I don't want to do stuff. It's a gift that runs in our family, but skips a generation. I always thought Gina'd be the one to get it. Ha! In your face, Gina! Teresa, the Malocchio is nothing to be trifled with. You got a lot to learn, young lady. I know. Like what the hell trifled with means? You're both nuts. There's no such thing as the Malocchio. It's a silly superstition. Don't you diss my magic curse and stink eye. Ooh, I'm real scared. <laughs> ha! Hey! Play. Am I throwing this race or what? Ah, you don't gotta throw nothing. This animal runs like my bowels on taco night. Yo, Cheech, looks like we're not allowed to race. Cookie's fucking wardrobe is pregnant. Don't look at me, I pulled out. Sorry, it's my go-to when I hear someone's with child. The dipshit duo blows it again. I'll be in the lounge. Do not join me. I had a lot of money riding on this animal. How'd she get knocked up? McCool, that's how. I bet that horse of his did it. I can't say I blame her. Horse is hung like a McCool. Jimmy, we gotta get what's coming to us, and we'll do it like our Sicilian ancestors did. In paternity court. Jimmy, this is preposterous. Relax, McCool. We're suing the RCMP, not you personally. Yes, you are. The department says I'm responsible for horse's actions. Geez, that changes things. You saved me a trip downtown. Thanks. I want the truth. Read back that testimony. I want the truth. Nehehehehe. I really shouldn't. 
I have a race coming up. Oh, come on, baby. You know I love you. Oh, okay. <gasps> but use a condom. I thought you were on the pill. I am, but it don't protect you from the clock. Hey, I'm clean. I just got out of a long-term relationship. Sounds like someone likes to commit. Get on with it! <clears throat> I gotta prove you're actually knocked up. Uh, think about running water. You know, I object over rule. Sorry, I thought about running water. <laughs> anyway, I rest my case. Oye, oye. Court is now in session. What the hell is this? The judge is here. We can start for real. But I got a surprise witness. He did the same thing to me. Where'd you get that? Betting on the ponies. Yeah? Well, how about giving your big sister a cut? No way! The hobos who laid the bets for me ain't getting a cut. Why should you? Oh, you better think twice before you mess with me, you gypsy wannabe. You think twice. I mo Cacino, the lunch lady, and she fell into a pot of soup. She get burned? Nah, it was cafeteria soup. It's lukewarm at best. But she did have to go home and change. You ain't getting shit. Put that in your soup. Hey, I think the effects of the curse wear off after a couple of days. <laughs> Paternity court again, Agent McCool. I'm sorry, Your Honor. When you were a boy, your mother was in here suing your father, Staunch McCool, for alimony. Alimony that remains unpaid to this day, Your Honor. I see. So, we've got cookies, f***ing wardrobe versus horse. What's your horse's name? Horse. Yes, the horse. What is its name? Horse. You're trying my patience, Special Agent. His name is Horse, Your Honor. Well, no wonder he's impregnating fillies willy-nilly. Give the animal the dignity of a proper name, sir! It is a proper name, and that is not the concern of this nosy, nosy court. Straight McCool, I find you in contempt. Furthermore, I find in favor of the plaintiff. Agent McCool is ordered to pay all damages. What? We won! Without even saying a word! Makes you think, huh? How different would my life be if I just kept my mouth shut? Yo, toots! Nice cans! <laughs> Ma'am, I'm sorry, that was very disrespectful. What I meant was, nice cans, your honor. <sighs> According to this, I owe you tens of thousands of dollars. I'd hate for this to ruin our friendship. Yeah, that would be terrible. Now pay up or I'll break your knees. How am I supposed to raise that much money on a civil servant's salary? Your pop! He's out there living the high life, totally crushing the whole deadbeat dad thing. Where did you get these? Oh, I got my ways, McCool. Petey found them on the internet? Yes. He's at the Banff Springs Hotel. Let's get him. He pays you, you pay us, everybody's happy. Except you. All right, I'll do it. Frankly, I relish the opportunity to righteously confront my no-account deadbeat father. I can't face him! Don't make me go! I'm scared, Jimmy, please! I just can't do it! I'll be in our room stress-eating minibar peanuts! You believe this guy? What a baby! No kidding. Look at him running off like a yellow-bellied scaredy cat. Ah! 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 <laughs> My hiding spot. Get out! No! Someone criticized Teresa at lunch and she turned the cafeteria into the prom scene from Carrie. Oh, let's end this. We'll drive a stake through her heart. That's for vampires. Don't you know anything about the supernatural? Ugh, if you went to Catholic school, you'd know this stuff. You're hiding from Teresa, too? Sure. She's Malokio and people left and right like a drunken gunslinger. But I got a plan. I'm sick of being pushed around by that power-crazed little psycho. <sighs> oh, hi, baby. How's my favorite girl? Hey, sis, you look so good. Ah, crap, I can't do this. Just zap me right now. <laughs> Hey, 
This still beats sucking your bony butt, I'll tell you that much. Baccarat! No, what for do do? Gentlemen, welcome. Join us. The game's poker, but these fops think it's Baccarat. They don't speak English, nor do they understand cards. It's like taking candy from several sleazy babies. Excuse me, are you Stunch McCool? The one and only, good sir. I need to talk to you about something from your past. My past, eh? In that case, I'll pour you a drink. What's your poison? Cognac? Absinthe? Lithuanian discount? Cola! Hmm, that discount cola's pretty good! He's getting away! I got an idea. All right, let's get him! We gotta ditch some weight to go faster! Oh! Ah! The air's so thin up here I can hardly move! I got this! Did the Marquis of Catalonia send you because I slept with his sister? What? No! Is this about the gun smuggling to the Congo? Please, do you expect those child soldiers to arm themselves? No! Straight McCool sent me because you slept with his mom. This is the ride of my life! Coincidentally, that's exactly what I said to Straight's mother. All right, kid. I'm taking away your allowance, I'm grounding you, and I shredded your driver's license. Ma, what the hell are you doing? I'm teaching Teresa values. Give me that stuff back, or I'm gonna super triple Pinocchio ya! You haven't got the balls. Ew, yeah, no, I don't have balls, but that's got nothing to do with this. <laughs> ah, Malocchio'd by your own Malocchio. Eh, that sounds lame. Hoist by your own petard. Not as lame as that. What's gonna happen to me? No! I've gone full frizz! Someone wants to meet you, McCool. Ask him for the money. Hello, Straight. Been a long time. How dare you try to shake my hand? Mother had to take in sewing and moonlight as a dominatrix because of your neglect. And you never came to my birthday parties. I offered to pay, but she refused. Said my money was dirty and ill-gotten from card hustling and shady deals. Not to mention the counterfeit My Little Pony merchandise. That's a lie, damn you! I'm no monster! Why didn't you answer my letters? Did your mother burn them without showing them to you? How would I know? I don't see the resemblance, do you? If it's money you want straight, I'll gladly wire it from my bank in Geneva. But in the meantime, let's make up for all the lost years and get to know each other. <gasps> Son. Wire from Geneva. All this line in a book. As if McCool would fall for that. Oh, Papa! Oh, straight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Are you nuts inviting this guy to stay with you? He's a con man! Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. What is that, the Beatles? The Bible, Jimmy! Oh, must have skimmed that part. Jimmy's right. I've been a deadbeat, and I said all the same things that he's saying to you. Just not as fancy. But he's my father. He'd never lie to me. Come straight. Let's do all the things I missed when you were growing up. Start with giving him lots of money. Oh, we're changing his diapers. I hear that's real nice. Why are you dressed like a female gym teacher? I tried washing my clothes. The washer caught fire and burned them. This stupid curse is the worst. <laughs> ah! Are you kidding me? How'd this get in here? The Malocchio works in mysterious ways. Help me, Ma. I want to be rid of this. All right, but it's going to be tough. First, I need your picture. Wait, I should do my hair. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Staunch, where's the money? Patience, Jimmy, it's on the way, isn't it, Dad? Indeed. I spoke to my bank manager, Hans, and he assured me that... Hans? That name sounds as made up as all your excuses. So you doubt my word, good sir, and I use good sir sarcastically. I'll write straight a check for the full amount. I bet that ain't worth the paper it's printed on. Actually, it's gold flake paper. Very expensive. Oh, real nice, Dad. This is from my Cayman Island account. It'll take a day or two to clear. Oh, Christ, another dodge. Jimmy, until this check clears, I don't want to see you, understood? Unless there's witness protection business, or if you need anything, or if you just need a chat. But outside of that, you are persona non grata while my father is visiting. Good day, sir. Okay, I'm ready. What do we do? Sit, my child. Here's the thing about the Malocchio. The curse wears off after a while, but there's always the danger of being recursed. One could say it's a recursive curse. Or one could shut up and let Mama talk. Sorry. Anyway, Teresa, I can't take the evil eye away from you, but I can do this. Gina? Did you put those pictures online? Not yet, we didn't. But if you ever give anyone in this house the Malocchio again, your social life goes kablooey. Uh-uh-uh. Okay, you win. I'll learn to control it. For the record, recursive means occurring repeatedly. And since we're on the subject of a curse that can reoccur, recursive is a doubly amusing wordplay because no one cares, Petey. All right, we gotta prove once and for all that McCool's pop is a no good grifter, and we'll do it by breaking into his house. <laughs> Actually, let's just use the door. Canucks always leave them unlocked. Ah, oh, Jimmy. It's breaking and entering, not entering. <laughs> Stupid. Alpha Stoico's quadruple jump. What are you two doing? We got him, McCool, and we got him red-handed. I told you my red hands were from eating pistachios. Looky here, credit cards, and not a single one with his name on it. Passports from different countries, different aliases. And a bag of mustaches. I'll bet this one ain't even real. Ow, it's real, you twit. He's a flim-flam man. We just can't figure out if he's flimming ya or flamming ya. I assure you, my intent is neither to flim nor to flam. Then why do you got McCool's banking information written down here? For the money I owe him! But, but I didn't give you that information. I found your bank book. I had every intention of ripping you off! Don't listen to them, son! They're idiots! They couldn't find tar to tar and feather me, so they used maple syrup. Jimmy kept drinking it. Then Cheech tried to get feathers out of a foam pillow for an hour! Straight, I am not a good man. In fact, if I didn't escape from Morocco when I did, I wouldn't still be a man at all. But I never lied to you. Not my own flesh and blood. But he did break your window. <laughs> is crowning. I can't believe I ran my own father out of town on a rail. Literally, the 315 to BC. You did the right thing. Sooner or later, he would have ripped you off and ripped out your heart. Which would not be as gross as what I'm looking at right now. I was blinded by the need for a father figure. But who needs that when one has such good friends? You still owe me the money. <sighs> I know, Jimmy. I know. Oh, I finally gave horse a name, didn't I? Stephen Baker. <laughs> Excuse me a moment. Special Agent Straight McCool. Here it comes. Ew. Ew. Um, that's not a horse. That's a mule. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, Jesus Christ. What? Mules happen when horses do it with a donkey. Cookie's fucking wardrobe was knocked up when we bought her. Good news, you're off the hook. Thief and Baker ain't the father. No, splendid, because if I did have to pay you, I have the money. My father's check cleared. Oh? He was telling the truth, Jimmy. My long lost father was telling the truth the whole time. How do you like that? I was so sure he was a dirtbag. Well, I guess we better sue the guy who sold us a pregnant horse. 
Perfect! I'll go get my lawyer wig! Yo, McCool! Can I count on you as a witness? For Canada, where apparently a jackass can ride a jackass! <coughs> hey, Jimmy! <coughs> can I go next? La 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 as a former gangster, I might not have lived a completely moral life, but I did some good things, too. Like the time I... Excuse me, Jimmy, you can't park here. No! Oh, get that thing out of my face! What's with you, anyway? I was getting used to seeing you without a billy club in your pants. Now the old attention hogs back? What gives? Allow me to explain. <laughs> Let me tell you something of myself without a doubt. The best cop around who likes to let it all hang out. When my boss is said I had to put on underwear, I tried to take it off, but they said, oh, don't you dare. Wasn't very long before it wound up in the courts. The judge said, no, man, you don't have to wear those shorts. So I won the case because there are no precedents for a servant of the crown to put on his underpants. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Hey, forget about underpants. Let me get this straight. You sued for the right not to wear a banana hammock? I need to be free, Jimmy. The justice system is broken. I think it's just fine. Heck, McCool, if you didn't want to wear any clothes at all, I'd have no problem with it. <laughs> you know what bugs me? That's not how the song goes. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Pop, why'd you drag me out here? I despise hunting. You gotta toughen up, kid. No more crying over dead mice. That you stomped on in the garage. Is that any reason to make me sit through a three-hour mouse funeral? Oh, that reminds me. You're free now, Mr. Whiskers. <sighs> what the hell was that? Sorry, fella, my kid dropped his gun. Well, be more careful, you wombat licker. Oh, I said sorry. What do you want, a note and some flowers? No, I want you wank stains to bugger off somewhere else. How about I wank stain all over your face? No, how about I bugger you? No, how about I will punch you? That's enough, gentlemen. No need to escalate beyond Australian insults and Scottish machismo. Be on your way, my Commonwealth compatriot. Jimmy, I need a word. Lucky your boyfriend stepped in. No, you're lucky my boyfriend stepped in. Oh, shit, Jimmy, just stop. Jimmy, what did I tell you to do before embarking on this trip? Go pee-pee before the long drive? No, the other thing. A cursory search of the Fish and Wildlife database tells me you did not obtain a hunting license. Hold it right there, McCool. What does cursory mean? As of now, this hunting excursion is officially over. Yay! Hear that, woodland creatures? The nightmare is ended! The forest is yours once again! I guess making a man out of Petey is off the frickin' table. Why didn't you go hunting, Cheech? Because staring down a rifle at one of God's majestic creatures ain't my idea of fun. I like to get in close with a blade. By the way, nice fur, miss. Cookie was going to throw this out. Can you believe it? Maron, that is the most gorgeous broad I ever seen. And I once met Prince. I don't know if she's your type. What? You think I'm prejudiced or something? I'll bang any kind of broad. No, look! She can't see, <laughs> which might help ya. I've dated a blind. They're terrible drivers, and they never compliment your outfit. Only outfit I'm wearing for her are tube socks and a smile. <coughs> oh, I'm choking. <laughs> oh, poor boy. 
Did someone leave you all alone at the mall? Hmm. Oh. I think someone wants a tummy rub. Let's scram before his little lipstick pops out. Oh. And there it is. Who the hell asked you to come up here and be my babysitter? All you had to do was go online, fill out an SK-106294 application, wait the seven-day processing period, go to your local Service Saskatchewan kiosk, pay the $30 fee, cash only, and pick up a hunting license. But did you? No! And nothing could be simpler. Uh, McCool? What are you doing? Felling trees here is against the law. Must you do something reckless every time I turn my back? No. Sometimes when you turn your back, I hang signs on it. Oh, very funny, Jimmy. Stop that! It's off, okay? <laughs> hey! They have a wild animal in there! That's not right! I got a license for it, you tit! A live animal removal permit. See, Jimmy? This is how you follow the rules. You must have some serious connections in government. Boy, what are you doing? Don't worry, gentle friend. You can run free now. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. I was so terrified. I hope I didn't hurt any... Oh! Thank God. Oh! On the bright side, you're a man now, son. What's this about you ditching the girls to pick up some blind broad? I didn't pick her up. She adopted me. What the hell is that? It's my harness, Cook. I'm a C&I helper. You mean dog? If you want to put a label on it. I know being a dog is a hell of a step up for you. But you gotta tell this woman the truth. And break the bond of trust between us? I'll never get her in a sack. She's blind, but she's not gonna screw a dog. No, but maybe she'll make love to her. Now, excuse me, I gotta go get a flea collar. Those work on crabs, right? That was some good shooting, son. I'm gonna be sick again. <laughs> I puked after my first mass murder, too. It gets easier. I'm so ashamed. Hunting is nothing more than recreational murder. Petey, God put animals on Earth for us to hunt, eat, and throw peanuts at when we go to the zoo. No, they're thinking, feeling, sentient creatures, just like you and me. Well, me. I agree with the boy. <laughs> It's empty, sir. Why do people keep running away from me? Maybe because you hitch rides without asking. Or because you're eight feet tall and smell like a biker's armpit. I think that smell is all you. Oh, sorry. I don't know what your game is, you son of a bitch. But you stay away from my girl. Mm. Mm. Boy, you're a hungry fella. Mm. This is the best thing I ever crammed down my food hole. Oh, stop. Sorry about trying to shoot you. It's okay. People shoot at us all the time. We think of it as a game that you can die from. But I forgive you. This guy, he's so forgiven, like a big hairy Jesus. Unlike Jesus, this guy isn't imaginary. Why are you in the prairies? I don't know. One minute, I'm enjoying a nice mushroom snack in the forest. Next thing you know, I wake up in a farmer's field next to a very happy-looking pig. And for some reason, my penis was really sore. Plus, those hunters have been chasing me since BC. You've been around since before Christ? Settle an argument. Jesus was real, wasn't he? And white? Yeah, and from British Columbia. Those hunters want to take me to a place where millionaires can hunt me for sport. I don't know what millionaires are, but they sound like dicks. I know how you feel. I was hunted once, too. Till he ran crying to the feds and wound up here. What's a fed? Jimmy? You're about to meet one. Jimmy, I feel terrible about my tirade, so sweet button Cummings! Hey, a mouse! 
Tony! Sometimes they chase me in helicopters. Jimmy? A word? How do you manage it, Jimmy? How? Manage what? To consistently put your own well-being in danger. There is a bona fide, mythical creature cramming lasagna into his food hole at your dining room table. So? He's not dangerous. He's a sweetheart. It's people like you who give Bigfeet a bad name. The term Bigfoot is uh, its actually kind of racist. Yeah, uh, just saying. What's next? Is the Loch Ness Monster going to emerge from your toilet for a tea party? Will a flying saucer land in your backyard piloted by Jimmy Hoffa? Hoffa ain't on no flying saucer, I'll tell you that much. That creature is a veritable magnet for the world's press. If word gets out about him, every reporter on the planet will show up outside your door. Ooh, that ain't good. Exactly. So until I figure out what to do, keep that beast in the house. Is that clear? Crystal. Gina, you're grounded. No! Oh, right, the Bigfoot. Oh, Canada, where a Sasquatch, Jimmy, really? What's this about me being fucking grounded? Here's some ribeye, big fella. I'm going to take a bath. Hey, get on out of here. You're a bad, bad boy. Don't make me get a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> oh no! D did I get you with the door? Come here, baby. Don't worry, we'll take you to the vet and get you checked out. Mm -hmm. And maybe neutered. Why can't I go outside? Father Sun's awake, Mother Moon's asleep, and Brother Sasquatch needs to drop a coil. It's dangerous out there. Besides, you've seen the great outdoors. Why not experience the great indoors? That's not a thing, silly. You made that up. What are you talking about? You got TV, the internet, video games. Is that all humans do? Sit around looking at screens? No, they also masturbate to those screens. And ordering food. Some folks live rich and fulfilling lives and never leave the house. Like who? Americans, greatest people on Earth, and the heaviest. Here's the remote. I'll get you a bowl of chips. <laughs> Salt and vinegar or ketchup? Damn it! One episode of Breaking Bad and he'd have never left that chair. <laughs> thing. What are you doing? You're supposed to be at home. I can't sit around all day. The TV is boring, video games are confusing, and the internet keeps trying to sell me boner pills. And between you and me, I'm also kind of terrified of the vacuum cleaner. Look, back where you came from, what would the other Bigfoots do if you let humans know you exist? Oh, their vengeance would be swift and merciless. They'd take away my berries. We're gentle creatures at heart. Okay, I'm in a situation where if people found out about me, they'd let me keep my berries, but they'd probably remove my nuts and then feed them to me. That's confusing. I need you to blend. If people come looking for you, they might find me, and then I'm choking on a mouthful of my own nuts. I don't get it. Oh, you mean balls. Bingo. Let's go home. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> The same thing kept happening in Grand Theft Auto. It's hard on my knees, my hands are getting calloused. But the real problem is I'm carrying a lot of tension in my shoulders. Oh, and if you let on that I'm not a dog, I'll break your legs. I'm trying to nail this broad. Uh, uh, so can you give me something for my shoulders? How's my boy doing? He's just fine, ma'am. In fact, if it was me, I'd have sex with this animal. Oh. Of course, that's just me. 
There's reports of a hairy man stalking the city and a 600% rise in dog disappearances. I'm doing my best, but the guy don't listen. Remind you of someone? Yeah, he's almost as bad as Cheech. <sighs> I checked the protocols for animal handling and couldn't find anything related to Cryptosimius Giganteus. Leave your wang out of this. I'm talking about your furry friend. Leave my wang out of this. Focus, Jimmy! We are simply going to have to drive Sasquatch back to his home. Hopefully my animal trailer requisition goes through. I lied on the form. I circled other where it asks what type of animal. That's not really a lie. But it's not specific, Jimmy. That's tantamount to lying. <laughs> What the hell are you doing here? I was gonna apply for a job. What better way to blend in than by becoming a faceless office drone? I did up a resume and everything. Nice font, but that outfit ain't gonna fool anyone. Come on, I'll buy you lunch. But I brought mine. Look at her. She's so beautiful. Maybe we got a shot. Not as dog and owner, but as man and smoking hot chick. I gotta end this before it gets weird. Finished, boy. I'm sorry, pal, but McCool's sending you back to Columbus Britannica. Ah, uh, this isn't fair. I'm just starting to live like a real human person. No outside food. Here, try this. It makes life's disappointments a little easier to take. It also leads to Cookie getting pregnant. Wow, that waitress just got really attractive. Ah, I love you, Jimmy. You're my best friend. That's the beer talking. I think those two jerks at the bar ought to fight me. What'd you say about my mother? Oh, take it easy. What's that hairy guy pointing at, huh? Screw you, fella! Nobody understands me. Oh, screw it. Toby, get up! The city's going to shit, and you're just lying around? He went on a rampage from one beer? Lucky you didn't order a pitcher, you'd be dead right now. <laughs> it's not funny, Cook! I'm worried about the guy! What if he gets shot by the cops only to escape at the last second, save a little girl from a fire, and die, as everyone mourns his essential humanity? What the hell are you talking about? This is what happens with monsters! Don't you watch old movies? I gotta find him before he gets killed! Or grabs a blonde and climbs a building! Evening, ma'am. My name's Cheech McDoggy. I mean, McDougal. Have we met? I feel like I know your voice. You know my bark, you know my whimper, and now you're about to know my truth. Please don't ask if I found Jesus. I can't even find my shoes. I gotta level with you. I've been a real heel when I was healing at your command, but I can't live a lie no more. Plus, my knees are killing me, and the collar chafes. Tummy rubs are good, and the food, oh, forget about it. Anyway, long story short, I've been pretending to be your dog. <laughs> Boy, you kept this up way longer than I thought you would. Pardon me? Of course I know you're not a dog. I'm blind, not stupid. How many dogs have a zipper and pockets with keys in them? Slow down. I'm still figuring out zipper dogs. And you talk in your sleep, Cheech. But thank you. I haven't had this much fun in years. That's great. I'm a fun guy, as well as a dog. I was thinking, maybe you and me could... I guess this is a bad time to admit I've been stealing your panties. I'm calling the police! It's out of our hands, Jimmy. Animal control will take care of that drunk and disorderly hairball. That's what I'm afraid of. He's gonna wind up dead or in a lab. Or dead in a lab, with a pervy scientist prodding his butthole. You don't know what science does, do you? Help me find them. Then I'll drive him back to D.C. B.C. 
fucking metric system? You know what I mean. Come on. If it was me, you'd do the same thing. Sure, you'd lecture me the whole time, but you'd still do it. Damn it, Jimmy, all right. But how can we find a creature who's eluded detection for hundreds of years? Pop! McCool! What is it, boy? The Australians nabbed Sasquatch outside our house. I ran out to help them, but they drove off. I tried to chase them on my bike, but I ran over a cat. Wait. Those Australians had a B642-180 animal removal permit. Of course! I have no idea what that means. It allows for air transport of live animals. My obsessive knowledge of protocol and procedure pays off once again. To the airport! What to do? Technically, they're not breaking the law. But aren't they breaking a moral law? Is it my responsibility as a servant of the crown to enforce moral laws? No, but as a human being, you have an ethical imperative. But are ethics not bound by a set of subjective values? There's nothing subjective about the rights of a sentient being. Back me up, Pop. Oh, no! Please, mother! Once he's dead, we'll feed him to the yitty. Why wait till he's dead? For animal rights everywhere! Ah! How do I stop? How do I stop? Oh my god, please stop, please stop, please stop! Cheech! Them guys jumped me outside our house. I thought the blind chick sent him. The man they call Ravine. If Cheech is here, then where the devil is Sasquatch? Come on, lady, which one pretended to be your dog? Well, let me see. Oh, right, I can't, you dumb motherfucker. Yo, dog breath, you made bail. Wow, what an adventure. I got drunk, I got kidnapped, and I had sexual relations with a pig. That's an average weekend in Winnipeg. I also learned that humans are terrible and my people should kill and eat them. What? Nothing. Well, McCool, I learned my lesson. It warms my heart to hear you say that. I hope from now on you'll try to meet me halfway. Not that. I mean, I went before we left. This is a long drive. I should have gone before we left. Hey, yo! Why is the floor wet? It's nice he went back with a piece of our culture. The Sasquatch population? is doomed. Oh man! We forgot to get a picture! Oh, God! Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? It's me, Gina. Yeah, I'm driving. I'm not wearing a seatbelt, neither. Blow me. Before Pops became the fattest stool pigeon in history, he was my hero. If there was an award for Father of the Year, Pop would have got it. Dog Francesco says hello. <laughs> <laughs> then this happens. So I look at the FBI guy and say, you stinking feds can blow me. I ain't testifying against nobody. Then the man from the fed says, but the mob is going to kill you and your whole family, Jimmy. You with me so far, kid? I get it. You're turning rats. Just wait. There's more. If you testify, we can give you immunity. Do you know what immunity means? Enough with the fucking puppets! <laughs> oh! Now Pops is the puppet and the feds are the ones pulling the strings. This is the thanks I get for saving all your lives. And if you don't think I'm better off dead than living in Canada's icy butt crack, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. 
clowns think he can avoid me? <laughs> we have nap time together every day. Now cough it up. The new kid already took our money. What are you little crap stains trying to pull? Who's this new kid? <sighs> Just give me another wedgie and let me go. Another wedgie? <laughs> Who gave you the first one? Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah! Hide behind the skinniest statue on Earth, dumbass! <gasps> I know this looks bad, but for once, I'm innocent! I think the furnace is on the fritz. What's 10 degrees in American? Dunno. Depends on the exchange rate. Apologies for the intrusion, but I'm here to save the day. What's with the pantyhose? It's a unitard. I'm Maple Man. Maple Man? Canadian superhero? Fighting minor infractions and belligerents everywhere? You look unitarded, Captain Leaf. <gasps> Teresa, why are you dressed up as Sapling Girl? Maple Man's trusty sidekick? Who's always getting him out of sticky situations? I'm just wearing what they gave me for my job as a booth babe at Regina Comic Con. <gasps> Do you know what this means? Of course not. You'll be working with Bentley Withermoon, the renowned actor who plays Terrence Timber, AKA Maple Man. Sounds like a lot of nerds. I better bring my pepper spray. Teresa, you have to introduce me to him. So much of my belief system is based on the teachings of Maple Man. Well, it's a hundred bucks for an autograph. 300 for a photo, or a 1,000 to brush his hair. I have to go sell my stamp collection. Hey, can I borrow your brush? Gina, you have irreparably damaged school spirit here at Celine Dion Elementary. Don't worry, our hearts will go on. The only place that'll accept you now, my dear, is Our Lady of Peace School for Wayward Girls. Not the nuns. No! Anything but the nuns! That's right. Enjoy that juice while you still can. <laughs> the only snacks the nuns will give you are warm holy water and stale body of Christ! Yummy! <gasps> Thank you for coming, Mr. McDougal. I came as soon as I got your call. You got a real sultry phone voice. Well, I'm afraid Gina's in a great deal of trouble. Your fancy skeleton statue nearly crushes her and she's the one in trouble? You got a lot of nerve, Professor. Next thing you know, she'll be blaming you for this hat that I stole off the special ed kid. Well, we talked her down to a one-day suspension. Pretty good for your old man, huh? Just wait till I get my hands on that kid who framed me. Knock out his teeth for me, will you? I miss reading Rainbow for this. Five seconds and I'll be shaking hands with a syndicated television legend. Okay, that's it for today. Maple Syrup Man will be back tomorrow. For some reason. Teresa! Teresa! Introduce me! Uh, Tabitha, I had some notes regarding your booth babing skills. Shall we discuss them over a drink? Sorry, I left my fake ID at home. <laughs> Don't worry. No one asks for ID in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really tired from wincing at people's breath all day. Most girls in your position would leap at the chance to get a few tips from an industry veteran. Sorry you were in the war, but thanks anyway. See you tomorrow! Teresa, you gotta introduce me to- Buzz off, nerd! Oh, Katie! I didn't recognize you in your pajamas! Can I ask you a question? Shoot. You ever worried at- I said shoot! Come on, it's your turn. Oh, right. Ha! <laughs> you missed. What a loser. Cheech, you ever worry things are slipping out of your control? Yeah, but I got special underpants for that. It's this mystery kid at school. He's haunting me, and I don't even know what he looks like. The kid without a face? How am I supposed to sleep now? Let me tell you, Francis Bacon once said... No, wait, it was Kevin Bacon. He said, knowledge is power. Yeah! I should snoop around, find out who this kid is. Good idea, Cheech. Oh, and if you call me a loser again, I'll slice your fucking nuts off. Ooh, you're tough, but fair. <laughs> Get the file on the new kid and check the teacher's lounge for snacks. Not in that order. What the hell is this? In case you gotta hack into the mainframe or some shit. Hey, why 
leaves my locker open. What the hell is this? It's a picture of the best summer of my life. <gasps> Carmine! I'm back! Oof. That's for getting me suspended. Not that I care, but still. And that's for breaking Celine Dion. <coughs> what was that for? That's because I missed you. I'm impressed. Must have took a lot of determination to track us down. You know, your pop killing my pop and all, it, it gets you out of bed in the morning. That and I wanted to see you again. Muscling in on my marks was a nice touch. And you're short. Shut up! I grew one and a quarter inches since last summer. I mean on the vig, you chiseling mook. I got expenses. Taking a cab all the way from Brooklyn wasn't cheap. The meat is still running. You want to lift to your house? What was I, born yesterday? Come on, I'm gonna find Cheech sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. These vendettas take a lot out of you. Well, good luck finding him. The guy's a phantom. He lives in the shadows and moves as silent as a warm breeze. Hurry up, Gina. Cheech Falcone is getting bored. Anyway, Carmine, I ain't gonna make getting to Cheech easy for you. I wouldn't want you to. Last time I had any real fun was when you and me mixed it up at camp. You mean when I kicked your ass? How do you know I didn't let you kick my ass? And the gloves are off. <laughs> if you say so. I left you a juice box and some crackers. See you soon. You backstabbing son of a whore! Open this door right now and I'll let you keep some of your limbs! Fruit punch. Oh, you remembered my favorite! What's she doing here? Replacing someone who doesn't know how to play ball. Oh, I know how. Just not with yours. Sadly, Tabitha, you lack the talent to portray a convincing sapling girl. Like it takes talent to have a unitard jammed up your butt. I'll have you know I majored in unitards at Juilliard. Come on, Petey. Let's get away from Doctor Who wants me to touch his wiener. But I sold my stamp collection. I told you the furnace wouldn't fix itself. Now the toilet water's frozen. I know, I've been chipping yellow ice all night trying to get my cell phone out. Chase dropped a deuce and it's just sitting there, mocking me. That's it, I'm calling the repairman. Is Cheech here? Nope. Damn it! Between you and me, you don't really like Cheech much, do ya? What are you talking about? He's great! I mean, he's all right. He means well. Actually, he does it, but he's my uncle! What do you want? But if he wasn't around no more, we'd be okay, right? Maybe you would, but who the hell would I hang out with? What, did you kill him? How'd you do it? Me and Ma have a bet. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Holy crap! I was kidding around! You did kill him! Jesus Christ, Gina! I didn't touch him! I haven't seen him since last night! <laughs> it's all my fault! Kid, relax. I saw him an hour ago. He went to them Nerd Olympics with Teresa. Why do you think he was dead? I'll tell you on the way. Come on. And I wasn't crying. What do you mean you can't get here for two days? It's so cold, I can see Cheech's breath. I thought Comic-Con was gonna be a comedy show for convicts. You know, where every punchline is, don't drop the soap. <laughs> You know who should be in prison? Bentley Withamoon. He almost was, three times, but he always got off. It's ironic, nothing sticks to Maple Man. Why are you sticking up for him? The guy's a pig. He's not a pig. He's the product of the forbidden love between man and Maple Tree. You just can't see the real him past your nerd boner. By the way, you should wear a jock under that costume. Man, I ain't seen so much butt crack since we extorted the plumber's union. Maybe there was something else you did wrong? He fired me because I wouldn't put out! What? Guy sounds like a creep. No respect for the ladies. Yo, space jugs! Let's see if I can come in peace. Cookie, shame on you for even thinking of calling a repairman when you have me. A housewife alone? A repairman? Oh, that reminds me of a dirty movie I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Strange. Ah, there's nothing like using your hands to bring back the heat. Good thing I brought my big tool. That was a line in the movie. <gasps> Did you ever appear? I don't know what you're referring to, Cookie. I'm just here to perform some sweaty, dirty work. That's another line! Ah, you're the Randy 
repairman! Damn my gambling days. I knew that video would come back to haunt me. Sir, can I see your wristband? <laughs> How is this the first I'm hearing about Gambini's kid? What, I gotta tell you every little thing? You do when our lives are at stake? What if he squealed on us to the mob? Then we'd be having this conversation in hell. The day Cheech gets taken out by a six-year-old, I'll eat my shirt. Well, get ready to choke down some polyester, because this kid's the real deal. Got a little crush there, kid? Yeah. I mean, no! Shut up, dumbass! All right, to be continued. Now, let's find Cheech quick before we wind up relocated to Yellow Horse or White Knife or some fucking place. <gasps> God, you can almost smell the virginity in here. Hello? I'm down here. How you doing? I'm Gina's friend. That's funny, because Gina doesn't have any friends. Oh, you calling me a liar, Gina's mom? Nobody calls me a liar. Where do you get off? What, did somebody drop a deuce in your cereal this morning? Get dried up, old floozy? Oh, yeah, okay, now it makes sense. Come on in and wait for her. So, what's a guy got to do to get some milk and cookies around here? Oh, you're a hungry little spark plug, ain't ya? <laughs> yeah, hungry for revenge. <laughs> Good one. Hello? Cookie? Nice to finally meet you, Cheech. You're bigger than I imagined. Has everyone seen my movie? Who wants cookies? Hey, where'd you go? Ah! Oh my god, oh my god! <gasps> hey, you're not Cheech. No shit, you little monster. Oh, Jesus, McCool! Oh. Oh. Where did it go? Where did it go? It's gone. <gasps> Hold me, Randy. Tighter. Cookie, get a hold of yourself. Who was that crazed demon child? It was Gina's friend. Oh, that explains a lot. But why was he have to cheech? I don't know. Let's go down to the comic book convention and ask him. A comic book convention? And I get to kill Cheech? Double win! Gah! Jeez, I hope Pop's having better luck finding Cheech than I am. <clears throat> Oh, Gina! That's for locking me in my locker. Thanks for the snacks, though. Hey, can I ask you something? Say you do off Uncle Cheech. What next? Oh, I got plans. I want you and me to run away together. Hit the open road like Bonnie and Clyde. You want to get gunned down in slow motion at the end of an old movie? No, I mean the bank robbing parts. But none of the kissy parts. Ew, you're gross. Maybe the huggy parts. Don't get your hopes up, sicko. But look, do you really gotta kill my uncle? Of course I do. Good luck finding Cheech in this joint. The man's a master of disguise and concealment. He could be standing right behind me and you'd never know. Go, Gina, spot your uncle Cheech a couple of bucks for a slice, will you? Damn it! I've been looking for you, mister. Not another one. Look, Junior, I know what you're thinking. But I ain't your father. Holy crap, you're even dumber than the legends. Time to put you out of my misery. Yo, look, everybody. It's a midget from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Funny, huh? They never look as tall in person. But this is official police business. Let me in. Not until I see a wristband, sir. Can we wrap this up soon, sugar cheeks? Oh, I'm getting right as cramp. Oh! What's the meaning of this, you me wannabe? In season one, episode four of The Adventures of Maple Man, you vowed to stand against injustice, no matter where it occurred, even if the hour was late and the location less than convenient. If you want to quote the show to me, that's an extra $60. Silence! Maple Man stands for fairness, equality, and decency. You stand for none of those things, you egocentric, misogynist hypocrite! How dare you! How dare you, sir! 
You have no right to fill the sacred Maple Man unitard. Security? Sure, hide behind your goons. Oh, hi, Jetsy. Ah! <laughs> Maple Man, thank God you're here. I fell through this table. Uh, would Cheech McDougal please proceed to the information desk? That's the big table near the front door. If you get confused, tell a grown-up you're lost. Uh, over and out. Well, if it ain't Jimmy Falcone. Oh, come on! Look at you, excuse me! Cheech McDougal, do not come to the information desk! Repeat, do not make up your mind! Sorry for what happened with your pops. He was a, well, I won't say a good man. He was a man. Let's leave it at that. You call that half-ass tap dance an apology? You murderized him! He was gonna kill my uncle, then I would've had to kill him back, so we skipped his step. But don't take it out on Cheech. I'm the guy you want. Don't worry. I promised Gina I'd never touch you. Who's worried? But that's nice. She's a good kid. Oh, she's great! Easy there, Romeo. But listen, you kinda already got your revenge on me. How do you figure? Look at me. Look around you. I'm living like a schmuck here. I mean, my life ain't bad, but it's a far fucking cry from good, know what I mean? Oh, for Christ's sake. For the last time, kid. I never been your mother. <sighs> Let me tell you something, you ignominious little snot stain. I am a classically trained actor. If it weren't for all the money I make and during these weekends with you halitosis-ridden cretins, I'd never be caught dead in this asinine outfit providing masturbatory fantasy fodder for overgrown adolescent twerps! And furthermore, I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! <gasps> Did you get that, Teresa? He's a one-take wonder! And... post! I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! You look fat in that suit. Oh. Teresa! That's not nice. What? Bitch took my job. I told you I wouldn't make this easy for you, so you're gonna have to go through me. You know, for a guy you can't stand, you sure do seem to care a lot about Cheech. Trust me, this is killing me. I'm gonna regret it the next time he opens his mouth. Wait a sec. Does your mother do hoop waxes down at the Korean spa? See what I mean? <laughs> I changed my mind about off and Cheech, but not about... What? That sounds mushy. So, spit it out. Nah, some things are better left unsaid. What are you, chicken? Shut up! I'm no chicken. You're a chicken! Yeah, yeah, I'm rubber, your glue. Just shut the f*** up and tell me! <sighs> I didn't change my mind about how much I like you. Um, I'm glad about that. And being glad... Hurts my face. You make my face hurt too, Gina. So, what do you say you and me shake down a couple of these booths? Why not? These dorks have been bullied all their lives. They know the drill. <gasps> You're under arrest for assaulting a police officer, young man. It's maximum security juvie for you. It'll be no picnic, my fine friend. Lights out by ten and only four hours of social media per day. Cool! Wait! Aww. Aww. Guess I'll have to take a rain check. Guess so. But those blowjob screws won't keep me down for long. You gonna wait for me? <laughs> Screw that. That's my gal. Well, son, I hope you picked up some comics to read where you're going. For Canada! A dumping ground for American culture since 1867! <laughs> I knew it! There is a more north! Yes, Jimmy, and this is where we'll be until I'm certain the elusive Carmine Gambini is no longer a threat. How soon did he give you the slip? Somewhere between the washrooms and the parking lot. That's my boy. Petey, did you see how many hits our Maple Man video got? Yeah, but look what they're calling it. Idiot fan pwned by Maple Man. I can't take this no more! I'm walking home! I'll just head south! How hard can it be? Which way is south? We're so far north, it's all friggin' south! 
Saskatchewan, la 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 Remember me? Back in the old life, I was a mob wife. When mob wives had to, we rolled up our sleeveless blouses and helped out with the family business. Like when Jimmy's crew got pinched after a museum job because Cheech left a DNA sample all over Nefertiti's bust. All right, Gloria's collecting protection money, Mia's intimidating a witness, and Frenchie's cutting heroin with Parmesan cheese. Best smack in the city. So, what do we do? Chick flicks? This ain't girls' night out, ya lazy bum. Then Gloria hauls in Stinky LaRue, a notorious rat Jimmy wanted gone. But there was a problem. Ah, uh, I can't do it. I can't get blood all over this pantsuit. Don't look at me. I just had these nails done. I ain't washing no skull fragments out of my new roots. I was almost gonna let that scumbag go, but I had an idea. All right, f nuts. Before we do this, you're gonna sit here with us and watch a movie. Ooh, the vanilla lace tea cozy. 90 minutes of awkward English people stammering about their feelings. Who wants popcorn? I don't know, Cook. Even for the mob, death by chick flick is a little cruel and unusual. But no one in the family ever read it again. Yeah, right. And we're in Regina on freaking holidays. If you think Canada's gonna make me any less cruel and unusual, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. How about this one? I already gotta tell your brother to tuck in his shirt. I ain't telling you to tuck in your privates. My clothes express my individuality. Stop trying to census me. How about this? It says material girl with a hint of like a virgin. What the hell are you talking about? You know, Madonna. Lady Gaga's grandma? If we weren't in public, I'd smack you right in your stupid mouth. Teen troubles, Cookie? Oh, hey, Annabelle. You know how it is with teenagers. Can't live with them, can't drown them in the river. Well, we can't all be super parents. How do they fit, darling? Like I'm wearing miracles, Mother! What's with Billy Elliot over there? That's my son, Donnie. He's testing a pair of dance pants for this year's Regina's Got Talent competition. Regina's Got Talent? It's a performing arts contest. No, I'm asking. Regina's Got Talent? Yes. And my Donnie's won three years in a row. Right, Superstar? Ain't you two a pair? More like a team. It's amazing what happens when you don't threaten your children with abuse. Hey, me and Teresa are a team, too. Well, Twinkie, your teammate just abandoned you. Teresa, get back here right now, or so help me, I'll hug you so hard. Why do you want me to sign up for a talent show, Ma? I thought about what you said in the store. You were right about expressing your individuality, and this is a great way to do it. So it's a wet t-shirt contest? You got a beautiful singing voice, Teresa, and I want you to share it with the world. <sighs> My nose is crying. I'm not used to you saying nice things about me. Well, get used to it, teammate, because you deserve it. Take it easy, Ma. Who knows what's in that blood? Jimmy, what are you doing here? Regina Tourism sponsors this event, so I gotta sit here and sign up all the wannabes and losers. Well, Teresa's signing up. Did I say losers? I meant shining stars of tomorrow. Stop! You guys are the best! 
You're talented too, Gina, but this contest ain't for you. Pop, I got no intention of entering Regina's Got Assholes. Well, that's good, because you can't. What do you mean, can't? Age limit's 10 and over. You're too young, so you can't. 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 Let it can't. go, Gina. Can't. There's some things can't. you can't do. Can't. Can't. But this ain't one of them. Can't. 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 Shut up! Now, McCool, just because my daughter's in this, I don't want you showing any favoritism. Unless you're open to that. In which case, I can make it worth your while. Do you know why I've been asked to judge this contest three years in a row, Jimmy? Because no one else will do it? And my integrity. I am unbribable. I'm always the bribe's maid, never the bribe. <laughs> Toby for Jimmy. Toby for Jimmy. Hey, Toby, what's up? Toby for Jimmy. Come in, Jimmy. <sighs> Go for Jimmy. Oh, there you are. Aren't these headsets amazing? Anyway, I have terrible news. Turns out Dick Clark is dead. We need a new MC. Did someone say MC? Have you ever MC'd before, Uncle Cheech? I certainly have, young lady. If any of you's got any allergies, whip out your EpiPens, cause here comes peanut butter cookies. Sorry I'm late. I had to finish the word parts for my first number. Number? It's like the one I sang at Uncle Luigi's thing, remember? He's shaking his ass just sharp as a knife. It's non-stop booty, just don't tell his wife. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it at Club Afterlife. Yeah. Yeah! Wait till they hear my new song, Labia of Love. Teresa, honey. The judges want to hear classics. Then I'll sing one of my classy ballads, like Angel with the Fake Tits. You cried when I sang it at Christina's communion. We all did, honey. But if you want to make it past the first round, you got to keep things wholesome. OK, I'll try. But let's not go overboard. Of course not. Now tape down your boobs and put on this nun's outfit. Now to help us forget the human pretzel practically licking his own balls, Here's our next act, G-Dog and Enviro Pete. Now remember, I'm not your sister, I'm a dog. You sure are. Thanks for encouraging me to do this. My unique brand of edutainment is just what the people need. Shut the f up, we're on. Hey, g Doll. do you know why the ecosystem is in so much trouble? Because the owners of big factories are a bunch of dummies. Just like me. <sighs> Talk about an ego system. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, everyone, think globally, act jokily. The ventriloquism's quite impressive, but the material's atrocious. Bring back the ball liquor! <laughs> It's only 60 pounds. Cause you'll have a great old time at the good old bar <laughs> Stay neutral, old chap. Stay neutral. Looks like Teresa might make it through to the next round. And it looks like you might be crapping your pants. Well, get ready to eat it. Next up, we got a three-time winner, a one-man dance armada. And the true patriot. Let's give a warm vagina welcome to Nani Westminster! Freaking amazing! Makes that nun's routine look like a bowl of piss. That nun was Teresa. Oh, sorry. This kid makes Teresa look like a bowl of piss. You want us to fix the talent contest? Not the whole contest, just that freaking Donnie. He's unbeatable. Then I guess we'll have to beat some beatable into him. 
anyone asks, I've been here all day. You have been here all day. Exactly. Cook, I'm not hurting a kid over a contest. Unless there's a cash prize. How much are we talking? It's a trophy and bragging rights. What am I, an amateur? And trust me, no one in that show's gonna do any bragging. Especially that boring nun. She's next on my list, Cook. That's Teresa! You wanna end this contest or not? Okay, forget it. I guess I'll just have to be a better mother and put way more pressure on Teresa. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Stay on the high note. The high note! I don't believe the lamb's following Mary. Convince me. Visualize your goals. Reactualify your happitude. You're just making those words up. Don't talk back to your life, Coach Muffin Top. This is un, excuse my language, frickin' acceptable, mother. Why didn't you hire me a life coach? Uh, I never... Never wanted me to win? Obviously. Ugh, I'm getting flushed. Fan. Donnie, you have nothing to worry about. Too dry. Spritz! Oh, are you trying to drown me? Donnie, calm down. Teresa's good, but you're better. I guess I'm gonna have to handle this because you're more useless than a donated appendix. Oh, Donnie. Fly like a dove, it's a labia of love. Hey, we agreed. No original songs. But I'm almost done writing it. I just need something that rhymes with reach around. Do you want to win this thing or not? Original songs, eh? <gasps> that gives me an idea. Go get the car, Annabelle. In <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. God help you if I get to ten. We barely squeaked into this round, Gina, so we really have to nail it. Don't forget, be the message. Sure thing, Petey. Folks, if you need to use the crapper, now's a good time. Cause it'll smell better than this next act. I hate this guy. Oh. By the way, I changed our name. Oh, it's nice you're getting involved. Please welcome Little G. That's fun. And Dick Bart. Gina. Uh, ahem, <clears throat> okay. Hey, little G, tell us what you know about fracking. That's when you dig a hole in the backyard and fart in it. <laughs> then this fracking loser shoves his head in and sniffs. <laughs> right to the kisser. <laughs> oh, jokes aside, um, do you know the size of your carbon footprint, little G? Two inches, just like your dick. <laughs> Gina, cut it out. Yes, um, carbon emissions should be on everyone's minds. Along with the polar ice caps. Yes, thank you. Do you know why the ice caps are melting? Because you jerk off in the shower? <laughs> Dick Bart's getting served! So, why did you ask me out, Donnie? I like you, Teresa. You're a good kid, and I want to give you some advice about the biz nasty. I got it directly from Al Pacino as acting coach's website. Wow, you are connected. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've slept my way around the entertainment block, sweetheart. Had my fair share of mouthies, VTs. VTs? Oh, vagina touches. <laughs> so naive. Donnie, have you ever actually been with a girl? Are you kidding? <laughs> Any more tangy poon for me and my G-spot's just gonna fall right off. What part of this is the advice? This part. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you need to do something original. You mean like an original song? Yes! Oh! But who has those, right? I, I do. I write my own songs. You do? And you're not singing them? Um, are you trying to lose? But I promised Ma I'd wait until I won. Waiting's for tables, baby. Speaking of which, who do I gotta blow jam to get another shake around here? Petey, we always laugh at you, but who knew you had real comedy chops? When that creepy troll doll accused you of clear-cutting the cheese... Oh, my ribs, Petey! My ribs! Gina, you should have seen this kid. He's a natural. Yeah, but his material's a little highbrow for Gina here. Now, let's not forget about the environmental message. I'm an edutainer, first and foremost. The reviewer says you've redefined the part of self-deprecating humor with refreshing brilliance. Um, I 
heard the dummy's pretty hilarious, too. Yeah, but without Petey, there's no act. It's just a hideous little puppet. Ooh, creepiest thing I ever seen. What's the G stand for, anyway? Grotesque? I thought it was just, God help me. No, it stands for, guys, look what just fell out of my ass. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now that we eliminated all the riffraff, it's time to hit the snooze button for the opposite of entertainment, Teresa Meduga. It's super drama, Fraggle Rock spaghetti is delicious. Ah, forget that crap. Regina, make some noise. <gasps> Clap your hands, come on. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah. This is a Teresa McDougal original Christmas jam. It's called Bust Your Chestnut on an Open Fire. There's a super cool guy made of big snowballs, and he's having a bush party for all y'all. Frosty's his name, and be a chill. I don't know what's sadder, how hard you tried or how badly she's failing. So get your butts to the bonfire. This is a race. He's gonna bust some Christmas cheer all over your face. Snip my foreskin and color me Jewish because Christmas is dead to me. Relax, Ma. I made it through to the next round, didn't I? Only by the skinny of teeth, thanks to that humpy dog act getting disqualified. <laughs> Toby, for security! Toby, for security! Where are you, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell told you to do your own song? Donnie, he told me to be original. Teresa Falcone, you got played! My song got played, and once I find a rhyme for Reach Around, I'ma be dropping another sound bomb, yo! Now the only way we'll beat Annabelle is if Donnie gets kneecapped. So that's why you made me enter this, to beat Donnie's mom? Who's playing who, Ma? I wasn't playing you. I was encouraging you. By making me dress like a nun and sing about baseball? You were a nun trying to keep orphans off drugs by getting them into sports. It's called a backstory, Teresa. You know what? You're in this for you, not for me. Teresa, wait! Ah, oh, balls. You're welcome, Mother. Once again, I solved the problem. Now, can you handle getting me a smoothie, or is that too much for you, you dried up old cow? Oh, and I'm gonna need a new phone, because this one's broken! I freaking hate other people's kids. Kickball change and a funky hips. Eye on the prize, eye on the prize. No, 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 no. Who's a bad boy? That's me. Who's a bad boy? That's me. How do girls pee? Who knows? Do the running man. Go, Donnie. Go, Donnie. It's about time. You best have my smoothie. Hey, who, who are you? No. No! No! Are you ready, little G? What do I know? I'm just a dummy. Dick Fox! Say, little G, I bet you have something funny to say about me and the terrible effects of nanopollution. <laughs> little G? <laughs> Do you have a frog in your throat? <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, frogs in mountainous areas are most affected by climate change. What do you think about that, little G? Make the troll talk! Come on, say something! Yeah, make the gargoyle emasculate you! <laughs> I'm a gargoyle? This from a guy with a baboon's ass for a face! <laughs> Does old McDonald know you left the farm, you fucking donkey? <laughs> hey, McCool, a shot says pardon me? Pardon me? Oh, oh, I see what you did. Hey, everyone, the gremlin called me a shot. <laughs> Stop the show. Look who I found out by the dumpster. Uh, Donnie, I've been knee banged. Calm down, everyone. I'm a police officer. I'll get to the bottom of this. Donnie, tell us who banged you. I was out back waiting forever for my mother to bring me my smoothie when someone ran up and hit me right in my knee. My dancing knee! Did you recognize the assailant? He was wearing a mask. You mean she was wearing a mask? How could 
love you, Ma. Yeah, how could you? I had dibs. Me? I had nothing to do with this admittedly fortunate turn of events. Oh, right. So when you said the only way I'd win is if Donnie got kneecapped, you were being psychic. Oh, my God, Ma, are you psychic? She's a witch! Is someone going to call an ambulance? Cookie, I'm afraid I'm going to have to inquire as to your wear up. <laughs> Shart. So good. <clears throat> anyway, where were you when this happened? I was nowhere near Donnie. I was backstage working on Teresa's song. I even found the rhyme you were looking for. Just reach around and make a happy sound. Huh? Why did you finish my song for me? Donnie may have been playing you, but he was right. You gotta be yourself. Stop upstaging me! It's my time to shine! Mine! None of this would have happened were it not for the incompetent shrew who birthed me. Donnie, don't. Shut your kale hole. If you'd have been there on time with my smoothie, you could have taken the hit for me. But you didn't. Why? Because you're a selfish, greedy, evil... <laughs> Fine! It was me! And I would have got away with it if I didn't just hit him again in front of everyone. Damn it! Kneecapping your own kid? That shit is cold. I'll tell you what's cold. Diva Donnie making me walk beside the car on the way home from his singing lessons in the dead of winter because I was taking up too much oxygen. Oh, I could go on! He's a monster! Mother, how could you? Oh, shut up, you fucking drama queen. You know, we may not have the best relationship, but at least we're not these clowns. I love you. I love you too, Bob. Aw, now you got my nose crying. Not so fast, madam. A real crime has been committed. I have no choice but to arrest... Oh, the results are in. This year's winner of Regina's Got Talent is... Dick Fart and Little G! What? Who's Little Dick and G Fart? <laughs> you said I was too young to enter, but I did, and I won! Take that, you motherfuckers! Porky's Revenge! It's alive! Run! Run for your lives! <laughs> but Canada, where even the most heroic must sometimes flee in terror! Oh, so everyone gets a shot but Cheech? It's my oh. turn, kid. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, now known as McDougal. They say there's two things you can't avoid in life, death and taxes. Wise guys don't pay taxes, which only leaves death. Back in the old neighborhood, the funeral home was doing great business. The guy who ran the place was rolling in dough, strutted around like he owned a frickin' neighborhood. So, we took over the joint. You're fired. <laughs> First, it was great, but after a while, my guys were so busy working funerals, none of them were out on the street causing the funerals. I realized you can be a gangster or an undertaker, but you can't be both. Now I live in Regina, Saskatchewan, which is about as much fun as a funeral home. And it's got more stiffs. <laughs> I actually find Regina relaxing. Petey, this town's D.O.A. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. And I 
am sick and tired of your shenanigans. Every time you and Cheech get into one of your mishaps, Canadian taxpayers have to foot the bill. You're making a mountain out of moleskin, McCool. Calm down. I will not. You are on very thin ice here, Jimmy. Okay, okay, I see what this is about. How much we talking? That is hardly going to cover the cost of this latest debacle. What debacle? It's a couple of cows. This is gonna be great. We're gonna have steak on demand. I pumped them full of steroids, so they're extra beefy. Uh, uh, Sorry, Jimmy, but my superiors were very clear on the matter. One more mistake, one more hijink, one more incident, and you will be expelled from witness protection. Good day to you, sir. For Canada, where there is a limit to the taxpayer's goodwill. You guys won't believe what happened. Petey got a date? No, I got a summer job! No way! Good for you, kid. I remember my first job. I made a mint off that blue-tinted peanut brittle. What kind of job is it? That's what I want to know, but Teresa won't tell me. Well, I could tell you. Or I could show you. I don't like this. Suppose her summer job is whacking us. You been drinking paint dinner again? Think about it. She tricks us with this BS job story, drives us to the middle of nowhere, and pow! Remind me to compliment her before I put one in a temple. That's my firstborn you're talking about! If anyone's gonna shoot her, it'll be me. All right, take off the blindfolds. Holy crap! We're all the way back in New York! Teresa, were you speeding? What did we say about speeding, young lady? It's like a dream! Except Mama's not chasing me with the knife! I knew it! She set us up! Ah, it's good to be back. And cut! What? That's a wrap! We're not actually in New York. I got a job on a big Hollywood movie filming right here in Regina! So this is a set? What's the movie? It's called Wise Guys vs. Aliens. That sounds arty farty. Wait, was there a casting couch involved when you got hired? No, I'm just an assistant. It's actually a really easy job. Standing around all day sure is hard on your feet. Please, take my chair. I'll sit on the floor. Oh, thanks, Mr. Spielberg. I better get to work. I got ten long hours of sitting, eating, and texting ahead of me. Kid sounds like an old pro already. Come on, let's take a look around. Wait, I know this door. Rizzo! Open up or I'll break your legs. You still owe me a C note. Rizzo! Rizzo! Rizzo's been dead for 10 years, you moron! Nice try, Rizzo. <laughs> what do you want, Kojak? I ain't touching that. What is it? I'm talking to you, Professor X. Wait, Gina, that's a Buddhist monk. He don't talk. I think he's on mute. It's called a vow of silence. Dear parent or guardian, a vision has foretold that a child in this home may be the reincarnation of the Bali Lama. The who, the what now? The Bali Lama. It's just like the Dalai Lama, except from Bali. Wow, I always knew I was special, but not this special. I am honored. What? Her? Oh, you gotta be shitting me. High priests will soon arrive to determine the veracity of the vision. Please prepare. I ain't giving no priest no eye test, you got it? Now get the hell out of here! Jackpot, 50 Gs. That's Indonesian money. It's only worth five bucks. Says the guy who is not the Baldi Lama. <laughs> Jesus! Canadian coffee tastes like dishwater filtered through dirty underpants. Get me an espresso! Mm. You know, I could get used to all this movie magic. And by magic, I mean free sandwiches. Hey, look at this. I've been here ten minutes, and already I got a trailer. Why do you get a trailer? 
What kind of low rent flick is this? Hey! Get out of my trailer! If anyone should be banging a bimbo in that Winnebago, it's me! Relax, it's probably just some guy with the same name as you. You mean like my evil twin? Cheech, look back on your life. If you was twins, you would not be the good one. Freaking goody two-shoes, always stealing my girls. Did I ever tell you ladies about the time when my nephew, Jimmy Falcone, whacked the DA with a frozen fish? We knew the cops were gonna be onto us, so to get rid of the evidence, we ate the fish! Oh, what are you talking about? Hey, speaking of what just happened? I never met that guy in my life, and I never killed nobody with a fish. I just fed him to live ones. This is identical theft. That son of a bitch is pretending he's me! And he's not even as handsome. Yo, Petey, I've been thinking about it. I'm gonna do this thing. You know, with uh, butt monkeys. Buddhist monks. Yeah, that's the one. Religion's a cash grab, and I want a piece. I just need to fool them monks long enough to start bilking my followers. You know what? I think I'll help you. You? Mr. Squeaky Clean No Balls? Why? Because I think the simple, gentle wisdom of the Buddha may just penetrate your heart. Like water through cracks in stone. Whatever. But if you screw this up, I'm gonna crack you with a stone. All right, Jimmy. I'm calling in every favor you owe me. Help me whack this scumbag. Since when do I owe you any favors? He's disrespecting a Falcone name and he's making money off it. Which kind of makes me respect the guy. Cheech, what the hell are you doing? Phony Cheech is about to go to work for Industrial Light and Tragic. <gasps> Teresa, watch out! <coughs> it's okay, it's okay. Teresa's fine. Yeah, we're gonna need five more Canadians. All right, you moron. How'd you steal my face? Whoa, Cheech Falcone, what are you doing here? Hey, Jimmy, since we're playing the name game, you mind telling us yours so we can put it on your tombstone? It's me, Enzo, uh, f from Brooklyn. I narrow it down a little, I know like 50 Enzos from Brooklyn. Enzo Pistone. I ran Pistone's Pizzatoria. Uh, you guys ordered from me all the time. Why you into personating Cheech? Uh, it's like this. I always wanted to be a director in Hollywood, but who's gonna hire a guy that smells like anchovies? So take a shower. When you guys disappeared, I got an idea. I moved to LA, shaved my head, slapped on a mustache, and pretended to be Cheech. <laughs> what are you, insane? Why Cheech? There's no way I could pull off being you, Jimmy. I don't smoke. Anyway, I got a job as an advisor on mob movies. They call me Il Consultieri. The hell do you know about being a good fella? Nothing. I just tell them stuff I know from other mob movies. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm -a gonna shoot -a you. I'm a shoot -a you. You do realize there's a contract out on Cheech. So what? I'm in Hollywood. They're great at keeping secrets. Especially once you join Scientology. What's this? <laughs> it's a sweet gig, Jimmy. I get free food, they pay me in cash. I got a fancy car to drive and a hotel room you wouldn't believe. Congrats, Enzo. You just got some partners. He had me at free food. This is called a sand mandala. It's an exercise in the transitory nature of life. I guess it's pretty easy to impress them boobists. Mother f Why'd you do that? Now I gotta start over! Gina, the picture is no longer a picture, but the sand remains sand. Petey, use your freaking head! This kindergarten crap ain't gonna cut it. If we're gonna oppress these monks, we gotta do something big. Like a steak dinner and a couple of hookers. All right, Enzo, here's the deal. Me and Cookie are gonna spend a couple of nights here living in the laps of luxury. And I'm gonna live in your trailer. I mean, my trailer. And where am I supposed to sleep? They gave you a car, didn't they? I'm above the line. I can't sleep in my car like uh, some kind of teamster. Enzo, don't kid yourself. Your days in Tinseltown are numbered. I saw a clip from this flopperoni pizza you're cooking up. I'm -a gonna shoot to you.
Don't look at me. It's them hack Hollywood writers. <laughs> Much fun! I ain't been this relaxed in months. Exploiting another human being for my own amusement just melts the tension. Must be the bellhop with the new bed. Took him long enough. Oh! Uh, is that the guy whose car we hit with the TV? Nah, Canucks don't shoot. They just give you a respectful talking to. I think Hollywood Enzo ratted us out. You could have took that guy. I left my gun in my pants. Like you need a gun. True, but I don't fight naked. Learn that lesson from one nut nunzio. Ah! Turn around. I don't want the whole world seeing your cans in my sausage. Oh, memory foam really works. I'm still not tipping them. You tried to have me killed. What are you talking about? Don't act all innocent, you little rat. You called a mob on me, didn't you? Really? Why would I do that? I might be a liar and a faker, but I ain't no backstabber. If I was, I'd already be directing movies. Well, watch your back, Francis Fraud Coppola. Cause someone's after you. The guy just shut up your hotel room. Time for me to make my exit. If that guy went to the hotel, he'll probably go to my trailer next. Cheech! We gotta warn Cheech! Oh no, Cheech! My uncle, my friend, my bookie. That moon showed me 20 grand! <laughs> you happy now, pizza guy? You got my uncle killed! Sure, he might have been a moron, but he was my moron! Ah, Jimmy, there'll be other morons, you'll see. Not like Cheech, there won't. When they made him, they broke the mold. Probably in shame, but still! I swear to God, if I had my gun, I'd shoot you. But as it stands, I gotta choke you. I don't know about gotta. <laughs> What did he do? Stay out of this, Cheech. I think I'm going to...